Hi everyone, good evening. I hope all of you are doing great. Uh, yes, Dr. Sama, Dr. Ahil, Dr. Abhay, uh, Dr. Mopi, Neni, Dr. Hanin. Hello everyone. Hello, yes, I can see your chats. Uh, so Dr. Jadav, Dr. Subhadeep Patra. Yes. Yeah, I'm glad to be here again. Uh, thank you so much. I hope all of you are doing great. And yes, we are going to do the revision of forensic toxicology and FMG exam was postponed. So I think you are having one and a half months for good revision. And I'm sure, you know, like so many students are having so many questions of what to do, like because exam got postponed, right? Hello, hello, hello everyone. Hello, yes. Okay, fine. Uh huh, Dr. Vaishnav, yeah, I'm glad. Dr. Ganesh. Dr. Asma from Jordan. Okay, that's great. Okay, see, one and a half months, uh, like you have extra. I would suggest, please don't relax. Uh, like some of the students will be having this kind of thought process that I can take a small break for seven days, for 10 days. I can please understand that you can have rest only for one day. That is more than enough. Please understand that if you are going to take a break now, if you are going to take a vacation now, you will lose the momentum. So rest only for one day. After that, the kind of energy which you had, the kind of passion which you had before. Right now, same energy, same passion should be there. I know, so like only six weeks extra, right now. So, yeah, but now you have 45 days extra, so do, uh, so you have to do the good revision, right? And you write more number of mock exams, fine? So everything will be same. So this time you can, uh, you can expect like more of the clinically oriented questions. So yes, you have to focus more on the clinically oriented questions and don't miss any short subjects. See, especially forensic medicine. See, I'm telling you, forensic medicine, this time, INI, CP, you know, INI CT exam, a few days before, INI CT exam, you know, how many questions they have asked? The approximately, approximately 23 questions were asked from FMT forensic medicine in INI CT, AIMS, Jipmer, Hana, all exams together. So forensic medicine, even in the MCI exam, minimum 11 to 12 questions will be asked. Minimum, I'm saying. I know. So yes, uh, how much I'm going to... Uh, Hindi B, Hindi B, English B, है ना ठीक है चलो मैं Hindi में भी करूँगा Hindi B थोड़ा English B ठीक है या but I will be using more of basic English so that everyone can understand because there is a mixed crowd here right okay uh, Doctor Sanya Se Pandi yes this lecture will be enough for PG yes yes Okay, from Jalalabad, okay, chalo. I'm glad, good evening, all of you. Dr. Barad, hello, hello. Chalo, Sulanki Banadu Hame, sir. Okay. I'm good, I'm good, chalo. All of you, Salam Namaste to all of you. Yes, Dr. Shwab, all of you. Dr. Taqir, all of you. Yes, chalo, okay, Salam Namaste to all of you. Good evening. Right? Hello. Okay, fine. So let's start the forensic medicine and the toxicology, right? Okay. See, minimum you should expect in MCI. In FMG exam, minimum number of questions from forensic medicine will be 11 to 13. 11 to 13, that's the big number, right? Because in INI CT, recently there were 23 questions, approximately 23 or 24. So that's big number. So that's almost, almost a big subject, right now? Okay, chalo. So let's start. All right. See, first question first. See, you know, all the topics I'm going to discuss with the help of the clinical scenario or the question. First of all, you read the question. All of you should participate here. I know, so forensic medicine is very, very easy for you. My voice is not clear. Okay. Okay, I think my voice is clear now, right? All of you? Chalo, fine. Okay, see this question and please answer it first. Uh, 
डॉक्टर कृष्णदास आई एम फ्रॉम बांग्लादेश ओके चलो वेलकम वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू आई थिंक दिस इज अ मिक्स क्राउड फ्रॉम जॉर्डन फ्रॉम बांग्लादेश फ्रॉम बिश्केट फ्रॉम जलालाबाद राइट ओके चलो ग्रेट टू सी यू पीपल ओके सी दिस क्वेश्चन ओके थैंक यू सो मच डॉक्टर अर्न ऑनलाइन वट इज योर नेम अर्न ऑनलाइन ओके चलो फाइन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सी दिस क्वेश्चन एंड प्लीज रीड ईच एंड एवरी लाइन प्रॉपरली आफ्टर दैट आई विल एक्सप्लेन यू एंड दिस टॉपिक विल बिकम वेरी वेरी इजी फॉर यू आई विल मेक ऑल द टॉपिक्स वेरी इजी फॉर यू Here, a newborn baby, a newborn baby did not show any sign of life for five minutes after delivery, right? Okay. Doctor declared the baby dead and handed over the body to the parents in a bag. After twenty minutes leaving the hospital, there was some movements in the bag, and after that, parents rushed to a nearby hospital, but doctors could not revive the baby. Which of the following is incorrect relate, incorrect statement related to this condition? You are not able to see the question. Another question. Are you able to see my question? Are you able to see my screen? Ah, uh, from Somalia. Ah, uh, doctor, a uh, doctor of Wada Niga. Okay, very clear, na? Okay, fine. Okay, please see this one. Yes. Chalo, fine. Everything okay? So now, overall, after seeing this question, what is your diagnosis? After seeing this question, what is your diagnosis? Can you answer me? See, this is an important topic. I'm telling you, this is an important topic related to medical legal aspect and and related to clinical practice. Okay. Yes, this is a case. Of, so, what is happening? See, please understand here that first of all, see, please understand here that see, there are some situations where a person will appear to be dead. I can say that. See, this is a case of apparent death. Apparent death. Why not? This is a case of apparent death where a person appears to be dead, but he is actually not dead. Only the temporary suspension of life is there. only for a short interval of time which is called as suspended animation which is called as suspended animation please understand that person appears to be dead but he is not actually dead he is alive so what is happening here see please understand here that see like in some situation signs of life will reduce to the minimum level that you cannot understand whether he is alive or dead means apparently he will appear to be dead apparently he will appear to be dead this can be produced this can be produced voluntarily and involuntarily in some situation different different situation so what is happening here so see what is happening here now person is almost dead he appears to be dead even if you are going to see heart rate everything is off okay so there will be the temporary suspension of all the vital organs heart rate is not there so nothing is there you can say that even doctor can be confused even doctor can declare the person as dead but this will be a case of negligent act let's understand what is the meaning of suspended animation i hope you have seen this movie 3 idiots all is well all is well i hope you remember the last movie scene no where all engineers online delivery of a baby right all engineers they helped in the delivery of a baby right and fine so like actually she was doctor her she was doctor but there was this situation there was kind of circumstance where actually they were not able to reach hospital and there was this situation of emergency fine so like okay this doctor she was uh, like she was guiding online and she was guiding online and this ranchor das chanchar and genius engineer obviously and so they used uh, they they took the help of the vacuum and after that after that they delivered the baby and but after the delivery after the delivery online when nurses were the nurse asked why baby is not why baby do not cry baby ro kyun nahi raha hai bachcha ro nahi raha hai 
why baby does not cry now everyone got silent oh my god hai na so for time being actually what was there for time being there was actually the temporary suspension of life and sab keh rahe ki bachcha ro kyu nahi raha now everyone was shocked and so after that see like said so the baby was in the hand of so baby was in the hand of amir khan and ran chaudhary chan chan fine so suddenly he started in the patting and the patting over the back over the chest fine so that was the type of the resuscitation which they did not know fine no, sir right now but after a few minutes so what happened suddenly when he was doing like this suddenly that baby and he shook his leg fine no, sir after that after that amir khan said lat mara right so what was that lat mara and suddenly after that he started saying, all is well all is well all is. after that everyone started saying all is well all is well after that baby started crying so overall what is this suspended animation so overall as per this movie what is the treatment of choice for the suspended animation all is well all is well speak out all is well all is well no not at all okay no so this is actually what you have to do what resuscitation so please understand that and so please understand that in some situation in some situation there can be the temporary suspension of life which cannot be detected by which cannot be detected by the normal clinical method fine so this can be seen even in the case of you know like uh, so during the case of the anesthesia right now during the case of the anesthesia whenever you are going to perform a surgery for and i like whenever you are going to perform a surgery in the thoracic cavity also obviously and so you have to produce suspended animation during anesthesia basically i can say that iatrogenic yes it can be produced see during electric injury yes i know so even you know one thing like even in the hanging case hanging why judge has to say hang till death why judge has to say this and hang till death because what is happening here when the rope will be applied when the rope will be ligated around the neck for time being after one minute a person can be fainted behosh ho jayega kuch der ke liye for time being hai na please understand that how much is the fatal period in hanging please understand that it takes approximately 3 to 5 minutes hai na after hanging it takes approximately 3 to 5 minutes to die i know so fatal period in hanging is 3 to 5 minutes so that's why judge has to speak out hang till death because in hanging also you can see suspended animation and so you can hang for 1 minute okay fine judge has said what okay okay hang that's it 1 minute after that he will be fainted after that you resuscitate him he will get back to the normal life that will be considered as a part of what suspended animation even in a case of hypothermia hypothermia means what when body temperature is what less than 35 degree centigrade in a case of heat stroke in a case of the drowning also pani mein doob ke marna right and i say drowning also right now so for time being person will be what and he will appear to be dead but if you are going to do if you are going to perform cpr and resuscitate patient will revive in a case of what wasting disease like the cholera morphine overdose fine please understand that this can be produced artificially also by yoga practitioners yes they can but overall please remember that suspended animation most commonly it is seen among newborn babies newborn babies newborn babies please understand here that there was a case in new delhi that there was a delivery of a twin baby right there was a delivery of a twins hai na but both appeared to be dead after the after the birth and the gynecologist so so actually they actually uh they resuscitated uh, like only for 4 5 minutes after that they declared them dead. okay fine all right So fine. So they packed the babies in a bag, and after that, when parents they took this bag out of the hospital, after 15-20 minutes leaving the hospital, they found some movement in that bag, and after that, they rushed to a nearby hospital. They found that one of the babies was alive, but by that time it was very very much late, and doctors could not revive them. This was the case of what suspended animation. Do you think this should be considered as criminal medical negligent act do you think so yes this will be considered as premature declaration of death and doctor can be punished for issuing the 
false medical certificate false death certificate please understand that there are two ipcs we have to learn here see one ipc is 197 one ipc is 198 ipc means what what is the meaning of ipc say whenever i will be teaching see whenever i am teaching the forensic medicine please understand that i will be talking about some laws rules and regulations right ipcs so i will be talking about laws of india ipc means indian penal code every country has different different rules and regulations as per their judiciary easy to understand fine so please understand that and uh, issuing false certificate is a punishable offense using false certificate is also a punishable offense and the and the punishment will be for seven years doctor and patient both fine so punishment will be for seven years so please understand that yes if death is declared and certified in this case prematurely doctor can be punished for issuance of false medical certificate under ipc number 197 easy to understand i hope you have understood all these points right easy to understand no fine see see if i ask you what is the meaning of ipc and what is the meaning of crpc IPC and CRPC. See, what is the full form of IPC? What is the full form of IPC? Dr. Subhadeep, yes, it can be, but actually, see, as per this situation, and as per this situation, this is a case of suspended animation. So, paraplegia, that is 100% different, right? Dr. Earn online for USMLE, you can ask me personally. Okay, no? So, like, uh, right now, we are learning forensic medicine. And I will be and I will be on the topic as of now. <laughs> okay, cello fine. So we'll talk on that also. Right? You can contact me personally. IPC means Indian Penal Code. CRPC means what? What is the full form of CRPC? Criminal Procedure Code. Right now. Okay. IPC means what? Indian penal code how to understand this part how to understand and how to understand this part please understand that when i talk about ipc where there is what indian penal code no and so penal means penalty penal means penalty please understand that ipc defines the offenses and punishment ipc gives the definition ipc gives the definition of the offenses and punishment but when I talk about CRPC, CRPC means what? Criminal. P is the procedure. P is the procedure. Okay. How to proceed for a case? How to proceed for a case that will be considered as CRPC. How to understand this part? Very, very easy to understand. Suppose in a village, if there was a murder. Suppose in a village, if there was a murder. After that, obviously, obviously, so many people will come together there. And so many. So after that, so after that, some people obviously they are going to make a phone call to police station. See they now the police is going to receive a phone call. Okay, sir, you please come here. Like, like you please you come to this spot there is a murder here okay now after that see police has to inform the magistrate police has to inform the magistrate sir actually in that village there is a murder so i have to go there for inquiry right okay so after that so police is going to receive the permission from magistrate now police has reached here obviously there will be so many people Anna? so now police is going to do the inquiry this inquiry is called as what this inquiry is called as inquest. And this inquiry is called as inquest. Okay, fine. So now please understand here that the police is going to ask all the people, okay, did anyone see anything? Did anyone see anything? I know. So now, like, suppose if one or two people are saying, yes, I have seen that there was a person who murdered, who stabbed him. And after that, he ran away in this direction. So when a few people are saying, yes, I have seen something or we have seen something, Police is going to make a report. Find the police is going to make a report, and that report, and so that report, right? So that report will be called as, as per the Indian language, as per the Indian 
term that will be called the panchinama hai na see that will be called the panchinama right panchinama very good now the police is going to submit this panchinama report to the magistrate office and on the basis of the inquiry police is going to arrest police is going to arrest the accused person and after that police is going to present him to the court right now after that police is going to present him to the court now see here actually this was started from here and after that an arrested person accused person was sent to the court in this manner please understand what is this this is all about a procedure this is all about a procedure so this proceeding is done by crpc easy to understand now i hope there is no any confusion in the meaning of crpc ipc means what indian penal code it defines the offenses it defines the punishment when i say that ipc number 375 what does it mean ipc number 375 it defines rape it defines rape it defines rape rape this defines rape that without the consent and without the will of a woman if a man is going to attempt for the sexual intercourse or you know sexual harassment whatever so this will be considered as what and rape right now is it to understand and ipc number 376 it defines punishment for the rape it defines punishment for the rape i know so basically ipc gives the definition and crpc informs you how to proceed for a case right now i hope everything is clear to you ipc and crpc now there should be no confusion right suspended animation is i hope suspended animation is clear to all of you right so now what is the logic behind suspended animation how it can happen how suspended animation can happen and please understand here what is happening here See here, like at that time, signs of the life will be reduced to the minimum. Then after the resuscitation, how a person is getting revived? Please understand that by that time, during the temporary suspension of the life, by that time, the individual cells will be using what dissolved oxygen in the body fluid and remain viable. So when you resuscitate, person will get alive. This is called as suspended animation. now can you solve this question can you answer answer this question see it is the most common cause of the apparent death yes okay fine i can understand during this stay the individual cells utilize the dissolved oxygen in body fluids and remain viable yes this is also correct doctor can be punished for issuance of false medical certificate under ipc number 197 yes this is also correct it cannot be produced voluntarily it can be produced so incorrect statement will be option number c please remember a suspended animation is very very important topic for you most commonly it is seen in newborn baby is it to understand fine now next question see this question please i hope this is uh, this should be very easy for you one is autopsy one is biopsy so what is the difference here see autopsy means what autopsy means post mortem examination after the death right you have to do examination and biopsy means what you have to do histopathological examination you have to do what histopathological examination of living tissues right no living tissues right so before post mortem examination obviously you have to open the body right you have to open the body right no you have to give incision all right okay we can understand here see here when we are going to give incision from see when we are going to give incision so just below the chin to pubis below the chin to pubis and i like this okay this is called as i shaped incision this is called as i shaped overall this is most common 
type of incision given for post mortem examination okay very easy to understand okay fine now suppose if i am giving incision in the biacromial process like this and say here so bilateral like this after that i am going to give incision up to the pubis right up to the pubis right so this is called as t shaped incision t shaped right now okay fine very this is called a t shaped which is also called the bucket handle shape which is also called as bucket handle which is also called a bucket handle shape okay fine chalo theek hai see we can easily understand i shaped and t shaped all right now from the acromion process to sphoid process right here like this and after that i am going to give incision up to the pubic up to the pubis right so this is called as y shaped incision y shaped incision but in certain condition like whenever there will be hanging case or a strangulation case at that time examiner is giving like at that time the forensic specialist will be giving incision around the neck and then up to the pubis right around the neck like this and like this and after that he will go down now this will be called as modified y shaped and this will be called as what modified y shaped modified y shaped incision what about if you are getting a dead body from a custody from a jail during the interrogation by the police a person died now you tell me where does police hit more over the back right now so now please understand here that i shaped t shaped y shaped modified y shaped we give at the anterior position of the body anterior part of the body but for the custodial death please remember for the custodial death or hai na and as we have to give incision over the posterior part over the back and we have to give incision like this hai na from the acromion process to the gluteal part hai na like this x shaped incision this is called as what x shaped incision x shaped incision easy to understand now i hope all types of incisions are clear to all of you right so can you answer me this one after seeing the photo what is your diagnosis which type of incision is this as per the requirement we have to open the body you know so whenever there will be hanging specifically i want you to do the examination of this part examination of the cervical part easy to understand right and so now what will be answer answer will be modified y shape right modified y shape modified y shape if i ask you one more time if i ask you one more time if you are giving incision below chin to pubis which type of incision is this can you answer please write fast in chat box yes i shaped right i shaped suppose if you are giving incision from acromion part like this and after that you are going down then t shaped if you are giving incision over the back part over the posterior part from one acromion to one gluteal part and so like this so this will be called as what x shaped so what kind of question they can frame what kind of question they can frame they will be asking you this kind of question that in a custodial death which type of incision is mostly preferred which type of incision should be given in this manner they are asking the question and what is the most common type of incision i shaped that's it very easy to understand right very good now see here see we should also discuss some of the methods of the autopsy which type of post mortem examination we are doing so we are going to learn four types of four methods of four techniques of autopsy four techniques of autopsy right now please understand here that one is called the virchow's method another is latewell's method and then gons technique and rocket and sky technique see from the techniques of post mortem examination they are framing question see what is happening here when i talk about a virchow's technique virchow's technique see here after opening the body each and every organ will be removed separately so v for virchow v for one by one you are removing organ one by one for chaus v for hai na one by one right now one by one so basically when i am framing this kind of question right now suppose if this is like this okay stomach okay but when i am making hai na liver 
ओके देन गॉल ब्लैडर ओके फाइन सो वट इज हैपनिंग इयर प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड इयर दैट इन दी वर्च हाउस टेक्निक I am going to remove the gall bladder separately. See, my diagram is very poor, so you have to tolerate it. Okay, so I am going to remove the gall bladder separately. I am going to remove the stomach separately. I am going to remove the pancreas, liver, bile duct, biliary tree, each and every organ separately. Okay, fine. So that we can do the proper examination. This is called as Virchow's technique. Obviously, after that you have to repack it, and after that you have to pack all the organs inside the abdomen, right? You are not going to take it out for the selling, right? You are not going to do any business, right? No, simple, right? So you are going to, you are going to keep all the organs back. Okay, fine. Now you tell me. Now when you are going to keep all the organs back, do you think anatomical relations will be preserved? No, obviously no. Anatomical relations are not preserved. See, gall bladder will go down in the pelvic part, right? No, and because see, you have removed all the organs separately, no, separately, right? So please understand that in Virchow's technique, we are removing one by one, and all organs one by one, and because of this only, anatomical relations will be, anatomical relations will not be preserved. Next is the Latule's technique. Here we are going to remove all the organs at the same time. We are going to hold the tongue and the rectum. So one hand we are going to keep here, like at the tongue part, posterior part of the tongue. And one hand we are going to keep at the rectum. We are going to keep all the organs at the same time. So what is happening here? We are removing in mass. We are removing all the organs together. And like cervical part, thoracic organs, abdominal organs, genital organs, pelvic organs. Right now? Okay, fine. So now we tell me, See, overall, obviously, this is the rapid, easy technique, right? This is the rapid technique. So now, when I am going to keep it back, do you think anatomical relations will be preserved? Yes. In this condition, anatomical relations are preserved. So far, we have completed two types of autopsy technique. One, Virchow's. Second, Latule's. Third is Gohn's technique. Suppose if I have to do postmortem examination, only of cervical organ, only of the thoracic organ, only of the abdominal organ, only of the pelvic organs. So I am going to remove the organs as per the block, cervical block, thoracic block, abdominal block or the genital block. So block by block in bones technique, we are going to do what? Block by block. Block by block. Easy to understand. This is bones technique. Bones technique. And one more technique where we are going to perform in situ dissection only. We are not going to remove every organs out. See, we are doing the dissection inside only, in situ dissection. Why? In some situation, in some situation where, Anna, where you have a risk of any infection like HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C. See, if the, see, if the person uh, like who is actually dead now, if he was... If it was the case of HIV positive, hepatitis B, C, whatever, or if there will be the radiation hazard, obviously you are going to do in situ dissection. Even when we have to do dissection of the fetal brain, we are using what? Rocket and sky technique only. Rocket and sky technique. Now please write in chat box without seeing the note, without seeing the, without seeing your note. Four techniques of autopsy. Please write in chat box. All of you, please write it down. Very, very important topic. Virchow's technique, Latule technique, right now, Gohn's technique, and Rocket and Sky technique. Now, you tell me out of these four techniques, where anatomical relation will be preserved out of these four latule's technique right okay fine in which type see in which technique of the autopsy you are removing organ one by one virchow's technique in which technique you are removing the organs block by block block by block bones technique in which technique you are doing in situ dissection in situ dissection Rocket and sky technique. Old questions, repeatedly asked questions. Fine. Hello. All right. Okay. Related to see, please related to the autopsy. Please mention two important points. See, one technique is 
मेडिको लीगल ऑटोपसी मेडिको लीगल ऑटोपसी सेकेंड इज द क्लिनिकल और पैथोलॉजिकल ऑटोपसी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल प्लीज पे अटेंशन ऑन टू इंपॉर्टेंट टाइप्स ऑफ ऑटोपसी वन इज कॉल मेडिको लीगल ऑटोपसी मेडिको लीगल ऑटोपसी शुड बी परफॉर्म इन विच कंडीशन इन विच केसेस वेन एवर देर विल बी एनी सस्पीशियस डेथ वेन एवर देर विल बी एनी सस्पीशियस डेथ वेन एवर देर विल बी एनी अनैचुरल डेथ अनैचुरल डेथ अनैचुरल डेथ है ना लाइक इन अ केस ऑफ मर्डर हैंगिंग सुसाइड पॉइजनस केस रोड ट्रैफिक एक्सीडेंट केस बर्न्स राइट ना सो दीज आर व्हाट और इन एनी कंडीशन वेयर डेथ इज सस्पेशियस यू आर सपोज टू परफॉर्म व्हाट पोस्टमार्टम एग्जामिनेशन द क्वेश्चन इज दैट इन अ केस ऑफ मेडिको लीगल ऑटोपसी आर यू गोइंग टू टेक द कंसेंट ऑफ गार्जियन आर यू गोइंग टू टेक द कंसेंट ऑफ गार्जियन और फैमिली मेंबर्स Are you going to take the permission from the family member that and that we are going to perform the post mortem examination? Are you giving permission or not? Are you going to take the consent? In a case of medical legal autopsy, no need of consent. No need of consent from family members. Post mortem examination is legally permitted. You have to do it. You have to do it. I know. so but in this case in police uh, like in the medico legal autopsy police authorization is mandatory police authorization is mandatory but what about clinical autopsy pathological autopsy suppose if a patient was admitted in your department for last 14 15 days and he was under the treatment but finally uh, but what happened uh, like patient actually uh, like he died now you want to do some kind of research you want to do examination you want to do uh, you want to do the, you want to do the examination you want to uh, you want to do the research work and all fine so in this condition now please understand that you have to take the consent you have to take the consent from family member you have to take the consent from family member fine understand okay fine see one more thing is there See one more type that is called the vitropsy. Vitropsy. Have you heard the name of this this type of autopsy? Vitropsy is also type of autopsy. Suppose in a building collapse, if there is multiple fractures of many many bones, now it is very very difficult to do the post mortem examination by opening the body and all. In this condition, what you are going to do? Vitropsy. You are going to do what? See, this is a type of least invasive procedure. You are going to do what? radiological investigation you are going to do ct scan or mri you are going to get more than 1000 pictures hai right? na so basically on the basis of radiological images you are going to do this fine right? this is what vitrops vitrops one more type of autopsy in a case of suicide in a case of suicide where you are going to ask the family members you are going to ask only the questionnaire only question what kind of mentality he had what kind of person he was what kind of activities he had right this is also a type of autopsy this is called as psychological autopsy very good dr bodham it kuma right this is called as psychological autopsy see these can be your one liner questions and i see here how much i have taught you so far like during your class itself so like if you see all the questions of ini ct approximately 23 questions and all questions you can solve i'm telling see i'm going to make a small video of that uh, like of those uh, all questions of ini ct fine so but you can solve all the questions fine okay next question the question number question number 3 in a case of poisoning two openings are a ligated one above the cardia of a stomach and one below the antrum okay fine so basically you are going to ligate here you are going to ligate here and you are going to ligate here okay fine which type of what is the method of autopsy which type of autopsy is that 
So now please understand that whenever we have to do the post-mortem examination of the particular organ, separately, particular organ. So whenever I am going to do, see in a case of the poisoning, in a case of the poisoning, obviously the poison will get accumulated in the stomach. And the poison will get accumulated in the stomach. So specifically, we have to do the postmortem examination of a stomach. So for this, we have to remove a stomach. First of all, we are going to ligate here and we are going to ligate here. So, so that the content of a stomach should not go up and should not go down. Fine. This is called as double ligation method. Whenever we have to do the postmortem examination of a stomach, and so which method we are applying? We are applying what? Double ligation method. Now the question is that, are you going to give incision over greater curvature or a lesser curvature? Where you are going to give incision? Obviously, you have to give incision so that you can open the stomach, right? So where would you give the incision? Obviously, you have to give incision over greater curvature. This can be your question, greater curvature, right? Greater curvature. Easy to understand? Now, when I have to do post-mortem examination, especially of heart, especially of heart, which method we are going to apply whenever we have to do the post-mortem examination of the heart? And I see we have to follow the pathway of blood flow. We have to follow the pathway of blood flow. And so this is actually what? See, this is the right atrium, left atrium. And right ventricle, left ventricle. And so blood flow method we have to apply here. See here. So first of all, we have to give incision from right atrium to right ventricle, then left atrium to left ventricle. This is called as what? Inflow, outflow method. Inflow, outflow method. So if we have to do postmortem examination of heart, which method we are using here? Inflow, outflow method, heart. And and now you tell me for a stomach which method we have used here just now? Double ligation method. Double ligation method. I hope all these points are clear to all of you. Right? Okay, fine. See here. Now, if I have to do the postmortem examination of a spinal cord, brain. Okay. See here. Most of the time we are not going to do the examination of a spinal cord, but whenever there will be hanging case, strangulation case or in any condition where you suspect that there will be injury of the spinal cord, you have to do it, fine. So what is the best method? Okay, see, please understand that we can go up to the spinal cord anteriorly also and the posteriorly also, right now. So posterior approach is best. Posterior approach is best for a spinal cord postmortem exam. Now, if I have to do the examination of brain in some kind of the poisoning, I know. So, first of all, see, first of all, we have to open the skull. No. Are you going to give incision over the frontal part here? Are you going to give incision just at the anterior part of the ear here? Okay. Or you are going to give incision over the back part of the ear lobe, over the mastoid process, where you are going to keep? Fine. Where, where? Please understand that if you are going to open from here, from here, Obviously, you can damage cerebral cortex. So, so see here. So, just below at the cerebrum right now. At the back part. At the back part. Fine now. So, please understand that. Anna, incision should be given just behind the ear lobe. This is your question. This is your question. Remember it. In this manner, they are framing the question. Right? Okay. Now, related to... Related to postmortem examination, can you solve this question? Which of the following is a wrong statement related to postmortem changes? Anna? The loss of voluntary movement is the earliest sign after death. Okay. Tachinoir sclerotica is the earliest eye sign after death. Greenish discoloration in right iliac fossa. Is this the earliest sign of decomposition externally? And earliest sign of decomposition internally. Discoloration of aortic intima. Out of these four, which one is wrong? Which one is wrong? Can you answer me? See, overall if I ask you, what is the earliest sign after death? What is the earliest sign after death?
Yes, please understand the earliest sign after the death is what? Loss of voluntary movement. Okay, fine. So, this is right. But when I talk about what is the earliest I sign after their death, obviously, please understand that I is very, very important organ to do the examination after their death, right? Now, so that we can understand time since death or a person is actually dead or not, right? No, so time since death, I is very, very important. We can do the examination, I know. See, we can do the examination of vitreous humor. See, vitreous humor is the best medium. Please understand here that to measure the time since death in I, what is the most important part where we can do the examination? It is vitreous humor. It is vitreous humor. Anna? Vitreous humor. And especially in the vitreous humor, you have to check what's the lactic acid you can measure. You can measure the potassium. So, the most important parameter to check in vitreous humor is the potassium. Potassium. Because potassium will keep on rising after the death. Right? So the concentration of potassium will keep on rising. Right? Because after the death, obviously, there will be what? Right? See, there will be a stagnant, there will be a stoppage of the circulation. After that, there will be hemolysis. Right? After that, there will be a fragmentation of RBCs. And finally, see, at a physiological, what is happening? There will be rise of potassium. So you can measure the potassium. Please understand that. Potassium is the best parameter to check time since death in vitreous humor. Remember, this is also your question. But the question as per this topic, what is the earliest I sign after the death? This is important. Right? Okay, see this question first. And after that, we are going to correlate this topic with previous question. See this question first. Solve this question first. First of all, you tell me what is the diagnosis here? What is the diagnosis here? What is this? Very good, Dr. Shifana Abdeen, Dr. Osama, Dr. Mupi Nini, Shiva Prasad. Very good, Dr. Umesh. Very good, Dr. Bada Kumar. Very good. See, this image based question, or this is extremely important. Extremely important, I'm telling you. Yes. See, you can see that there is a formation of. Anna? See, you can see here that actually there is a formation of the two triangles here, no? Formation of the two triangles at, at the two angles, fine. So, why there is brownish, blackish discoloration? Because of the drying, because of the desiccation, because of the deposition of the debris. This is called as Tacky Neuer Sclerotica. This is called as Tacky Neuer Sclerotica. See this photo here. And I see this photo here. See here. Post mortem eye change. These two are extremely important image based questions related to your exam. Just after death, obviously, see, you know, obviously, intraocular tension will be, will be decreasing for sure. And I see there will be placidity of eyeball obviously see there will be fall of intraocular tension there will be fall of intraocular tension i know see here just after death overall first of all tell me how much is the normal intraocular tension how much is the normal how much is the normal bolo See, up to 22, this will be normal up to 22. Okay, fine. Up to 22 or 24. Okay, MMAG. See, just after death. My question is that just after death, how much will be intraocular tension? This will be approximately 12 mmHg. Anna? It will be 3 mmHg after 3 hours of death. Anna? And what is happening here? After... 4 to 8 hours of death, intraocular tension will become 0. And after 4 to 8 hours of death, intraocular tension will become 0. So, please understand that whenever there will be flaccidity of eyeball, whenever there will be loss of intraocular tension, don't you think there will be fragmentation of the blood vessels? Yes. So, first, most important, first, most important, earliest eye sign is this which you are seeing here. This is what? See, you can see here in the retinal blood vessels, retinal blood vessels, there will be fragmentation of blood. See here, no? Fragmentation of blood vessels. See, you can see 
red and white white patches here red and white white and so so do you think this is something like the railway sign do you think this is something like the railway trucking sign and i know yes and please understand that ye batao retinal blood vessels can you see with your naked eyes obviously no and right? so this can be appreciated only with the help of ophthalmoscope only with the help of ophthalmoscope please understand that and right? this can appear within seconds or minutes and this can persist up to 1 hour this is called as tevorkian sign tevorkian sign please understand that earliest eye sign after death is kevorkian sign not the tachinoia sclerotica tachinoia sclerotica will take some time because of the deposition of debris because of the deposition of dust there will be formation of what these two triangles this is tachinoia sclerotica when you can see this you can understand acha time since that will be what 4 hours 4 hours so remember here earliest eye sign is kevorkian sign not the tachinoia sclerotica sign so solve this question which of the following is right regarding the post mortem change shown in this photo option number a no this is related to kevorkian sign option number a option number b this is related to kevorkian sign option number c this is also related to kevorkian sign but option number d this is related to tachinoia sclerotica now can you solve this question ab batao now question number 4 you can get back here right and so now easily you can rule out that option number b is wrong option number b is wrong tachinoia sclerotica is not the earliest sign but kevorkian sign kevorkian sign i hope all these points are clear to all of you these are basic basic questions but you need to understand that only this kind of questions are being framed forensic medicine is the easiest subject and 100% scoring subject you cannot miss forensic medicine i'm telling you 100% scoring okay fine very good doctor chalo very good chalo all right hai na now see some one liner question see here the earliest and after the death obviously there will be loss of the voluntary movement right earliest eye signs you have to be very very much careful earliest eye sign if they are asking okay keep working sign earlier sign of decomposition decomposition ha sadna galna right autolysis putrefaction you might have learned and a decomposition first sign you are going to see what greenish discoloration over right leg was that 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 part will come and i will teach you that part also but internally you can see what discoloration of aortic intima that is earlier sign of decomposition internally now see question number 6 If a woman sentenced to death is found to be pregnant the high court shall postpone the execution and may if it thinks fit commute the sentence to imprisonment for the lifetime basically what i am asking here in this question hai na if a lady is pregnant and she was hai na she was sentenced to death now it can be changed also it can be see here the execution can be postponed or like this can be this can be changed to lifetime jail hai na lifetime imprisonment as per which ipc or which crpc very easy to understand this is very very important very very important crpc very good dr surendra dr bodami dr praveen dr rishi dr osama dr ahil very good hai na yes as per cr hai na as per crpc 416 remember see here in these CRPC 416 and IPC number 228A. These two are very very important. CRPC 174. That part will come. That part I will explain. Don't worry. Here, please remember. First of all, CRPC 416. If a lady is found to be pregnant, and after their death sentence, yes, death sentence can be postponed or it can be changed to lifetime imprisonment. Okay, fine. All right. Okay. What about IPC number 228A? Where you have learned IPC number 228? where you have learned see all ipcs i am not going to teach you at the same time i will be teaching you only few ipcs which are repeatedly asked and how to memorize i will teach you 
but IPCs are very very important. Where you have learned IPC number 228A. See, in a case of a rape, you might have learned. I have given you hint. IPC means Indian Penal Code. See, I can see here that so many people are here from different different nationalities, also different different countries, also from Ghana, from Pakistan, from from the Jordan, from and uh, Africa also. Anna. So when I will be teaching IPC, so this is all about Indian laws. Your country will be having your rules and regulations. Okay, fine. No, no. During the case of rape, please understand here. Yeah, during the case of see, you know. Ye batao, if you are getting a rape victim, can you disclose her name? Answer me yes or no. Can you disclose her Aadhaar card? No, please understand that revealing the identity of a rape victim is a punishable offense. Revealing the identity of a rape victim is a punishable offense as per IPC number 228A. So, being a doctor, you have to do the examination right now. So, by the doctor or by the media person, anyone who is going to reveal the identity of a rape victim, this is a punishable offense. Minimum number of years in jail, 2 years plus minus fine. Okay, plus minus fine. Remember it. Next question. See, this is related to medical jurisprudence. Okay, next is what? Medical jurisprudence. I am teaching you now medical jurisprudence. Find out the wrong match. Subpoena or summon. Subpoena. See, is this a legal document which compels you to attend the court for evidences? Okay, fine. See, there are two types of offenses, available and non available. Right? See here, cognizable, cognizable offense will be non available. Yes, this is also right. Session court is the lowest court which can give death sentence. Okay, yes, I will learn that. I will teach you that here also. We are going to learn, right? What about option number D? Option number D, kya hai bhai? This is a right or a wrong. Sahi hai ya galat hai batao. See option number D. Repeatedly asked question in FMG, NEET PG, INIC. Repeatedly asked question. So this is very much important topic. Answer karo, batao. Wrong? Chalo, theek hai. Samaj lete isko ki hota hai kya. First of all, please understand that. See here. Okay, option number A. Option number A is subpoena. Yes, subpoena is a legal document. Same thing like, uh, like invitation card. You are getting invitation card. An invitation card for, uh, for the marriage ceremony or any kind of. So, so basically, subpoena is an invitation card from the court. If, and obviously, when you will be practicing in hospital, under your duty, if a person or if a patient has died and if you are being invited to the court, obviously you are going to get a subpoena, you are going to get someone. And so now, and on the basis of that legal document, you are supposed to go to give your evidences. And so this is a legal document, fine? Yes, this is 100%, right? Option number B is also right. Okay, fine. Now, there are seven hierarchy of the court. When I See, when I talk about this court in India, criminal court, right? there are seven hierarchy. First of all, Supreme Court at the national level. So, in India, located in New Delhi. After that, High Court in the capital of every state. After that, Session Court. Right? After that, Assistant Session Court, Assistant Session Court, see Session Court is also called as Additional Session Court. After that, Magistrate Court, see after that, Chief, after that, Chief, First Class and then Second Class. 
तो लास्ट थ्री मजिस्ट्रेट कोर्ट प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड हियर दैट सी हियर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सुप्रीम कोर्ट हाई कोर्ट सेशन कोर्ट असिस्टेंट चीफ जुडिशियल मजिस्ट्रेट फर्स्ट क्लास एंड सेकेंड क्लास नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज दैट सी दिस टेबल इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दिस टेबल इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट हाउ मच इज द पावर ऑफ एवरी कोर्ट हाउ मच इज द पावर ऑफ एवरी कोर्ट है ना ओके फाइन ओके सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑब्वियसली है ना सो ऑल पावर ऑब्वियसली है ना सो दे कैन गिव maximum uh, they can give the maximum punishment after that high court after their session please understand that supreme court high court and maximum they can give death sentence fine even session court also can give death sentence but it should always be approved by high court so yes session court is the lowest court which can give death sentence after that assistant session judge and see see rule of 1 3 7 10 One, three, seven, ten. Same like the novs for a mnemonic, right? Okay, fine. Assistant session court can send a person to jail for ten years. Chief judicial magistrate seven year. First class magistrate three years. Second class one year. Now, how much fine they can impose? See, up to five, up to chief judicial unlimited fine, unlimited fine. How much they want? How much they can? How much they can decide as per the circumstances? First class judicial magistrate, as per Indian rupees, it is a pro. And this is up to ten thousand Indian rupees. I am saying what? Indian rupees. I am saying Indian rupees. Okay, fine. And second class judicial magistrate, five thousand. This, see here. No, this table is extremely important. How much is the power of different different courts, and how much fine they can impose for how many years they can send the person to jail? Easy to understand. All right. now see here when i talk about this court yes one court is also civil court is also there civil court and right? civil court see here in civil court the person who is filing a case a person who is filing a case against someone he will be called as he will be called as the plaintiff against whom he will be called as the defendant he will be called as defendant defendant right Okay, fine. But what about this court here? See, you know, criminal court will be working for any illegal activities, which is against the law, obviously, है ना? So here, suppose if there is a murder of one person, this is not the murder of only only from the one person. This is murder for the है ना? For the entire, you can say state. So here, so appealing party will be called as what a state. and against whom the case is there he will be called as defendant he will be called as defendant same okay fine easy to understand the civil court is working for you know for the land disputes for the marriage disputes and all right now i hope this is very very easy for you see option number a 100% right abc 100% true what about the what about the conduct money please write it down this is also called as diet money this is also called as diet money conduct money is also called as the diet money suppose now i am in new delhi okay one year before a patient died under my duty that was the case of burns and right? burns okay are like 80% burn. okay fine so that was the case of homicidal patient and right? died under my duty and on their death summary my signature is after that even the forensic specialist Who did? Like his signature is also there. Fine. So now I am being summoned by the court. Now I am going to say from Delhi. Now I am supposed to go to Rajasthan or to some other place. Obviously, I am going to go from one one place to another place. I will be getting some allowances for my traveling. है ना? This is called as diet money this is called as diet money who will decide it obviously the judge is going to decide that how much diet money how much conduct money should be paid to the witness to the hai na uh, like to the actually doctor here right is it understand fine please understand this is very very important related to your exam in a case of civil case hai na civil case 
कंडक्ट मनी शुड बी पेड ड्यूरिंग द टाइम ऑफ समर ड्यूरिंग द टाइम ऑफ गिविंग एविडेंसेस यू विल गेट द मनी यू विल गेट द मनी ड्यूरिंग द टाइम ऑफ सॉल्विंग द समन बट इन अ केस ऑफ क्रिमिनल कोर्ट हियर no conduct money is given during the time of serving the summon it will be given after the after the case okay no after the trial part okay no now the question is that in civil case who will pay you money the party who has invited you it will be paid by the party hai na a team or b team will be there na fine no but in a case of criminal court who will pay you the money who will pay you money see because this is related to government only you know this is related to government only so this will be paid by suppose if you are the employee of a government institute hai na suppose if you are working in a government hospital so obviously you will be paid by the institute by the government of india Uh, suppose if you are a private practitioner who will pay you and this will be paid by the court not by the judge and this will be paid by the court fine is it to understand not by the judge right so remember it see remember it option number d in this question find out the wrong match find out the wrong match conduct money should be given during this summon in this case answer is wrong in civil case yes during solving the summon you will get the money but criminal case conduct money is not being paid during solving the summon it will be paid after is it to understand i hope all these points are clear to on the basis of these point how many things i have taught you how many lines i have taught you all these are important related to your exam okay dr ankit pande this is clear to you right i hope this is clear to all of you now chalo theek hai See, remember again. I am telling you. Again, I am telling you. Civil case very, very important. Civil case fee will be paid to the witness at the time of serving the summons to meet the expenses for attending the court. Who will pay you? The party who has invited you. Okay. But what about this condition? No conduct money is paid to the witness. at the time of summing the summons after the evidence after the after the trial yes expert witness is paid by the court or by the institution who will decide it judge will decide okay fine so judge will not pay you it will be paid by the court or the government institution right remember this this is extremely important part repeatedly asked fine chalo aage badhte hain ab next question which of the following is wrong about dying declaration dying declaration and dying deposition very very important i am i am teaching you medical jurisprudence now the one is a dying declaration another is a dying deposition please understand that in india we are practicing only dying declaration in india we are not practicing the dying deposition in india we are not practicing the dying deposition remember it this is your first question so what is the meaning of dying declaration suppose if uh, like uh, like you might have heard about so many about rape cases and so many cases have happened here uh, right now so so just at the time of death when a person is knowing that see maybe after the rape and maybe after the murder when a person is about to die when that person is also thinking that he is almost he is about to die hai na now he wants to give a statement he wants to give a statement right okay 
Now he wants to give a statement. Fine. So during the time of death, just before the death, if a person wants to give a statement, first of all, who can record it? First of all, who can record it? See, ideally it should be recorded by magistrate. Ideally, it should be recorded by magistrate, but patient does not have patient does not have that much time. And a patient does not have that much time. Why not? And so like so like this can be recorded by anyone. It can be recorded by anyone. See, uh, this can be recorded by a doctor also. See, this can be recorded by the police also. This can be recorded by the village headman also. And uh, village headman also. Okay, fine. Chalo, fine. So this can be recorded by anyone. Okay, fine. Now the question is that during dying declaration, what is the responsibility of a doctor? During the dying declaration, what is the responsibility of a doctor? Very, very important word that is called the compass mentis. Compass mentis. It is the duty of a doctor to certify that. And okay, that diseased person was you know, mentally composed. Before giving the declaration, he or she was fully oriented and fully oriented and conscious. Matlab, statement dene se pehle wo pure hosho havas mein tha. Easy to understand. And a mental condition was completely composed. So this is the duty of the doctor to certify that yes, before giving a statement, person was completely mentally oriented and conscious. This is called as compass mentis. Compass mentis. Given by whom? Given by doctor. So, yes, this is important. Yes. Okay, fine. Now, the question is that, <coughs> are you going to take the oath? Are you going to take the oath? In dying declarations, Anna, see, like it is, assume that a dying person, a dying person does not lie, right? So, please understand that oath is not mandatory. Oath is not mandatory. Oath should not be taken. Oath should not be taken, right now? Now, what about option number D? If the declared survey, the declaration is not admit but has a I like a smaller value. Okay, fine. So please understand here that what about leading question? What is the meaning of leading questions? Option number A. Option number A. Leading questions means what? Obviously, whenever you will be in the court, advocate can ask you leading questions, right? See, leading questions means what? The kind of questions where you are supposed to answer only in yes or no. Only in yes or no. Answer only in yes or no. Anna? Suppose if the advocate is asking you. Suppose if advocate is asking uh, the witness who is standing in the witness box. Did you see the murder? Yes. So the, uh, so the length of sword was 15 centimeter. Sir, actually I have seen from the land. No, answer me yes or no. Sir, actually no, answer me yes or no. Yes or no. This kind of question will be considered as leading question. I know where a person is supposed to answer only in yes or no. So in dying declaration, no, this kind of questions are not, not permitted. Fine. Okay. So let's understand this part. In dying declaration, no oath is taken. No leading questions are asked. No leading questions are asked. So this is about dying declaration. In India, we are practicing dying declaration. Right? Okay, fine. Now, what about dying deposition? See, dying deposition like in the Western countries and some other countries, dying deposition is being practiced. So what is happening here? What is in the dying deposition? See, suppose if a patient of multiple myeloma was there, multiple myeloma, hello? 80 year old man is very rich. Now, even the bone marrow transplantation is done, even all medicines are over. Basically, patient is not responding to any of the chemotherapy. Fine. 
Now doctor has declared that you are having only 7. Like your body is not responding to the medicines. Maximum you are having 7 to 10 days. That's it. So now, so this man, he wants to divide his property among his sons and brother. Right now? So now, so what is happening? This is called the bedside court. This will be recorded only by the magistrate. This will be recorded only by the magistrate. Now, opposition, opposition advocate will also be there. So defense lawyer will also be there. Will also be there. Fine. Now, in this condition, oath will be taken. Yes, obviously. Are you see leading questions can be allowed? Yes. Cross examination, it can be done. Yes, it can be done. Anna? So now you tell me when leading questions can be asked, when this kind of questions are being allowed, oath is taken, which one will be more superior? Dying declaration or dying deposition? Dying deposition is more superior. But remember, in India, we are not practicing. We are not practicing dying deposition. I know dying deposition, we are not practicing. I hope these points are clear to all of you, right? Anna. So now the question is that, see, related to leading questions, they are asking questions multiple times, leading questions. See, in which condition leading questions are allowed? In which condition leading questions are not allowed? See, leading questions, obviously, this is permitted in dying deposition. What is the meaning of hostile witness? A witness who has changed his statement multiple times, Anna. Means like in first hearing, he has given the different statement. Next time, he has given different statement. So basically, he will be considered as hostile witness. Might be, he is giving this statement for his, you know, like, like he might be a selfish person. Or he was bribed. Or he is giving the statement under, under the pressure. So basically, he will be considered as hostile witness. Now, with him, yes, leading questions can be asked. Okay, now, okay, fine. Now, what is the meaning of direct examination, re-examination, right? Please understand here that. I hope you have seen this movie, Hannah. Uh, so, Damini movie, Damini. Uh, Sunny Deval, uh, Sunny Deval, right? Very, very famous. Hannah, kya hota? Tarik pe tarik, tarik pe tarik, jan saab, right? है ना जस्ट यहां पे क्या होता है जैसे देखो मूवीज में बहुत कुछ दिखाता है ना कि जस्ट साहब फाड़ दे जिस कानून की किताबों को अरे भाई जस्ट साहब तो भाई वो जज है तुम्हें फाड़ के रख देगा वो ये फिल्मों में होते हैं समय ना फाड़ दीजिए इस कानून की किताबों को राइट तो बेसिकली क्या है ये बताओ आप नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज दैट what is the meaning of chief examination, re-examination and cross-examination? Do understand this part. Dekho. See, now you understand here and how we are going to classify different, different lawyers. See, like in this movie, she is Miss Damini. She is Miss Damini. She is Miss Damini. Anna? She was the main witness who saw, who saw the rape. Okay, fine. And the rapist was her, uh, like, uh, like the brother-in-law. Fine. So, she was fighting for the rape victim. Mr. Shekhar, Sunny Deval, and Mr. Shekhar. He was the lawyer of Miss Damini. Anna? Fine. So, like, uh, like in this part, he will be called as a public prosecutor. Right? He will be called as public prosecutor. Public prosecutor, fine. And he is Mr. Chadha. He is Mr. Chadha. He was uh, fighting for the rapist. And right? he was, and right? so he will be considered as what? Defense lawyer. And he will be considered as the Defense lawyer. So now please understand here that. Anna. See now in the witness box, Miss Damini is there. She was invited by Mr. Shekhar. Anna. So first questions will be asked by, first question will be asked by Mr. Shekhar. First, Anna. so this will be called as chief examination. This will be called as what? Chief examination. Okay, fine. During chief examination,
क्रॉस क्वेश्चन एंड लीडिंग क्वेश्चन आर नॉट अलाउ आफ्टर दैट अपोनेंट लॉयर सेकेंड लॉयर और यू कैन से डिफेंस लॉयर नाउ ही विल बी डूइंग वॉट Okay, now he is going to ask the questions, है ना? So like this will be called as what? है ना? He can do what? Cross examination. He can do what? Cross examination. Why we are supposed to do this examination so that we can bring out more information? Please understand here that after this again, Mr. Shekhar will ask the question. This will be called as re-examination. Do understand that leading questions are not permitted in direct examination or re-examination. See, chief examination is also called as a direct examination. Leading questions are not allowed in direct examination and re-examination. Leading questions are allowed only during cross-examination. Only during cross-examination. Now see this part. Now can you tell me, out of these two advocates, out of these two advocates, who can ask the leading questions? Can you ask? Can you answer this question? Who can ask the leading question? Mr. Shekhar or Mr. Chadda? Bolo. Please write in chat box. देखो अब तक है ना देखो अब तो समझ में आ गया होगा पूरा है ना कि सारा सा है सब कुछ clear है right? Leading questions can be asked by the opponent lawyer, है ना? Opponent lawyer or the defense lawyer है, who can ask the cross examination, who can do the cross examination. So, Mr. Chadda, है ना? समझाओ, समझाओ Chadda इन लोगों को, right? सुना होगा dialogue बहुत ज़्यादा सनी दिल का, right? है नहीं? ऐसे बार, ऐसे हथियार बाज़ार में मिलते हैं, right? सौ रुपए के भाव से ओ भाई ये चड्डा है चड्डी नहीं है बहुत अमित कुमार जी कितने सारे मीम बने हैं इंस्टाग्राम पे राइट चलो अच्छा है अच्छा है ओके फाइन नाउ आई होप दिस इज क्लियर राइट सो नाउ वी टेल मी आउट ऑफ मिस्टर चड्डा एंड मिस्टर शेखर हु कैन डू चीफ एग्जामिनेशन हु विल बी डूइंग चीफ एग्जामिनेशन हियर मिस्टर शेखर है ना मिस्टर शेखर है ना so chief examination and the re examination will be done by who will be done by the same side lawyer right same side lawyer and in between there will be cross examination which will be done by opposite lawyer now see related to re examination chief examination cross examination leading questions everything should be clear now now you should not miss any point i am telling you from this topic Leading questions, re-examination, direct examination. One time, every time they are asking this question. One question minimum you can anticipate here. Okay, easy to understand. Fine. See, direct examination is also called as the chief examination. Remember it. Fine. All these points are clear to you. Right. चलो ठीक है आगे बढ़ते हैं अब. Okay, so in this manner we have completed medical jurisprudence. Okay, चलो आगे बढ़ो तो या this is about medical ethics now. Next question is okay, Doctor Abhay is asking what is I E A. Okay, Doctor Abhay is asking what I E A. Please understand here that I have taught you I P C, I have taught you C R P C. Now I E A means what? Indian Evidence Act, Indian Evidence Act, with the help of which you are going to collect evidences. That is I E A, Indian Evidence Act, right, Doctor Abhay? I hope this is clear, है ना? चलो fine. Now the question is that question number eight. A doctor is prescribing multiple investigations and medicines. He gets extra commission for these tests. Doctor can get warning notice for this. Obviously, this is a case of what? Obviously, this is a case of infamous conduct. This is a case of what? Infamous conduct. Hai na? Infamous conduct. This is a case of infamous conduct. What is the meaning of infamous conduct? See, any of the conduct of a doctor which is considered as irresponsible or which is not the modest. Okay, that will be called as infamous conduct, right? 
when i talk about adultery yes adultery is also a type of what infamous conduct hai na suppose hai na uh like suppose if a male doctor is going to touch a female patient inappropriately obviously that is actually bad for right that is infamous conduct and a uh, association what is the meaning of association association if a doctor is having association with if a doctor is having association with unqualified unqualified person unqualified person और हिंदी में झोला छाप डॉक्टर और या तो लिख दिया आपने या तो लिख दिया क्वैक है ना सपोज यू आर रनिंग योर ओन नर्सिंग होम है ना इफ यू हैव हायर्ड सपोज इफ यू हैव सपोज इफ यू आर गोइंग टू हायर द पैरामेडिकल स्टाफ है ना हु आर वेल क्वालिफाइड है ना डिग्री होल्डर नर्सेज पैरामेडिकल स्टाफ यू हैव टू पे दे मोर नाउ यू वॉन्ट टू सेव योर मनी नाउ यू आर गोइंग टू हायर दे कंपाउंडर्स हु इज है ना हु आर ओनली टेन पास Who have practiced under some doctor who knows how to do injection, how to do basic dressings. That's it. But he does not know. He is not qualified. No, he does not know the side effects and all. Why not? That is means you are having what type of association with unqualified. So, so basically, what you are going to do there, and you are going to do what? You are going to do covering. You are going to do the. covering of those people covering of those people is it to understand you are going to do covering of those people right now this is called the covering of a quack this is also and this is also infamous conduct i mean kitne sare jhola chap doctor hai na hai ni i think kitne sare log jo gaon mein practice karte they are earning more than the legal doctors hai na so basically being a qualified doctor if you are going to cover them this will be called a covering but this is illegal this is also infamous conduct what about dichotomy what about dichotomy dichotomy means a fee splitting fee splitting see dichotomy means fee splitting hai na patient had only minor headache you have written ct scan you have written mri क्यों भाई क्योंकि एक्स्ट्रा कमीशन मिलेगा वन सिटी स्कैन यू विल गेट वन यू विल गेट मिनिमम वन थाउजेंड रुपीज एक्स्ट्रा फॉर माइनर एसिडिटी वॉज देयर स्मॉल है ना ओनली एसिडिटी वॉज देयर यू हैव रिटर्न वॉट है ना सी ओनली लाइक माइनर स्टमक पे सब एक्सटर्नल पेन दैट्स इट नाउ यू आर डूइंग ई सी जी है ना ई सी जी इकोग्राफी इको कार्डियोग्राफी है ना after that you are also doing all myocardial infarction enzyme test okay you are going to perform the top t and the and the troponin i test acha fine badam bolta rahe nahi kuch nahi sab kuch normal for and you know, for simple headache you are writing many antibiotics or especially care wahi dukan se lena hai and you have to buy these medicines only from these only from that pharmaceutical shop that's it and you know, only from that pharmacy why because doctor will get extra commission approximately 25% commission whatever obviously this is what in famous conduct in famous conduct so this is called a what fee splitting this is called as a fee splitting this is what dichotomy hai na or a fee sharing so answer is what dichotomy see dichotomy old question dichotomy hai na fee sharing fee sharing you are getting extra commission dichotomy dichotomy is very very important okay see even if you are receiving some gifts from pharmaceutical company that is also in famous conduct if you are practicing illegal abortion in famous conduct if you are practicing what euthanasia in famous conduct hai right? na over advertisement obviously hai right? na bad right now so, <coughs> so please understand here that for all these yeah even what even if you are under the drug alcoholism please mention here alcoholism hai na wo shahid kapoor ki movie thi na wo arjun reddy ki movie thi na kabir singh right arjun reddy kabir singh after alcoholism hai na you had alcohol after that you are going to after that you are going to practice hai na right so alcoholism obviously this is also in famous conduct you were on 24 hours duty you were on 24 hours duty 
by the evening time what happened at that time there was no patient load you got a phone call from your friends hey come to our party you went outside you asked the nurse ki a sister ji please manage for half an hour i'm going to meet my friends after meeting your friends you forgot after meeting your friends you forgot that you were on you were on the duty you had alcohol bhang ganja whatever you had after that you after that after that you after that you are recalling oh my god oh my god i was on duty ab ja rahe ho dobara duty pe hai na so now you are fully drugged hai na pura nashe mein ho now you are in doctor's room aaram se baith gaye hai na aaram se baith gaye doctor's room mein after that what happened suddenly a patient is hai na patient started gasping now suddenly patient is having breathlessness hai na breathlessness right so now nurse is calling doctor 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 get up there serious patient come on doctor come on doctor hai na now when you are looking at the nurse are sister ji and after that hai na after this so nurse is going to shake you like this are doctor utho chalo patient hai chalo grab after that you are being taken to the hai na after that you are being taken to the room where patient is there where patient is having severe breathlessness right after seeing the patient you are not able to concentrate you are not able to judge whether patient is dying or he is acting after that you are asking the patient mere yange ne me now what will happen to you what will happen to you obviously you are a drug galat baat hai ni all these are what in the famous conduct obviously for this you can get warning notice for this you can get warning notice first warning notice you will be getting from a state medical council obviously no a state medical council state medical council right is it to understand so first of all warning notice but like like suppose if there will be suppose if a doctor is doing many negative uh, like uh, suppose if there are so many complaints against the doctor if there are so many complaints against the doctor against the doctor no now finally a state medical council can give you professional death also which is called as penal erasure after that you cannot practice that is called as penal erasure which is called as professional death sentence penal erasure after that you cannot practice right after that you have to apply to home ministry then you have to after that home ministry is going to forward your application to the central medical council nmc now now they are going to do the inquiry right now they are going to do the inquiry after that they are going to decide hai you na know, central medical council at last they will decide hai you na know, whether your degree should be given back to you or not as per your negligent act so all these are actually what infamous conduct hai you na know? so all these examples i have given to you of what infamous conduct for infamous conduct yes you can get warning notice and even professional death sentence also first of all you will be getting by state medical council first state medical council right Dr Shubhadeep Patra you are asking did did SMC ever perform any penal erasure there yeah, are many cases are there when uh, when you will be practicing in hospital see this is actually now i am on the social media now uh, i am live on youtube so i will not be disclosing any of the cases but yes many cases like when you will practice in uh, when you will practice in hospital you will understand i have seen some of my seniors call right so yes it happens ओके चलो आगे बढ़ते हैं डायकोटमी अल्कोहलिज्म एडिक्शन है ना अल्कोहलिज्म इज बेसिकली व्हाट एडिक्शन है ना एसोसिएशन विद अदर क्वैक्स एंड इफ यू आर गोइंग टू रिकवर द क्वैक्स या दैट इज कॉल्ड द कवरिंग है ना ऑल दीस आर इन फेमस कंडक्ट नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सी दिस इज रिलेटेड टू सी दिस क्वेश्चन इज रिलेटेड टू सम ऑफ द डॉक्ट्रिन्स some of the principles where it will be decided that whether a doctor is defaulter or not whether doctor is defaulter or not or whether doctor should be in jail or not so first of all there first of all you tell me which ipc is related to medical negligent act batao which ipc
Which IPC can you answer me? Yes, IPC number, IPC number 304 A or B? It is A. IPC number 304 A. See, remember, IPC number 304 has B section also. B also. Remember, A for apron, P for bride. B for bride. Aise yaad rakho. A for apron. Hana? So, IPC number 304 A is related to Medical Negligent Act. Hana? And IPC B, IPC number 304 B is related to dowry death. Related to dowry death. Related to dowry death. Dr. Gol is asking, sir, or kidney there chalegi class class to pretty lambi chalegi dost. Abhi to question number 9 pe hi hum. See, I am doing the rapid revision, but I will teach you almost entire forensic. I know, so class will be up to 10.30 or 11. Okay. Yeah, but this will be more than enough for your exam, I am telling you. Okay. Tell fine. See here. See, related to dowry death, no, related to dowry death, two important IPCs are there. Please remember it. One is IPC number 304B. Second is 498A. These are two IPCs related to dowry. Related to dowry. When I talk about dowry death, when I talk about dowry death, it is it is dealt under IPC number 304B. But when I am doing C and but when a newly married female is being tortured by in-laws or husband, in-laws or husband. Now it will be dealt under IPC number 498A. So remember it. Why not? So remember it. Anna? Very good. Chalo, so these two important IPCs we have learned here. IPC number 304B and 498A related to dowry and especially related to Medical Negligent Act 304A. Remember it. Now solve this question. Can you solve this question? A surgeon is operating on liver laceration case. If patient dies intraoperatively, the person who assaulted will be responsible for this. Anna? So basically, they could see like I will make you understand this question. Suppose if you are working in surgery emergency department, okay, fine. We have got a patient after liver laceration, after a stab injury. A stab injury. His liver is severely lacerated. Okay, fine. When you operated the patient, patient died on operation table. No problem. Doctor is not responsible for this, right? Doctor is not responsible for this. Okay. But during the surgery, if you forgot one instrument or any gauze. Now, after two, three days, patient is dying because of the secondary complication. Now, new action intervened in between. Now, doctor, see the murderer will be punished for sure. Now, doctor, you will also be responsible for this case. Now, what has happened here? New action has intervened in between. New action has intervened in between. This is called as novus actus intervenius. Last time, I think this was the question. Last time, this was the question. Novus actus intervenient. All doctrines, all these are important related to your exam. I am going to explain you these parts very, very, uh, like, like with, like small, small example because these are very, very important, uh, important topics. I know. So here, what is happening here? It is what novus actus intervenient. Now let's understand some. See, res ipsa locutor means what? What is the meaning of res ipsa locutor? During this surgery, if you forgot one instrument, what does it please? Uh, please remember only one point. Thing it speaks for itself. For any kind of negligent of the doctor, for any kind of negligent of the doctor, please understand. Whenever there will be civil case, no, please like the minor injury, Anna. Like whenever there will be minor injury, 
when the patient or family member they are going to sue a doctor now at that time in a case of civil injury family members of the patient they are supposed to prove the guilty of the doctor right now and so onus of proof lies on the patient or the family members of the patient right and so please understand but what about a res ipsa locutor this is this is severe negligent act and during the surgery over intestine during the surgery over over meckel's diverticulum doctor for a small forceps or a small seizures or a small gauze inside after two three days and right? see i'm telling you one thing this was this was the x-ray this was the question in recent inic right? yes doctor is responsible for his guilty no no need to prove anything doctor will be in jail for sure as per ipc number 304a this will be considered as the criminal medical negligent act criminal medical negligent act easy to understand during this surgery if the doctor has forgotten anything after that a patient is going to die yes doctor there is no need of proof doctor things speak for itself you are responsible for your guilty that's it easy to understand doctor will be in jail for sure so this is what it is ipsa locator what are the examples suppose after a road traffic accident when there is a dirty wound doctor did not give tetanus injection tetanus and a tt he did not give the tetanus injection this will be considered as a case of gross negligent act res ipsa locator mismatched blood transfusion was done by a doctor gross why not surgery on a wrong side wrong person wrong organ why you had a patient and you had a two patient and your beautiful handwriting of doctor one patient was a raju one was a rabu see my handwriting beautiful no okay fine raju was suffering from appendicitis ramu was suffering from gallbladder stone okay fine now what happened what happened ramu was planned for the first surgery in the early morning and so obviously his gall bladder was supposed to be removed and okay fine so what happened here see because of the handwriting raju got shifted to operation theater and by mistake doctor ne raju ka gall bladder nikal diya and appendix ke jagah pe gall bladder nikal diya ab kya hoga hai eh? अब ये मत बोल देना वही होगा जो मंजूर है खुदा होगा भाई दो साल जेल में रहोगे तो टू इयर्स इन जेल विच आई पी सी आई पी सी नंबर थ्री जीरो फोर ए दिस इज रेस इफ साल लॉक्यूटर है ना वही होगा जो मंजूर है खुदा होगा वही तो होगा वही तो टू इयर्स आपने गलती तो किया है ना खुदा क्यों माफ करेगा तुम्हें है थ्री जीरो फोर ए टू ईयर्स प्लस माइनस फाइव इन जेल मिनिमम मिनिमम राइट ओके फाइन wrong organ wrong organ you are a general surgeon you are a general surgeon you had a 45 year old female patient she was having mass in her right breast she was having mass in her right breast you did examination okay fine after that even after radiological investigation fine everything now you made the diagnosis that yes there is a mass i have to do radical mastectomy so you inform the patient that you come after one week i have to remove your breast radical mastectomy you have planned after one week when patient is lying on operation table you got confused doctor got confused mistakenly he removed her left breast instead of right you have removed left breast okay eh? fine so what will happen now ipc number 304 IPC number three zero four A. There was a small mass in thigh. Mistakenly, you have removed his penis, or you mistakenly you have removed his like a scrotum or the testis. Wrong organ, whatever, man. Basically, you will be in jail. All these are what res ipsa locutor. I hope you are not going to forget res ipsa locutor. Things speak for itself. है ना मजाक मजाक में पढ़ो सब याद करो एग्जाम अच्छे से लिखो एग्जाम में याद रहना चाहिए राइट है ना चलो फाइन वेरी गुड
Now next is the doctrine of common knowledge. Doctrine of common knowledge. This is also a variant of res ipsa locator. See, related to the common knowledge, you had a patient of severe dehydration, severe dehydration patient. You did not start your patient on IV fluid. Now you will be objected, doctor. This is a common knowledge. Even one intern, even a nurse can say that, yes, doctor, you did wrong. Doctor, you will be in jail. Patient died because of dehydration. Seriously, dehydration the patient ko baar diya. Tumne loose motion tha, 10 loose motions. And usko tumne IV fluid diya hi nahi. Come on. This is what? Doctrine of common knowledge. Doctrine of common knowledge. Fine. Now, calculated risk doctrine. Hai na? This is a defense to a doctor. Hai na? See here, every accepted method of treatment has certain percentage of unavoidable. Suppose, suppose if you had a patient of the paronychia. Suppose if you had a patient of paronychia. What is the meaning of paronychia? Wound over a nail bed. Wound over a nail bed. This is a very, very small thing. And how to treat it? Simple. You have, simply you have to give what? Incision. First of all, with the blade or needle, you are going to give a small incision. You are going to drain it out. You are going to drain the pus. After that, you are going to do what? And after that, you will be doing antiseptic dressing. After that, you will be doing antiseptic dressing. Right? Okay, fine. You have taken all the precaution. But please understand that you ask the patient to come after. And you come after after one day for the dressing but next day what happened now and you did not expect this kind of infection now there is big infection over the nail bed so this is actually what see for every method yes there is some risk of any kind of unavoidable risk therapeutic misadventure diagnostic misadventure eh? diagnostic misadventure even if you have taken all the precautions you had good intention. You had good intention. See, even if you have taken uh, the history that are you allergic to any medicine, at that time patient said, Ki, sir, no sir, so far I am not allergic to any medicine. You have started your patient on penicillin or aspirin. or, But after that patient had severe hypersensitivity reaction. So this is actually a type of what? Misadventure. This is a type of what? Diagnostic or therapeutic misadventure. So basically, injury of the patient or injury or death to a patient is due to unintentional or inadvertent act by a doctor. Sometimes when you have given, when you have given the barium enema, actually barium enema, see actually this enema, see, see the barium sulfate, there it will be inert, but patient got chemical peritonitis. So this is also a type of what? And accident accident you can say or you can say misadventure right now or you can say type of disaster now inevitable accident or act of god act of god medical mal occurrence or inevitable accident you have taken all the precautions you have taken all the precautions i know but you cannot save the patient because of biological variation see there was the case in new delhi uh, like there was a senior doctor, there was the HOD of medicine department. He had appendicitis. He had appendicitis. Even his son and daughter, they were also doctors. So see, like that was the case of a small appendicitis. Okay, fine. So that HOD of medicine, he was planned for a surgery. Okay. Even during the pre-anesthetic, just almost all the anesthesia drugs, like they checked and he was safe. Okay, fine. But when he was in operation theater, when he was in operation, when he was on operation table, at that time, there was a simple drug. There was, you know, like uh, like that drug. Like there was no risk of adversity of that. Hardly one in one lakh. But what happened? That HOD, he had biological variation. See, so many people, they can have biological variation. See, if you see some lucky people of Europe, and see, if you see some lucky people of Europe, they have mutation in CCR5, and CCR5 receptors. They have mutation in CCR5. And a receptor because of this they are 100% immune to HIV they are 100% immune to HIV and a, so basically this is the type of biological variation which you cannot see from outside right now see you don't know that who is having biological variation here so that HOD who was on operation table because of this simple medicine because of the biological variation he died he collapsed on operation uh, on the OT table only patient table 
obviously uh, like, since he was a doctor obviously for all the patients also and even uh, like when he was very senior doctor obviously see you know, all doctors they took all the precaution but they could not say that was so here in this condition and because of the biological variation you can say okay this was the act of god this was inevitable accident the accident which you cannot prevent right okay novus actus intervenes we have learned right see novus means new actus means action intervenience means intervening in between intervening in between hai na? see the question which i have asked you that was the case of what novus actus intervenience novus actus this was the question last time so it is very important now rest judicata the things which are already decided suppose uh, suppose if there is a hospital you can uh, you can suppose if there is hospital hospital name is max and the, and there is a doctor doctor x and a doctor x when doctor was operating patient died and a patient died because of the surgery hai na okay fine so now what happened see the family members hai na family members hai na family members they filed a case against the hospital they filed a case against the hospital against hospital and because of the medical negligent act of the hospital uh, we lost our patient and our family members now yes as per the code hospital had to pay 15 lakhs rupees as the compensation oh yeah this case is over now this case is closed now after one year family members are thinking no 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 this was not the mistake of hospital this was the mistake of doctor now they are going to sue this doctor now they want to file case against this doctor no now this will not be hard because one case is already over this case is already hard and one case is already closed and the things that have been decided one time case closed punishment is already done this case will not be heard again this is rest judicata rest judicata rest indicata indication of suing a doctor suppose if any patient wants to sue me if a patient wants to file a complaint against me yes he has to file a complaint within two years within two years only within two years of my medical negligent act after two years he cannot file a complaint against me this is called as res indicator res indicator right and indication of filing complaint against the doctor is within two years uh, so dr deep sudhar yeah this will be as per this situation as per this situation right as per the act whether it was needed or not right now next word is contributory negligence please understand here that where there will be negligent act of doctor as well as the patient as well as hai na, doctor as well as the patient hai na, doctor as well as the patient suppose see here in this condition when i am saying that contributory negligence doctor will be in the safer zone most of the time doctors are found to be innocent or doctors are supposed to be innocent so this can be used as defense to a doctor but only in civil cases but only in civil cases right now okay only in civil cases suppose i am working in general surgery department i had a patient who is wearing t-shirt who is who is a 40 year old who appears to be very good built and like he is having athlete built 40 year old man and he looks very very fit he is having a small lipoma over his forearm he is having a small lipoma he is having a small lipoma over his forearm he asked me doctor see i am having this uh, this swelling please remove it i asked him see this is just the benign tumor no need of surgery well i know doctor i don't feel comfortable when i'm wearing t-shirt i asked him, okay fine no problem you come to my uh, you come to my uh, like minor operation later next week this is just a local case. I will give local anesthesia. I will remove it. Okay, fine. Next week he came. I removed it. Okay, no, I removed it. After that, I did what? I did antiseptic dressing. I asked my patient. See, on every alternate day, you have to get antiseptic dressing. You have to come to my clinic after every alternate day. 
I have to do the addressing. He asked me, patient asked me, and a patient asked me, Ki, doctor, I'm living very far from your clinic. Is it okay that I can get uh, the antiseptic dressing from the nearby nursing home? Or like there is, hana? Okay, fine. I asked him, okay, fine, but you get it done after every, uh, like every alternate day. Okay, fine. After nine or ten days, suddenly a patient came to my clinic. Now patient is shouting on me. What kind of doctor you are? Okay, what? Okay, what you did to my hand? I asked him, what happened? You asked me you know, for the dressing. Yeah, I was getting there, but for last four days, and but for last four days, actually I was very busy, so I did not get the dressing done. When I removed the dressing, I saw, oh my God, there was very very big wound. Any, a small si cheese ko maine bahut bada sa bana diya. And I, maine bola, ye kaise ho gaya? See, yeah, dekho. I asked him, are you taking any medicine? Now he is saying, yes, doctor, I am taking metformin. Now I am asking, what? He is saying, yes, doctor, I am taking metformin. It means. It was a diabetic case. My fault. I did not take the proper history. My fault. His fault. He did not obey my command. He did not obey my advice. I asked him to get the dressing to come to my clinic on every alternate day. Had he come to my clinic on every alternate day, yes, I could have seen the, I could have seen the progression, you know, like in the wound, healing of the wound. That time I could have asked about the diabetic. About the diabetic medications and all, I could have do, I could have, you know, like I could have improved, I could have modified his drugs, I could have done more dressing, I could have maintained his sugar. So my fault, I did not take the proper history. Patient's fault, he did not obey my advice. So this will be considered as contributory negligence. This will be considered as contributory negligence. This is a defense to the doctor, but only in civil cases, not in. Criminal negligent act means very severe, not in last clear chance doctrine, not in avoidable consequences. In these conditions, doctor will found to be guilty. See, yeah, please understand here that what about last clear chance doctrine? You had one last chance to rectify your mistake, but you did not do. Suppose if I am orthopedician. I operated over radial fracture bone. Right? Radial bone fracture. I operated for Coley's fracture. I operated for Coley's fracture. I applied very, very tight plaster. I operated the patient at 11 a.m. Right? 11 a.m. Now, a right? patient is shifted to ward. When I was about to leave the hospital at 5 p.m., now patient is complaining, Doctor, I'm having severe pain in my hand. So I asked him, okay, mighty because of the loss of anesthesia effect. I know, so after no doctor, you know, I'm not able to move it and I can feel a numbness here also. I think there is very, very tight and this is a very, very tight plaster. So I asked him, okay, if I do one thing, no, I'm going to see one more patient. After that, I will come back here. After that, I will remove your plaster. I will apply a new plaster because now I know that, and see, at that time I knew that I have applied very, very tight plaster, right? A very, very tight plaster. When I went to see other patient, I forgot. I forgot to see him again. Next day when I got back to hospital, I could see that he was having, and first of all, like he told me, okay, doctor, first of all, this became blue, after that black. What does it mean? Ischemia, necrosis, last option, amputation. Doctor, you had one last chance to clear it, but you did not. Doctor, you will be in jail for sure. This is called as, last clear chance doctrine Anna? Anna? so this will be a case of what necrosis is it to understand avoidable consequences rule avoidable consequences rule there was a complication which which you could have easily avoided but you did not you could have avoided it you got a patient you got a patient new mother is there a uh, young mother mother is only 26 years she has only three year old daughter. Mother is beautiful. Daughter is beautiful. Anna? Now you are a young doctor in hospital. Mother is mother is asking doctor, doctor, my daughter has uh, my daughter has uh, my daughter has fallen uh, the wristwatch battery, a small battery. So for one time, like you uh, like like you saw the daughter. After that, you are looking at the mother. No problem at all. No problem. Daughter is beautiful. 
and that is beautiful everything is fine no you 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 she is very beautiful no you should see like she looks very perfect no need of any tension you give me your phone number if there will be any complication you call me done fine any flood karne mein lag gaye aap right next day morning next day morning mother is screaming she is shouting on you doctor what kind of doctor you did not do anything when i came yesterday here i know what happened there was the blast of battery inside blast of battery inside rupture of battery eh yeah. ab kya hua see being a doctor at least you could have taken one x ray no at least you could have taken the x ray flood karna chhod dete eh yeah. doctor you could easily avoided it no right avoidable consequences rule in these conditions doctor you are defaulter you will be in jail doctor easy to understand i hope these points you are not going to forget right in these conditions yes doctor will found to be guilty okay now related to the negligent act of the negligent act of the corporate hai na suppose you are gastro surgeon your hospital has provided you laparoscopic hai na machine when you have inserted the probe inside the probe got broken inside the stomach also hai na like inside the abdomen only see this is the negligent act of hospital who will be defaulter here hospital will be defaulter here hospital will be defaulter here hai na hospital will be defaulter here easy to understand fine no suppose like hospital was supposed to hire the specialist doctor but he did not hire the specialist he hired some unqualified doctor unqualified doctor or less qualified doctor now if patient is going to die this will be the default of this will be the default of hospital this is called as what corporate negligent act product liability product liability manufacturing defect manufacturing defect see in the big central hospital i will not take the name of hospital okay in the big hospital there was supply dekho 1 gram vial see there was uh, there was the vial of antibiotic so that was the 1 gram vial hai na 1 gram vial of antibiotic okay fine now what happened earlier yes uh, like whatever patient used to get admitted in hospital they were getting this kind of antibiotic most of the patient used to uh, used to be all right within 5 days or 7 days now when new medicines came to hospital now every patient is taking more than uh, more than the 10 days one senior resident he had doubt why patients are not responding to this antibiotic earlier most of the patient used to get uh, like most of the patient used to get normal within 5 days or 6 days now most of the patients are taking so much time See, there was a senior resident he asked the nurse i need to see that vial of the drug see over the vial of the drug it was written 1 g but when he removed the powder when he removed the drug that was only 500 mg sab ke sab mile hue sab bike hue what does it mean this is the default of pharmaceutical company here pharmaceutical company here supplying what supplying this kind of an uh, medicine right so this will be what product liability where actually manufacturer will be liable manufacturer will be liable for the quality of drug and medical equipment okay no medical equipment see there was the case in south part of india so there was a gynecologist there was a gynecologist very very senior gynecologist and i will not take the name of anyone here and he was very very senior gynecologist so so what happened he operated over 75 females 75 females he did tubic to me which is actually a small procedure he did tubic to me after that 25 female died 50 got admitted in hospital 50 got admitted in hospital with severe complications hai na severe complications now so this is doctor you can write the name of the doctor doctor x hai na doctor x so this doctor and hai na so this doctor and his team they were 
and so they were sent to jail so this doctor said no i am very senior doctor he was very senior 55 year you know i am very senior doctor you know what this was a small process very very small procedure how can i do this mistake that you know like like we can lose actually 25 females no so this is not my fault this was not my fault but he was arrested and he was sent to jail but there was one see like there was one similarity in all the patient that after this surgery he wrote no after he was very see he was very well he was well qualified very senior gynecologist and in all the patients post and to maintain to okay to reduce the post operative complication infection he prescribed all the patient ciprofloxacin tablet and ciprofloxacin and ciprofloxacin and this ciprofloxacin was supplied from the same company the investigation was going on now when the investigating team reached there in that factory in that pharmaceutical in that manufacturing company they found that two of their employees they were adding they were adding rat poison rat poison in ciprofloxacin that company so and so that company got ceased shut down after that so doctor and his team like they were out of the jail with due respect and that company they were supposed to pay huge amount of huge amount for the compensation so this was also the case of the product liability product liability doctrine of respondent superior or vicarious liability please understand that for the mistake of junior doctor senior is responsible or or the higher authority is responsible for the mistake of the junior authority that is called about vicarious liability hai na okay fine see some of the inquests in india please understand here that in india we are practicing two types of inquiry hai na in india we are practicing two type of inquiry one is called the police inquest another is called the magistrate hai na please understand that overall most common is police inquest but most superior is magistrate inquiry hai na so there are two crpc which we are using for police inquiry and magistrate crpc number 174 crpc number 170 okay but overall see here no see even the even the even the medical examiner system even the medical examiner system which is not being practiced in india medical examiner system where doctor will also do the inquiry overall this is the most superior overall this is the most superior but this is not being practiced in india in india we are practicing only police inquest and magistrate inquest remember it hai na so which crpc crpc number 174 crpc number 170 Remember these two CRPC very very important. Okay, friends. Dara, ek bar ye to batao. If a female is if a female is sentenced to death, and now she is found to be pregnant, her death sentence can be postponed or it can be converted to lifetime jail. Which CRPC? Which CRPC? बोलो सीआरपीसी नंबर फोर वन सिक्स है ना फोर वन सिक्स फोर वन सिक्स राइट ओके फाइन विच आईपीसी इज रिलेटेड टू डाउरी डेथ डाउरी डेथ विच आईपीसी इज रिलेटेड टू डाउरी डेथ आईपीसी नंबर थ्री जीरो फोर बी थ्री जीरो फोर बी ओके फाइन so in which condition you will be do so in which condition police inquiry will be done in which condition so whenever there will be suicide case murder case or death by the uh, so death by the accident death by the animals or you know like animals or or any machines right in which condition magistrate inquiry should be done ab ye batao what if death has happened during the police interrogation what if death is happened because of the because of the firing by a police hai na now in this condition police inquiry should not be done because hai na like the, actually the police will be supporting his own colleagues no 
है ना अब इसको नाउ देर शुड बी दी एंट्री ऑफ हायर अथॉरिटी रिमेंबर ए बी सी डी ई ए बी सी डी वेन एवर देर विल बी वेन एवर देर विल बी डेथ इन दी असाइलम मीन्स लाइक इन हॉस्पिटल साइकेट्रिक असाइलम वेन एवर देर विल बी दॉस्टल डेथ वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ द बॉस्टल मीन्स जेल फॉर जुबेनाइल जेल फॉर जुबेनाइल जेल फॉर यंगस्टर्स है ना जेल फॉर जुबेनाइल If there will be, है ना? Death in any custody, custodial death. Yes, magistrate inquiry should be done. D for a doubt is that. E for exhumation. What is the meaning of exhumation? See, over what is the meaning of exhumation? See, exhumation means digging out the dead body. Digging out the dead body. है ना? So remember it. See there are, है ना? See remember, you see what is the meaning of exhumation? Suppose after a one year, it was found that that person was not, है? See that person did not had the natural death. He was actually murdered. He was actually poisoned by arsenic. Now magistrate again he is giving the permission. Take out, है ना? See means uh, so dead body can be taken out of the grave. Now examination can be performed again. Autopsy can be performed again. That is called as what? An exhumation. मतलब गड़े मुर्दे उखाड़ना. Is there any? Is there any time limitation for exhumation? No time limit. No time limit. Who should give the permission? Obviously magistrate. Now there are two types of magistrate. One is called the executive magistrate. Second is called the judiciary. है ना? Second is called the judicial magistrate, executive and judicial. See who is more powerful? Obviously, judicial. Executive magistrate like the uh, revenue divisional officer, uh, like the uh, say RDO, uh, collector, deputy collector, tasildar. These are called as executive magistrate. They are specially appointed by the state, and by the state. They are especially there to maintain a law and order of the state. What about judicial magistrate? They are appointed by the president of India. है ना? Judicial magistrate can do inquiry in all cases. They can handle all cases. Remember here. है ना? See, remember here. Judicial magistrate can handle all the cases, but है ना? See, especially dowry and exhumation. Last D E. These two are these two are being performed by executive magistrate. Executive magistrate. Remember it. Executive magistrate. Only D and E. A B C D. Asylum death, postal death, custodial death, dowry death, exhumation. Right now, for all these, there should be inquiry by magistrate. Next question. Fine. So in this manner, we have completed all the medical ethics also, etiquettes also. Fine. I hope all these points are clear to all of you. क्वेश्चन नंबर या रिलेटेड टू दिस लास्ट टाइम नीट वीडियो वन क्वेश्चन फॉर सी दिस क्वेश्चन रीड इट एंड देन आंसर इट व्हिच टाइप ऑफ कंसेंट इज दिस See first of all over. See first of all, what is the meaning of implied consent? If any patient enters your OPD or any patient enters your clinic, okay, fine. This is already implied that he or she is there for uh, like only for the only for the medical checkup uh, for actually medical management. He or she is not there for the tea or coffee. So this is implied consent. What is a blanket consent? Blanket consent. See in most of the hospitals. During the admission of a patient, patient or family members, they are supposed to sign on a consent paper, and that we can do the treatment. But after the admission, after two three days, suppose if you are there to perform any invasive procedure, are you going to use this blanket consent? 
no for any kind of invasive procedure you have to take consent again 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 and again you have to take the consent for every different invasive procedure separately you have to take it separately so blanket consent is having zero value zero legal value blanket consent now other type of consent is informed consent oral or written best is written informed consent suppose if you are going to operate a patient in early morning tomorrow for the like same case you can solve here so obviously now before the surgery in the local language you are going to explain everything to your patient that we are going to perform the surgery and you know that for every surgery there are some complications but we are going to try our best are you ready for the surgery you have to explain each and everything in the local language of the patient this is called as written informed consent so answer is c this is the best okay now sexual jurisprudence a female is undergoing the physical examination labia majora is thick form fleshy and they oppose each other to completely close vaginal orifice clitoris is a small vagina is reddish with rigous wall it should be considered as very very important sexual jurisprudence one question every time solve this question please see now related to the physical examination of a rape victim uh, now there is the update that and i see earlier there was no earlier there was the uh, there was the two finger examination now it is completely banned now it is completely banned two finger examination okay no now mostly you should know mostly you should know that just after seeing see just after the observation first of all you have to make it clear whether she is virgin or non virgin or false virgin right virgin non virgin or false virgin right very very important words very very important thing right first of all understand the physical examination how you define virgin and non virgin a virgin female who never had experienced sexual intercourse and her hymen is intact right and so loss of virginity there is a word that is called the defloration defloration first of all you understand this basic anatomy basic anatomy see this part is a uh, like urethral uh, like orifice a uh, like urethral opening and this part is the vagina right this is vagina okay vagina lobe okay see and this part is the vestibule and this is and uh, so this part is the clitoris right clitoris okay fine okay after that see the thick part here no see the thick part here see the thick part that is labia majora and under the labia majora there will be what under the labia majora there will be labia minora labia minora is it understand so this is the basic anatomy see in female analog with uh, with the male uh, like this will be like male male penis So now please understand here that how you are going to understand whether she is completely virgin or non virgin First of all when you see a virgin female no first of all look at labia majora labia majora If a female has never experienced sexual intercourse her labia majora her a labia majora they are going to close each other so this part will be thick and fleshy they are going to close each other in such a manner that you will not be able to see vaginal opening you will not be able to see vaginal opening easy to understand so see you know a very 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 less opening i know so this part will be very very thick part and a fleshy all right so this is labia majora okay fine but when you see the non virgin obviously easily you can easily you could see the vaginal opening okay so these two part are not going to close each other completely when you see labia minora see like suppose if this is the labia majora suppose if this part this internal part suppose if this is the labia minora so labia minora lies under the labia majora right now see in a 100% virgin female you cannot see labia minora outside 
virgin female but non virgin easily you can see easily you can see labia majora uh, uh, like easily you can see labia minora out of the labia majora easy to understand fine and see here i am talking only about the observation as of now only about the observation only on the basis of labia majora and the labia minora after that when you see clitoris when you see clitoris obviously suppose if there is a uh, like female if there is a non virgin female obviously and her clitoris will be big and her clitoris will be enlarged and in a virgin female clitoris will be small when we talk about vagina vagina obviously in a virgin female it will be small narrow very tight and rigous wall but in a non virgin female it will be spacious loose and roomy when we talk about hymen hymen is intact in virgin female see what the meaning of hymen hymen is a fold of mucous membrane over the vaginal wall you know hymen okay which is having its own blood circulation that's why whenever there will be a rupture of the hymen there will be was uh, so after that there will be bleeding right but in a non virgin female hymen will be ruptured on the basis of these four five points you can solve this question now ab batao kya answer hai tumhara see now what is your answer can you solve this question now see 100% she is what 100% she is virgin 100% she is virgin hai na okay now let's understand here how to differentiate false virgin and the real virgin okay so before hymen related to hymen last time neat pg there was one question see in hymen there will be usually one opening okay fine hai na hymen is a layer of what mucous membrane over the vaginal opening hai na mucous membrane see suppose if the shape of the hymen is like Okay, like this, and right? so this is like what annular hymen, or you can say semi-lunar type. Okay, see whenever there will be multiple small, 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 small openings like this, and right? and right? this is called as cerebriform hymen. Last time in NEET PG there was a question that on on the per vaginal examination there were two openings over the hymen, like this, and right? so two openings it is called what? the tate hymen if there is no opening it is called what imperforate hymen and when you see the big opening you can see okay fine and so like she will be considered as the parasform okay now related to rupture of hymen they have asked this question first time whenever there will be defloration whenever there will be rupture of hymen for the first time hai na so in the first sexual intercourse what will be the position what will be the position of rupture of hymen see this will be in the posterior lateral position hai na mostly in the 5 o'clock position or 7 o'clock position hai na 5 o'clock position or 7 o'clock position or you can say like somewhat here 4 o'clock position or 8 o'clock position is it to understand see this was the old question what will be the direction of rupture of hymen in first time sexual intercourse so posterior laterally 5 or 7 o'clock position or 4 or 8 o'clock position hai na in first sexual intercourse but what see hymen rupture can also be seen after the masturbation why right, no so during the masturbation now direction will be different 11 o'clock position or 1 o'clock position 11 o'clock position or 1 o'clock position why not 11 o'clock or 1 o'clock position see remember here suppose if there is a girl child who is only 9 year old girl even after the rape there is no rupture of hymen why because in a young girls or in a or in a pediatric females rupture of hymen is not seen because it is hai na hymen will be located at very very deeper part because of the deeper location this is also the question please mark it hai na hymen rupture is not seen in rape among the among the kids due to its deeper location deeper location there is a rod that rod is called a glaster kinney rod please write it down glaster kinney rod that is called as glaster glaster kinney rod 
है ना कीनी रॉड वी आर यूजिंग दिस स्मॉल रॉड टू मेजर द रक्चर ऑफ हाइमन इन अ केस ऑफ रेप इन अ केस ऑफ रेप ग्लेस्टर कीनी रॉड इज इट अंडरस्टैंड फाइन नाउ हाउ टू डिफरेंशिएट रियल वर्जिन एंड फॉल्स वर्जिन सी व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ द रियल वर्जिन सी ओवर व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ द रियल वर्जिन a female whose hymen is intact and who had never experienced sexual intercourse false virgin who had a sexual intercourse who had sexual intercourse but hymen is intact hymen is intact hymen is also intact see in a real virgin no if you are going to see the hymen hymen will be in elastic but false virgin it will be elastic in a real virgin hardly the tip of the finger hardly the tip of the small finger you can insert but in the false finger like in the false virgin no two fingers can easily be admitted right false virgin false virgin see how to differentiate real virgin and the false virgin hold push now related to paraphilia this time i n i c t or see paraphilia there is no any exam without the question from paraphilia very very important even in psychiatry we have learned i have explained you each and everything related to paraphilia fine in psychiatry i have explained you in psychiatry also in forensic also please revise all the paraphilias now see this question what is your answer first of all what is the diagnosis pehle diagnosis to batao do what is the diagnosis Yes, Doctor Abhay, very good. Doctor Harshit, Doctor Hamid, Doctor Rohitash. Okay, Doctor Shashi Bhushan, Doctor Deep, Doctor Arman. All of you are doing great. Yes, Doctor Ahil, Doctor Ganesh, Doctor Deep Sutta, Doctor Vikas, Doctor Monika Shri. See, this is called yes. This is called a what? Voyeurism. Hey, na? This is called a what? Voyeurism. This is also called as escotophilia. This is also called as escotophilia. this is also called as peeping tom peeping tom do you think this is a punishable offense yes this is a punishable offense which ipc see ipc number please understand please write it down ipc number 354 a b c and d and ipc number 354 a is related to sexual assault is related to sexual assault IPC number three fifty four B using your power to disrobe a female to disrobe a female IPC number three fifty four C is voyeurism IPC number three fifty four D talking so what is the meaning of voyeurism when है ना watching the act of sexual intercourse and then you are getting sexual gratification this is called as है ना this is called as voyeurism or if a female is undressing or if a young boy is watching if he is peeping into the privacy है ना so this is what this is peeping tom peeping tom is scotophilia right is scotophilia or what voyeurism है ना So yes, so option number A is wrong because it is defined by option है ना IPC number three fifty four C. It is fetishism. No, this is a case of voyeurism. The option number D. This is not an offense. Obviously, this is an offense. Please understand here that related to this first offense of voyeurism and stalking. Cognizable and bailable. But second complaint, second time cognizable and non available related to this they have asked this question they have asked this question related to this second offense is non available first offense is available remember it see here fraudulism this was also the question in inict fraudulism what is the meaning of fraudulism rubbing against the person in a crowd exhibitionism means what Until and unless you are not exposing your genital organ to strangers, you don't get erection and orgasm. Hey na? Punishable offense IPCs. You have to remember. Okay na? Fine. See, remember it. See, 
some IPCs are repeatedly asked and in that IPC you have to remember IPC related to rape and related to rape see which IPC defines rape which IPC defines rape IPC number 375 defines rape which IPC defines the punishment for the rape 376 in this same manner you have to remember related to paraphilia most important is IPC number 354 and remember it IPC number 377 important because there was verdict in 2018 and in 2018 that see, this is actually partially decriminalized and like in like in 2018 it was said that homosexuality homosexuality or gay sex is legally permitted in India legally permitted okay fine with the consent legally permitted without consent Still a punishable offense. So remember it. IPC number 377 is partially decriminalized, not 100 percent Still, it can be evoked if there will be non-consensual gay sex. Remember all these IPC. Okay. See here. Uh, related to rape, related to sex, which type of question they can frame? What is the minimum age for a female to give the consent? For sexual intercourse earlier it was 16 earlier it was 16 now it is 18 with the wife earlier and earlier age limitation was a 15 year but now with the wife also it is 18. remember these two sexual intercourse with a female whose age is less than 18 year it will be called as a statutory rape a statutory rape remember it it is called a what a statutory rape sexual intercourse with a girl age less than 18 marital rape during separation in between husband and wife if husband is going to have sexual intercourse with his wife if wife is going to complain yes this will be considered as a punishable offense marital rape Rape in a custody, in a jail, in hospital, in any custody, custodial rape. Date rape, a female was invited by her male partner. Male partner added one tablet in Pepsi or Coca-Cola. That is, Hannah, right? Pepsi or the Coca-Cola. That tablet is tasteless, colorless, odorless, something like flu nitrazepam, Hannah. Right? Flu nitrazepam, which is also called as a date rape drug. After that, female will be unconscious and she will not be able to recall anything. Right? So, after inviting on a date, if male partner is going to commit rape, it will be called as a date rape. Right? Flu nitrazepam is called a date rape drug. Gang rape or pack rape, right? more than one person is involved in the rape. Right? Stranger rape, rape by an unknown person. All these are important. See, related to IPCs, related to IPCs for rape is important. So, I am going to explain this part. See here, see when I talk about IPC in number 376, this is all about punishment related to the rape. Anna? So, there are some extensions. See, even if you are not able to recall Anna, all these IPCs, no problem at all. Minimum remember IPC number 375 and 376. Now, extension 370. 6a Anna? after the rape if rape victim is going to die or if there is severe vegetative state so many cases you would have heard in news Anna? death after the rape 376a 376a how much punishment should be there obviously death sentence obviously there should be what death sentence or 20 years in jail or up to the last day of his life 376 a b rape on a woman less than 12 year of age minor okay 20 years in jail or a death sentence 376 b sexual intercourse by husband upon his own wife during separation marital rape b for the bride you can remember Two to seven years in jail. IPC number 376C. Huh? C for custody. C for custody. What is happening here? If 
a man of authority a man of power is seducing like suppose if you are working in a government hospital or if in any custody or even in a jail or anywhere hai na if male partner is seducing her with the intention hai na with the intention of hai na with the intention of sexual intercourse 5 to 10 years in jail 376 d gang rape 20 years in jail or lifetime d a gang rape of a woman less than 16 d b gang rape less than 12 year 376 e repeat offenders hai na a pathological rapist that sentence so you have to remember it okay now when i talk about rape victim when i talk about a rape victim and rape accused rape accused obviously you have to do medical examination you will have to do physical examination okay in a rape victim before the examination are you going to take the consent yes or no answer me yes or no yes or no yes you have to take the consent What about about a rapist? Are you going to take the consent? अरे आइए सर क्या बात कर रहे हैं आइए अगर आपकी इजाजत हो तो मैं आपका examination कर दू Really? No need of consent in a case of rape accused or any even you know like and even if there will be what criminal or the prisoner no need of taking the consent no need of taking the consent but in the victim you have to take the consent. okay fine my question is that if you are working in a private hospital the victim are you going to give her a first aid or not first aid or not first aid yes or no if you are working in a private hospital yes are you going to charge any fees or free of cost can you answer me free of cost or you are going to charge any fees yeah this should be free of cost free of cost are you going to admit her or not for further treatment you are working in private hospital are you going to admit a rape victim to your hospital or not? yes or no please understand that you can't admit in private hospital can't admit in private hospital yes obviously you have to give the first aid treatment but after that you have to inform the police and after that this case will be taken by the government see please understand that rape cases are always being handled by the government The only government, not by the private. Remember, okay? Fine. Do you think a rape victim needs psychiatric counseling? Do you think she needs psychiatric counseling? Yes. Yes. Right? Hey na? Now what is happening here? Whenever you have to do the examination of a rape victim and rape accused, okay? No. Rape victim and rape accused. suppose after the rape how many things see hai na how many things you are going to recollect in hospital obviously you will be having a safe rape kit hai na safe rape kit where whatever things you are getting you have to recollect hair saliva any kind of fluid any kind of liquid saliva semen blood whatever hai na so that you can do the dna test you have to collect all the samples and all the samples please understand that within 96 hours within 96 hours or within 4 days if a rape victim is there in your hospital you have to collect all these samples. you have to collect all these samples whatever is there hai na is it to understand fine swab culture you have to take swab you have to take so that you can hai na swab and the blood test you have to take why not so that you can do what dna testing and all okay fine now the question is that how would you understand suppose like you know, after the rape obviously there will be abrasion over genital organs abrasion over 
over their breasts abrasion abrasion over their body how would you understand say yeah with the naked eyes you cannot find out if there is a minor abrasion over the vaginal wall over the sunken so you are using one spray blue spray that is called as batao na yeah that is called as as the toledin blue test hai na so that you can find out so that you can find out minor abrasions minor abrasions in this same manner you also have to do the examination of the rape accused with a filter paper you are going to take you are going to wipe and you are going to wipe the shaft of penis hai na shaft of penis after that you are going to keep over the lugol's iodine vapor you can see brown color you can see brown color why you can see how you can see the brown color that is because of the vaginal epithelial cells obviously if rape has happened obviously vaginal epithelial cells will be over the shaft of the penis if you are going to wipe it out and after that you are going to spread over uh, you are going to spray over the uh, lugol's iodine vapor you can see brown color because of the vaginal epithelial cells why because in vaginal epithelial cells there are glycogen glycogen remember it so two tests we are performing here one is called as toledin blue for the victim lugol's iodine for the accused hai na see this is actually what do you see here what do you see here see in this photo and in this photo see if you can see blue and a blue color yes this is minor abrasion because of the toledin blue now see here what is the name of this apparatus this is speculum obviously you are going to use this speculum and so that you can find out the abrasion over the over the vaginal wall up to the cervix but please understand that speculum should not be inserted in a female where there is no history of and like suppose if female is very very young or female is very child you know or if there is no history of penetration of penis because you don't want to rupture the hymen right easy to understand fine see ipc number 228a is what anyone who is going to disclose the identity of a rape victim doctor or media person this will be considered as a punishable offense punishable offense ipc number 228a minimum 2 years in jail plus minus fine plus minus fine so related to rape you have to understand all these points because rape is an important topic related to your exam sexual jurisprudence over now post mortem changes see last to last time this was asked in fmg exam image based question this was actually image based question i think in last december exam see here just after their death डॉक्टर शुभदीप पात्रा यस अप टू नाइनटी सिक्स टू फोर डेज ल्यूगोल्स आयोडीन टेस्ट विल बी पॉजिटिव ओके सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन प्लीज ठीक है just after a death obviously there will be immediate signs and you know, there will be immediate signs see a study of death is called about thanatology thanatology and a study of the process of decomposition is called the taphonomy please understand here that first of all there will be immediate signs what are the immediate signs there will be sudden stoppage of heart means circulation brain and lungs this is called as what bishops 
tripod is it understand so these are immediate signs immediate signs so these are because of what and these are and so these are known as what actually clinical death and a somatic death okay fine so whenever there will be sudden see whenever there will be sudden blockage of the heart there will be a stoppage of circulation see there will be a stoppage of the brain function there will be a stoppage of the respiration now i have to understand i have to do some examination to find out whether heart is completely stopped whether respiratory whether respiration is and whether respiration is 100% stopped is it understand okay fine so first of all i want to check what cessation of respiration we are performing three tests one is called a mirror test feather test and winslow test See, yeah, when you keep a mirror in front of the nose, when we are alive, obviously you can see vapor over the mirror. In a dead person, there will be no vapor. This is called as mirror test. Feather test, you keep a feather in front of the nose. When we are alive, there will be movement of the, you know, there will be movement of the feather means punk. But if a person is dead, there will be no movement. Winslow test, you keep a bowl of water over the chest. Obviously, because of the movement, because of the movement, there will be reflection of light. You know? There is no reflection of light. means respiration is completely stopped so we have learned three test mirror test feather test and winslow test to check what to check the stoppage of respiration to check the stoppage of lungs function i want to check the complete stoppage of heart circulation circulation magnus test. see these are actually physical tests and right? magnus test or ligature test so when we are alive so obviously across the body there is a normal Uh, like see across the body there is a normal circulation if i am going to apply a ligature material here ha huh? ligature material here like this or if i am going to ligate it and if i am going to ligate it with a rope obviously there will be swelling because there will be the congestion obviously why it will happen because in my body circulation is normal but if a person is a dead no circulation no swelling no congestion it is called as magnus or a ligature test diaphanous test which is also called as trans illumination test ha na illumination test see here whenever we are going to apply it whenever we are going to apply a torch light here ha na jo agar yahan pe torch light karoge in front of the web spaces no web spaces obviously you are going to see the red discoloration here because of the normal circulation red discoloration no red discoloration no redness in finger webs no circulation it is called as diaphanous test i card test whenever you are going to inject fluorescein dye whenever you are going to inject fluorescein dye see even in the eye examination sometimes we are going to inject fluorescein dye obviously so now what is happening when fluorescein dye will go into the blood and right? like into the blood vessels now there will be see after that there will be greenish discoloration no greenish discoloration no circle it means what i card test is negative finger nail test see here i am asking you to i am going to asking you i am asking you to apply a pressure over the nail like this obviously first of all you can see uh, like this part has become yellow or white after that whenever you are going to release the pressure you can see directly this will become what red and right? because circulation is normal if if there is no circulation a person is a dead a person is dead no circulation no blanching no red is it understand hai na so in this manner we have so in this manner we check for all immediate signs so what is the name of this test answer will be what Now what is your answer? Now it's very easy, no? Ligature test or this is also called as what? Magnus test. Magnus test. If I ask you one question, option number B, option number B is used to check the stoppage of respiration or circulation. Option number B, Winslow test for respiration, right? Now for respiration. please remember all these tests right okay fine so we have learned all immediate signs now what about early signs early signs means what which can take minutes to hours 
like obviously because of this cellular death see whenever first of all please understand here that whenever there will be sudden stoppage of heart brain and uh, heart brain and lungs obviously there will be somatic death this is called a somatic death somatic death somatic death will be because of somatic death will be because of stoppage of aerobic processes because of aerobic processes but at this point anaerobic processes are still there anaerobic right? anaerobic tissues are still alive so i can say that some tissues are still alive why because they can work even in the absence of oxygen okay fine so actually this takes some time for all these cells to die and this time duration is called as what this time duration is called as what batao answer basically after that there will be complete death after that there will be complete death and that will be called as what molecular death and right? that will be called as what molecular death hai right? na molecular death so a time period between somatic death and molecular death is called as what yes very good doctor very good it is called as supra vital period it is called as supra vital period supra vital period which is very very important for organ harvest hai right? na so whenever a person is somatic death you are going to declare him and it means when you can declare a person as brain dead you can harvest the organ safely and easy to understand because if i ask you how much is the duration for the molecular death of a kidney kidney after 45 minutes hai na after 45 minutes kidney will completely be dead but before 45 after somatic death within 45 minutes you can harvest kidney easy to understand but very good fine So now early signs due to molecular death or cellular death. So there will be what after death, there will be loss of body temperature. Basically, I am saying what there will be cooling of dead body. It is called as what cooling of dead body. Algar mortis. Algar mortis, right? Algar mortis. After death, there will be rigidity of dead body. Body will become very very tight, stiff. It is called as what. Rigor mortis, rigor mortis, है ना? After that, है ना? After that, you can also see that after death, there can be discoloration of dead body, bluish discoloration. Mostly, it is called as what? Liver mortis. It is called as liver mortis. Liver mortis. So these are early signs after death. These are early signs after death what are the late signs late signs are decomposition decomposition of dead body hai na late signs are decomposition of dead body basically you can write what yes there will be putrefaction putrefaction which can take hours to days to weeks to months late signs like putrefaction like mummification adipocere formation these are late signs remember it if i ask you what is the most destructive bacteria which helps in decomposition or which is responsible for a decomposition batao most destructive bacteria clostridium welchi hai na clostridium welchi right clostridium welchi fine easy to understand okay so late signs like see these are two late signs these are two late signs see this see these two pictures hai na so these are the examples of putrefaction decomposition mummification means what drying of dead body when a dead body is kept on the earth in dry hot climate hai na so when environment is dry air is normal and there is and there is no moisture there is no moisture there is no moisture hai na fine so 
So now we tell you because of the dry, because of the desiccation, you will think there will be evaporation of the body. There will be the evaporation of the body fluids. Yes. Do you think there will be weight loss? Yes. Please write it down. There will be weight loss. More than seventy percent of the body weight loss will be there. Do you think there will be odor? Odorless. Odorless. But what about if there will be warm climate? है ना? If there will be warm है ना warm climate there will be moisture है ना है ना moist climate no air so now because of the see the situation obviously you can see that yes so there will be adipocere formation basically you can see it is a case of saponification saponification है ना soap like because of है ना so adipose tissue will become like adipocere Something like a wax. This is also called as a grave wax. This is also called as a grave wax. Please remember, it will smell very very bad. Ammonia smell. It takes approximately three weeks to six months. But mummification will take more time. Maximum up to twelve months. Remember all these points. Now one more. See here the late sign. This was the image based question, direct question in INICT. I N I C T, है ना? After death of a person, so obviously in the large intestine there will be so many bacteria, right? No, so many bacteria will be there. Obviously, yes, I can understand this much part. Okay, fine. Now, what is happening after death? Okay, bacteria can easily get accumulated in the circulation in the blood. When mostly, which bacteria will be there? And so mostly the bacteria is going to produce which gas? Hydrogen sulfide. When hydrogen sulfide is going to mix with hemoglobin, it will make what? Self hemoglobin. And this will make what? Self hemoglobin. And this is green in color. This is green in color. So when self hemoglobin is there in the superficial blood vessels. Around, है ना? So over the exposed part, over the superficial blood vessel, you can see this kind of marbled patterns, like something like this, है ना? Something like this, है ना? Something like the, something like the greenish discoloration, है ना? So this is like, this is called as marbling. When you can see marbling, है ना? So this will start appearing after 24 hours. This will start appearing after 24 hours after their death, but है ना सी प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड दैट व्हेन एवर इट विल बी कंप्लीट यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट टाइम सिंस डेथ इज व्हाट 36 टू 48 आवर्स प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड दैट मार्बलिंग इज बिकॉज़ ऑफ मार्बलिंग इज बिकॉज़ ऑफ व्हाट सेल्फ हीमोग्लोबिन एंड दैट विल बी सीन अराउंड द ब्लड वेसल सी देयर वाज वन एग्जाम देयर वाज एग्जाम इन द इंडियन मेडिकल कॉलेज फॉर फॉरेंसिक मेडिसिन ओनली वन स्टूडेंट वन स्टूडेंट ही डिड नॉट लर्न द फॉरेंसिक एंड देयर वाज अ क्वेश्चन राइट अ शॉर्ट नोट ऑन मार्बलिंग He did not know about marbling. He did not study for this. He thought, I think uh, this is because, uh, uh, like, this is all about death only, no? Anna? So he wrote in his paper that after a death in some religion, a person will be buried, and and after that, some marbles will be kept over his grave. This is called as marbling. So this was actually not that marbling, right? This marbling is completely different, right? This marbling is completely different. Remember, this was the image-based question in recent INICT. INICT, remember it, Anna? Sometimes examiners would like to play with your knowledge. He can give you these two pictures. He can give you these two pictures. The picture number one is marbling. That is the post-mortem change. That is because of the sulfur hemoglobin. That is along the superficial blood vessels. But picture number two is what? Picture number two is because of lightning burn. Picture number two is what? Lightning burn. है ना? Picture number two is what? Lightning burn, which is also called as what? Filigree burn. Filigree burn. Pilgrim burn. 
so you can see there is a flower like pattern here no so what is the name of this flower like pattern this is also called as lichtenberg flower like pattern lichtenberg flower like pattern please understand that picture number 1 marbling is because of the blood vessels blood vessels picture number 2 is over the superficial layer of epidermis superficial layer of epidermis right don't get confused in these two pictures this can these two can be your image based questions examiner can easily play with your knowledge right remember it okay so now we can take a short break for 5 minutes only after that we are going to after that we are going to continue okay you can have a small break for 5 minutes please come back soon thank you so much i'm glad that you people are stick here you people are learning Hello. See you after a small break.
now so now my voice is there voice voice is clear now okay now it's fine right okay see what is the real name uh, uh, that your name is barad what is the real name here dr barad okay abari awaz now i think it's clear no chalo fine all right okay we can continue then okay so that is abrar okay okay fine chalo now we can continue okay next question yeah dr lord wiz hello hello good evening चलो आ जाओ ओके नाउ क्वेश्चन नंबर 14 सी दिस क्वेश्चन एंड आफ्टर दैट नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न एंड आई सेड नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न रिलेटेड टू एस्पेक्सिया सी दिस क्वेश्चन अ यंग मैन वाज हैंग्ड ड्यूरिंग द टाइम ऑफ रिकवरी ऑफ सस्पेंडेड बॉडी स्टेनिंग वाज सीन ओवर हैंड्स legs and genital organs after that body was kept on the floor afterwards staining was seen around his back posterior thigh and legs how much is time since death at the time of recovery basically now i am discussing about what liver mortis i am discussing about what see like this question is about liver mortis or you can say what staining of the body and a staining of the body or you can say lividity of the body lividity of the body right so now you tell me when see on the basis of liver mortis on the basis of discoloration of the body i can identify time since death i can identify time since death all right so can you answer this question first of all see this kind of big clinical questions will be framed in your fmg exam also neat pg also right okay some of you are marking the answer b after 12 hours okay b keh rahe ho how after 12 hours acha ji okay answer batao a b c d likho pehle a b c d batao kya hai first of all please answer a b c d a you are writing okay see in this question i can see that all of you are wrong i can see that all of you are wrong all of you are wrong all of you are wrong acha dr bodha meet kumar has the next try see answer you are marking okay fine see there chalo achhi baat hai i can see your answers acha d also all right chalo now let's understand see when i talk about see when i have taught you immediate signs after death okay that will take uh, seconds to minutes when minutes to hours it will be taken those signs will be what early signs and early signs early signs are like and early signs are like what rigor mortis rigidity of the dead body rigor mortis i am writing here okay fine see here algar mortis algar mortis means cooling of the dead body how would you remember algar mortis hai na algae i hope you would have seen algae around the ponds near the ponds or river algae when you touch the algae it will be very very cold only no so algae mortis cooling of the dead body when i talk about liver mortis means discoloration of dead body yes okay fine please understand here that rule number 1 remember here all these early signs minimum it take minimum they take 6 to 12 hours to get completed 6 to 12 hours to get completed 6 to 12 hours theek okay? hai first thing my question is that first of all you understand here that first of all you see here see now when you see these pictures easily you can understand here that first of all you see picture number 1 and you see picture number 2 first of all in picture number 
you tell me during the time of recovery of the dead body what was the position of dead body supine position or the prone position supine position or the supine or the prone position see i am talking i am asking about picture number 1 picture number 1 Okay, here also there is the confusion. Okay, chalo, fine. First of all, you write. You do mistake here. After that, I will make it clear. After that, you will never do the mistake. You will never do the mistake. Picture number one was lying in supine position or prone position. Supine or prone. Achha, what about picture number two? Okay, theek hai, doctor. Roy, the old gamer. Achha. Chalo, fine. So let's understand the pathophysiology why there is a discoloration of dead body after that. Anna? Why there is discoloration? See here, see what I am saying that after death, obviously there will be a stoppage. See, after death, obviously there will be a stoppage of blood circulation. Anna? Obviously, there will be a stoppage of blood circulation. Right. So, do you think so? Blood will become stagnant. Anna? Obviously, so blood will become stagnant. All right. Ek jaga pe ruk jaga pura blood. Okay, fine. Then now you tell me from the major blood vessels, okay, blood will be there. But what about small, small blood vessels? Small, small blood vessels uh, like arterioles, venules, especially capillaries. So, do you think, see, after their death, when a person is lying in the supine position, see, this is supine position. This is a supine position. When a person is lying in a supine position, do you think there will be gravitational force like, Anna? See, obviously there will be gravitational force also, Anna? like this. So please understand that whenever there will be a stagnant of the blood in the blood vessels, do you think from the minor minor blood vessel whose, whose blood vessel source actually, so layers are very very thin. Do you think there can be a rupture of the blood vessels and and the blood can get accumulated at the at the dependent part yes blood can get dependent at the dependent part at the reti mucosa at the reti mucosa and fine i can easily understand that okay fine very easy to understand here also you can see here also you can see here also you can see here also you can okay but why only purple color? See, naturally after death, there will be discoloration of the body. And what will be the color of the body? Obviously, bluish or purplish color. Bluish or the purple color. Okay, fine. Why? This depends upon the nature of hemoglobin. This depends upon nature of hemoglobin. Nature of hemoglobin. See here, after death, there is no circulation, there is no oxygen also, then there is no oxygen. Now there will be what? Deoxyhemoglobin. Anna? So whenever there will be oxygen, obviously there will be bright red color. But whenever there is no oxygen, deoxyhemoglobin ka color kya hoga? Purple color. Anna? Deoxyhemoglobin will be of what? Purple color. Easy to understand. So that's why natural color after death is what? Purplish color. Bluish color. Easy to understand? Okay, fine. So when a person is in supine position, no, when a person is in supine position, at that time, and so obviously his back part, his buttocks, his posterior part of thighs will be dependent part, and a dependent part, okay, fine. If they lose dependent part, will have accumulation of blood. And that will be what? Liver mortis, stasis, and so actually so many synonyms are there. And actually so many synonyms, staining, lividity, this is also called as hypostasis. Right? Hypostasis. This is also uh, like this is also called as sugilation. As per the pattern, sugilation. These are synonyms. Suppose if there will be linear pattern, linear pattern will be will be called a vibysis. All these are synonyms of liver mortis. Staining. Okay, fine. So now see here in this supine position, dependent part is back, buttocks. And so, in supine position, discoloration will be over the nape of the neck, over the back, and 
over the posterior part of the thighs. What I have said here, loose dependent part. Fine. So now you tell me. First of all, you discuss about picture number two. Picture number two, batao kya hai? First of all, you tell me. He was lying in the supine position or prone position. Doctor Mahfuz Khan, yes, very good. Batao. The picture number two. First of all, during the time of recovery, he was lying in supine position or the prone position. Picture number two, supine position. Supine means when you are facing towards the sky. And what about the prone opposite when you are facing towards the bed? That is a prone position, right? So picture number two was in supine position. What about picture number one? He was lying. So at that time, dependent part was. Anterior part of the body. Picture number one, and one was in the prone position. Now the question is that I have taught you that loose dependent part will be having accumulation of blood. But what about in picture number one? What about this part? Is ka kya matlab hai yahan pe bhai? Ye is tarah se aisa kyu hai batao? Actually there is no staining, you know, like this. There is no staining here. Over the question mark, yeah, because this part was in direct contact with heavy pressure. With heavy pressure, है ना? Whenever there will be heavy pressure, there will be, है ना? The part of body which will be in the very very tight contact with the ground, that part will not get accumulation of blood. Or you can say that here actually his hand might be like this. No, before that, है ना? His hand might be like this, right? Heavy pressure, right? In this same manner, you can see in picture number two, something like the butterfly. This part, you know, see this part is not having the discoloration. I know. So because this part was in the direct contact with the floor, basically you can say this part, you know, so this part will be called a what? Pressure pallor. Pressure pallor. Because of the pressure, that part will become pale. This is what pressure pallor. Pressure pallor. Easy to understand. Okay, fine. So now you tell me. See now you tell me. I have I have received a dead body in my hospital. I can see that discoloration is over anterior part of the chest, anterior part of the neck, anterior part of the thighs. What was the position of dead body? At the time of recovery, supine position or prone? Can you answer me? Yeah, this was the prone position. Easy to understand. Now I have one more dead body where I can see that discoloration is over nape of the, है ना? Nape of the neck, over the shoulder, over the back, over the posterior part of thighs, over the posterior part of legs. What was the position of the dead body? Supine or prone? Supine position, right? Supine position. Easy to understand. But I have a special case. I have a special case where I can see discoloration not over the anterior part of chest, not over the back of the chest. I can see discoloration, bluish discoloration over the forearms and hands, and over the lower part of the legs and feet, and over the genital organ. What does it mean? What was the position of dead body during the time of recovery? बोलो सोच के जरा बताओ कहाँ का केस है ये? This was the so it means what body was suspended in vertical position where where vertical position कहाँ पे होगा obviously in a case of hanging in a case of hanging so in a case of hanging discoloration will be over the forearm and hands and lower part of legs something like glove and a stocking pattern please mention it है ना this type of staining is called as glove and stocking glove and a stocking pattern of glove and a stocking pattern of staining in a case of hanging hanging vertical suspension easy to understand fine so we have learned supine position prone position vertical position but now after murder dead body was thrown in a running water thrown in a river in river now body is keep on moving like this body is keep on move hai na body is like this moving like this Are you going to see any kind of staining? Are you going to see any kind of staining? There is repeatedly tossing of the body. 
yes in that condition you cannot see see in that condition you cannot see the lividity lividity is absent whenever there will be whenever there will be drowning in their running water and running water lividity will also be absent that if before and i'll see uh or if there was the loss of blood severe hemorrhage 65 percent in adults and 45 percent blood loss in infants in this condition also and i'll see in this condition also lividity will be absent my next question see i'm telling you that it takes minimum 6 hours for the fixation for the fixation of hypostasis it takes minimum 6 hours or you should write 6 to 12 hours for the fixation of staining what does it mean what does it mean means when i have received a dead body i could see Staining over anterior part of the chest, stomach, anterior part of the height. After that, I am going to turn the dead body in the supine position. Now there is no shifting of, now there is no shifting of a staining. What does it mean? Staining got fixed. Even if I am going to press, even if I am going to apply a pressure, I cannot see any blanching. If I can see blanching, it means what? Fixation has not happened. If I cannot see any blanching and if I cannot see any yellow discoloration, it means fixation has already happened whenever a fixation has happened whenever a fixation has happened after that you can know after that what will happen and see the discoloration will be fixed in a particular situation in a particular position after that there will be no changing in the discoloration i can give you one case you can solve it one dead body was recovered one dead body was recovered from the car during the recovery, police saw that that person, that dead body was in the sitting position like this. Right? Sitting position like this. During the time of recovery, there was discoloration over the lower part of back, over the buttocks, over the posterior part of thighs, over the legs. That's it. But when police recovered the dead body and kept in supine position on the floor, now, there is a discoloration over the nape of neck also, back also. What does it mean? Six hours over or murder has happened like in less than six hours. What does it mean? First of all, you tell me fixation has happened or not here in this case. Fixation has not happened. Right? Fixation has not happened. So it means what? How much is the time since there? See, for six years. For fixation, it will take more than 6, six to 12 hours. Is it to understand? No. So, it means time since death was less than 6 hours. I hope this point is clear to all of you. Now, you can solve this question like a piece of cake. Ab bata do kya hai question ab? Ab bata do kya hai answer? A, B, C, D. Now, the answer is the same. So, what is the answer? Hanging at time, mein, there was discoloration over forearms, over the lower legs. So, that was. But now, after that, kya hua? after was staining was seen around the back. Na? So, it means fixation did not happen. So, death happened. Answer C is right. So, now I hope this point, this topic is clear to all of you. Now, you are not going to make any mistake in this topic. Is it clear to all of you related to fixation? What kind of question they are going to frame? Now, you can solve it. Isn't it? See, easy or not? Liver mort is completed. Liver mort is completely clear. Okay, easy to understand, no? Very good, very good. Very good. Next question, please. Postmortem examination of a 45 year old man reveals brick red color of a staining. 
on further evaluation it was found that he died because of hypoxia where his tissues were deprived of oxygen on inquiry it was found that he was poisoned by the powder made by seed saw apple which poisoning is suspected ye to bahut hi easy question hai na now this is very very easy question first of all one liner question can be and see the one liner question will be in which poisoning you see brick red color brick red color cyanide poisoning we can understand from here also cyanide poison okay fine see here you can make the cyanide poison by the seeds of apple pear apricot and right? pear apricot and all okay here also cyanide but this question can be integrated with your physiology also with your physiology also see now we tell me see in the respiratory physiology see in the respiratory physiology how many types of hypoxia are there how many types of hypoxia see first of all hypoxic hypoxia hypoxic hypoxia okay second is anemic hypoxia third is stagnant stagnant or you can say hypoperfusion hypoperfusion fourth is histotoxic very good histotoxic or cytotoxic see here in this manner examiner will integrate physiology and poisoning hypoxic hypoxia means what whenever there will be lack of oxygen anemic hypoxia means what whenever there will be lack of hemoglobin hai na so that oxygen is not being carried fine now okay fine the stagnant or hypoperfusion whenever there will be slow perfusion to the body tissues histotoxic hypoxia means what histotoxic means what oxygen is available but tissues are not able to utilize the oxygen hai na that is histotoxic so this will specially be seen in a case of cyanide poisoning my question now how they are going to correlate cyanide poisoning with biochemistry cyanide blocks which metabolic pathway which pathway electron transport chain which complex complex number 4 which enzyme which enzyme cytochrome oxidase cytochrome oxidase enzyme will be blocked because of this tissues are not able to utilize the oxygen because of this tissues are not able to utilize the oxygen is it to understand no fine no so please understand that yes hai na on inquiry it was see here he died because of hypoxia where is tissues were deprived of oxygen right now so easy to understand answer will be cyanide poisoning what about anemic poison anemic poison in which see anemic hypoxia can be seen in which poisoning in which poisoning see mostly because of carbon monoxide poison mostly because of carbon monoxide poison see in co poison in co poison what is happening here i hope see when a person is alive you know that there will be oxyhemoglobin right there will be oxyhemoglobin but in a case of burns whenever whenever co enters the body co is having much much more affinity for hemoglobin than oxygen co is going to take hemoglobin away now there will be carboxyhemoglobin oxygen is there but carrying capacity is imbalanced is not there hai na hemoglobin is not being utilized here fine so there will be same situation like anemia so you can remember that carbon monoxide poison especially mimics like anemic type of hypoxia cyanide especially mimics like histotoxic hypoxia these two poisonings are very very important and they can correlate with your biochemistry physiology and easy to understand fine theek hai very good fine next see please understand here that see this 
is going to be a very very important table for you that in which poisoning what will be the discoloration see normally there will be the purple color co poisoning obviously there will be this color because see here now see reddish redness will be there because of the presence of oxygen so in carbon monoxide poisoning this is the discoloration cyanide brick red hypothermia oxygen will be see uh, like actually oxygen will be accumulated in the subcutaneous part there subcutaneous layer so hypothermia bright pink but in a case of the potassium chloride sodium chloride nitrite nitrate aniline there will be the see there will be formation of what met hemoglobinemia met hemoglobin which will be of the brown color which will be of brown color or you can say chocolate brown okay fine aniline sometimes blue color septic abortion bruise hydrogen sulfide obviously there will be what h2s with the hemoglobin there will be formation of sulf hemoglobin green color opium poisoning black color this table is important for the one liner question what will be the discoloration in the particular poisoning next question body becomes cold after the death due to loss of temperature due to loss of temperature but in some cases there is heat production in the body it is called as what ideally there should be what ideally there should be loss of temperature because after the death there will be shutdown of heat regulating system hai na there will be shutdown of heat regulating system in our brain because of that there will be loss of body core temperature i am saying i am saying what body core temperature i am not saying body surface temperature if a person is having a fever and the and the thermometer which we are hai na and the thermometer which we are using in the axilla or the mouth thermometer measures body surface temperature but remember here i am talking about body core temperature which will be measured by instrument that is called as the okay thermometer right meter okay fine so length of this will be approximately 25 cm fine so what is the best place see what is the overall what is the ideal site to measure body core temperature ideal site is under liver bed under liver bed but what is the most common site to measure body core temperature rectum rectum but it should not be used in a case of sodomy hai na sodomy is it understand see remember here ideal site to measure body core temperature is under the liver bed or sub hepatic site you can uh, like same instrument you can uh, you can insert in the uh, mouth also uh, so lower part of esophagus yes so tympanic membrane also is it understand fine so normally there will be loss of temperature but in some condition where there will be disturbance of heat regulation system like hai na like batao hai na see yeah, whenever there will be over production of heat in a case of tetanus in a case of in a case of the poisoning which is called as strict nine poisoning strict nine poisoning or in a case of heat stroke in a case of heat stroke and a heat stroke or in a case of septicemia septicemia in all these conditions in all these conditions what will happen there will be gain of temperature gain of energy this will be called as what post mortem caloricity post mortem caloricity dr rahul uh, sodomy me because loss of evidence no 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 because in sodomy there will be expanded rectum no? so that uh, that apparatus will not be fit there and that cannot give you the exact measurement of the body core temperature okay dr rahul hai na so yes so gain of temperature after death is called about post mortem caloricity important term related to your exam next question which of the following is a right sequence of the nestens rule first of all you tell me yes dr najib is spinal poison that you know, so that question came in inicd also so nistens rule where do where do we see nistens rule rigor mortis liver mortis alger mortis where do we see it very good nistens rule rigor mortis So, what is the meaning of rigor mortis? 
rigidity of dead body after the death or you can say body will become very very tight or a stiffening of dead body you can say stiffening of dead body and can you solve this question now sequence of nistens rule very important question nistens rule gives the appearance of rigidity after the death hai i hope all of you know that first organ to go into rigor mortis first organ overall overall i'm saying overall first is heart muscles myocardium right no first is myocardium okay first overall that is actually involuntary muscles but if they are asking you what is the first voluntary muscle to go into rigidity voluntary will be eyelid first eyelid and a first eyelid okay fine external so there is a sequence and there is a sequence right okay fine so let's understand see what is the meaning of rigor mortis okay this is also called as the what post mortem rigor rigidity stiffening and all okay fine see here first of all why there is rigor mortis see like overall first of all you understand the pathophysiology after that this will become very very easy for you see just after death at that time there is what see at that time there is 100% atp yes dr najib very good hai na so first of all there will be 100% atp okay fine so ye batao first of all see just after death what will happen first of all there will be actually first of all there will be primary relaxation first of all there will be primary relaxation at that time there will be 100% atp hai na there will be 100% atp at that time in the muscles see two muscle proteins actinomyosin actin must hai na actin protein and myosin protein both will be at their normal position fine but now you tell me after a few hours do you think there will be depletion of atp yes now whenever there will be 85% to 30% or 15% whenever there will be depletion of atp please understand that at this time now what will happen to actinomyosin this will come together this will make one component actin myosin will come together it will make one component and that's why muscles will become very very tight this is called as actinomyosin component this is called as a rigor mortis this is hai na because of this only there is rigidity right rigor mortis but after a few hours do you think there will be 100% loss of atp now there will be 0% atp do you think there can be dissolution of the uh, do you think there can be the dissolution of the muscle protein and obviously now there will be no protein so now again there will be what again there will be secondary relaxation again there will be secondary relaxation of the body see there is a rule of 12 it takes approximately 12 hours to appear rule of 12 is also for rigor mortis it takes approximately 12 hours to appear 12 hours to persist and 12 hours to disappear rule of 12 is also for rigor mortis remember it fine no so i can say that after 36 hours again body will become loose again body will become loose fine is for 1.5 day the so body can be actually the so body can be actually very very tight right now so overall what is the pathophysiology over what is the pathophysiology of the rigor mortis depletion of atp remember it okay fine so always remember that first of all there there should be a primary relaxation then a rigor mortis and then there will be secondary relaxation this is the normal protocol of this is the normal protocol of what rigor mortis is it to understand fine okay now understand here that see here first of all eyelids uh, like overall first of heart muscle then eyelids and you know? after that so see after some neck part and the lower jaw and then face after that muscles of the chest then upper limb then abdomen after that lower limb see here see in the same manner you have to remember 
first of all eyelid uh, means i'm talking about the externally after the neck part and the lower jaw after that chest then upper lip after that stomach then lower lip at the last hands and feet appearance order is same same like the disappearance proximo distal easy to understand this is a nistens rule this is a nistens rule one more rule overall one more rule is there that is called a shapiro's rule shapiro as per the shapiro's rule see there is no sequence as per the shapiro's rule there is no sequence and in simultaneously and i mean basically shapiro said that it can occur in all the organs at the same time but as per the nistens rule it takes some time so remember it so here right sequence will be c part nistens rule very very important related to your exam please remember it okay okay fine next question find out the wrong statement related to the given condition first of all first of all you tell me the diagnosis you tell me the diagnosis yes post mortem is there okay yeah this was the case of what this was the case of drowning this was the case of the drowning huh? okay okay so now which type of posture is there what is this which type of rigidity is this what is the name of this very good dr abhay very good dr dr bodhamitko dr arman very good very good dr rangesh dr osama Doctor Bada Meet Kumar, you are saying pugilistic attitude. Acha, how come? I hope you remember. This is called as cadaveric spasm. Cadaveric spasm. Kya tha cadaveric spasm? Chalo ek baar dekhte hain. There are some conditions which can simulate like rigor mortis. They appear to be like rigor mortis, but not hundred percent same like rigor mortis. First is cadaveric spasm. First is cadaveric spasm heat stiffening cold stiffening gas stiffening first of all most important topic uh, most important topic here is cadaveric spasm please understand here that see these two pictures see here when you see picture number 1 and picture number 2 see picture number 1 means homicide or suicide obviously this is a case of what suicide only no suicide when a person is going to kill himself so now it tell me just before the killing just before open the fire up see at that time see please understand here that when i talk about rigor mortis no see rigor mortis voluntary muscles involuntary muscles everything will be involved hai na heart muscles eyelid muscles everything will be involved so now in this case picture number 1 just before opening the fire up whenever he was about to pull the trigger here no see here now when he was about to open the fire up only hand muscles were in the the strenuous activity most active muscles were only voluntary muscles no so just after opening the fire arm see only voluntary muscles will go into sudden spasm this is called as cadaveric spasm this is called as cadaveric spasm or you can say what instantaneous spasm or you can also say this is also called as what instantaneous rigor instantaneous rigor now you tell me what does it mean see very very important topic i am telling this is called as what cadaveric spasm what is happening here see just before their death see in picture number 2 this is a case of the drowning yes obviously at the time of the see during the time of the and जब वो पानी में डूब रहा था ड्यूरिंग द टाइम ऑफ द ड्राउनिंग ऑब्वियसली ही वांटेड टू है ना ही वांटेड टू होल्ड समथिंग एंड ही वांटेड टू होल्ड समथिंग बट ही कुड होल्ड ओनली सम वीड्स एंड द ग्रासेस इन हिज हैंड है ना सो आई कैन से दैट ड्यूरिंग द टाइम ऑफ ड्राउनिंग मोस्ट एक्टिव पार्ट ऑफ हिज हैंड्स है ना सर मोस्ट एक्टिव पार्ट ऑफ हिज बॉडी वाज हैंड मसल्स सो जस्ट आफ्टर द डेथ सो ड्यूरिंग द टाइम ऑफ डेथ only most active muscles will go into directly will go into sudden spasm without going into primary relaxation phase see here what i am saying is that for rigor mortis what was that first of all there should be primary relaxation after a few hours spasm then again secondary relaxation 
But in the cadaveric spasm, sudden spasm, no primary relaxation, sudden spasm, no primary relaxation. This is called as cadaveric spasm. Now do understand here that cadaveric spasm cannot be produced artificially. This is because of the neurogenic block. I know. So this can give you the method of of death. With the help of this, you can understand how he died. Picture number one. Okay, this was the case of suicide case. Picture number two. Okay, drowning case. Right? Okay, fine. So now please write few differences between rigor mortis and cadaveric spasm. Cadaveric spasm is completely see here, na? Very very important. One is a rigor mortis. Another is cadaveric spasm. Rigor mortis, first of all, there will be primary relaxation. Then there will be secondary relaxation. In cadaveric spasm, no primary relaxation. Please understand here that. Without going into the phase of primary relaxation, body part is directly going into spasm. Second important point. Rigor mortis is Post-mortem son, post-mortem. Cadaveric spasm is completely anti-mortem in nature. It is completely anti-mortem in nature. In a rigor mortis, voluntary as well as involuntary, both muscles are getting involved. In cadaveric spasm, only voluntary muscle. Easy to understand. See. Cadaveric spasm is extremely important topic related to this is also called as instantaneous rigor. Anna? Now can you solve this question? Find out the wrong statement related to the given condition. The option A, okay, primary relaxation is absent. Option number B, last act of the person is preserved. Yes. Option number D, exclusively anti-mortem in nature. Yes. What about option number C? Involuntary muscles get involved just after that. Voluntary muscle, right? Voluntary muscles. Now, I hope you will not do any mistake in rigor mortis and cadaveric spasm. Right? No, rigor mortis and cadaveric spasm. Next is heat stiffening. Whenever there will be condition of the balls or high voltage electricity, whenever there will be temperature of more than 65 degrees centigrade, okay, see, suddenly body will become in this posture, something like the boxing attitude fencing attitude or pugilistic attitude or defense attitude right this is because of Anna, this will be seen in burns condition burns this will be due to muscle protein coagulation pugilistic attitude you are not going to forget pugilistic attitude seen in burns condition burns condition and this will be persisting up to the decomposition rigor mortis after one and a half days over easy to understand Pugilistic attitude, very, very important related to your exam. Next question. Given postmodern picture can be correlated with. I hope you can analyze this image. Bolo. First of all, you tell me after seeing this picture, where do you focus more? Where? I can see at the right iliac fossa, greenish discoloration. Greenish iliac fossa. Right iliac fossa, greenish discoloration. This is the first external sign of decomposition. This is first external sign of decomposition. Why? Why exactly at the right iliac fossa? Because when I make the diagram of large intestine, see this part is a cecum. This is ascending colon. This is transverse colon. This is descending colon. This is sigmoid colon. This is some part. This part is rectum. 
when we talk about cecum cecum is floating a structure which is lying superficially near right iliac fossa please understand that after death obviously maximum bacteria accumulation here kana bacteria accumulation when bacteria is going to produce when bacteria is going to produce hydrogen sulfide gas hydrogen sulfide plus hemoglobin it will make what self hemoglobin which is greenish in color right so that's why first external sign after decomposition is greenish discoloration over right iliac fossa out of these four what the meaning of the pompous mantis we have learned in dying declaration right this is the duty of our doctor to certify that before giving a statement person was completely oriented commotio rentis in a building collapse when two people died at the same time you cannot make it clear who died earlier it is called as commotio rentis corpus delicti it is called as essence of crime essence of crime corpus delicti essence of crime right very very important see this word is very important one liner repeatedly asked question essence of crime but what about hai na out of these four which one is related to which one is related to right iliac fossa greenish discoloration basically i am asking you which one is related to decomposition answer should be what answer should be what caspers dictum caspers dictum i hope you remember the ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 8 i hope you remember the mnemonic air water and earth right air water and earth i am talking about what rate of decomposition one week in air equals to two weeks in water equals to eight weeks in earth this is called as caspers dictum a body decomposes a body decomposes in air twice as rapidly as in water and eight times as rapidly as in earth remember caspers dictum very very important related to your exam very very important hai na so the mnemonic is air water and earth a w e o hai na mnemonic hai this is related to caspers dictum you are not going to forget the word caspers dictum and corpus delicti corpus delicti means what essence of crime basically suppose if anywhere murder has happened how would you understand murder sach mein hua ki nahi hua whenever police is going to do the inquiry he can see shattered glasses broken glasses broken gate and you know like like some blood spots some kind so it means yes crime has happened that is called as essence of crime that is corpus delicti that is corpus delicti this word you are not going to forget corpus delicti and caspers dictum next question now we are going to learn about asphyxial death hanging and all next and next is what asphyxial death with the help of the questions i am teaching you all the chapters okay i am doing the revision of all the chapters a dead body is recovered from a room a thin rope was ligated around the neck ligature mark ligature marks were found to be incomplete oblique and suprathyroid face was cyanosed and congested staining over hands and legs were fixed rigidity was seen all around the body what is your answer which of the following is incorrect related to this case multiple bruises and subcutaneous layers of the neck which of the following is wrong about this case See, now you tell me whenever a ligature material will be applied around the neck okay around the 
neck. So whenever there will be hanging or whenever, so obviously there will be obstruction of neck, obstruction of blood vessels, obstruction of respiration. Is it understand? Do you think there will be cyanosis over their face? Yes. And obviously because of the lack of blood supply and lack of the oxygen. Do you think there can be, see there can be signs of congestion over their face? Yes, I can say. Cyanosis. Congestion. Do you think because of the heavy pressure, because of the heavy pressure in the blood vessel, do you think there can be a rupture of the blood vessel? Do you think there can be over the face, there will be a small, 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 small. Uh, so there can be hemorrhages. Yes. And also you can say these are called the tardy whispers. Tardy whispers. Tardy whispers. Right. So when I can see over their face, when I can see sinusitis congestion and the particular hemorrhages, obviously, yes, neck was blocked like this. So yes, this is a case of asphyxia. What is the meaning of asphyxia? Lack of oxygen. See, the literal meaning of asphyxia means what? Literal meaning of asphyxia is the pulselessness. Pulselessness. Okay, fine. So whenever there will be complete hanging, first of all, Hannah. So see option number A. This is a case of the asphyxial death. Yes, this is right. Now the question option number D. Time since death is around 12 hours. Ho sakta hai kya? Staining over hands and legs were fixed. Fixation has happened. So 6 to 12 hours done. Rigidity was seen all around the body. Yes, this can have this takes approximately 12 hours to appear. Yes, option D is also right. When doctors did examination over the neck, there was only ligature marks. Ligature marks like incomplete, oblique, and suprathyroid. I can say, okay, this is the case of this was the case of hanging. Fine, I can understand that. Hanging case from outside, when you see it, hanging case was there. That's it. But in hanging case, post-mortem examination is mandatory or not? Yes, it is mandatory. Post-mortem examination is mandatory in hanging case. Why? Unnatural death, hai na? This is a case of unnatural death. So, post-mortem examination should be done. Now, now, in a case of hanging, which type of incision you are going to give? Only Y, modified Y, I-shaped, T-shaped or X-shaped? Write the answer in chat box. Bolo, bolo. I'm talking about hanging only, no. You have to do post-mortem examination. Are you going to give incision just below the chin to pubis? Or like this? Or, or around the neck, then going down. Yes, answer will be what? Modified Y-shaped of incision. I have explained you in the beginning all types of incision, right? Okay, fine. So now when doctors did examination, he found multiple bruises in the subcutaneous layers of neck. Multiple bruises have hai. What does it mean? Before hanging, someone has a strangulated hand. Someone is strangulated like manual strangulation. Like this. So there can be multiple bruises, contusions. So C is also right. Now B is wrong. Wrong answer is what? Sure case of partial hanging. So post-mortem examination has brought the reality. In this manner, they frame the question. Even in INICT, need PG exam or FMG exam also. Same, same to same. I'm telling you, same to same. Fine. I hope there is no confusion in this. I hope you know the meaning of bruises, right? Bruises and all. Even if you do not understand the meaning of bruises, that part will come in mechanical injury. I will make it clear. Don't worry. Fine. Now, let's understand about hanging ligature marks. Hai na? First of all, see types of hanging. See picture number one, picture number two, and picture number three. Please understand that when the knot will be placed over the central nape of the neck. Central 
as in picture number three. Hai na? When not will be placed centrally, when not will be placed centrally at the nape of the neck, it is called a typical hanging. Typical hanging. Typical. Okay, no? Apart from this point, not is play, not can be placed around the at the angle of angle of mandible below the submental position or below the chin also. So this part, so if not is placed here or here, this will be called as atypical, atypical hanging. So out of out of one, two, three, which one is the example of the typical hanging? Can you answer me? What are typical hanging consa? Out of one, two, three, yes. Okay, three is typical hanging. Typical hanging. Now, please understand that when we talk about judicial hanging, no, when we talk about judicial hanging, in judicial hanging means as per the judiciary system, and a knot will be placed at the angle of angle of mandible, angle of mandible, and a. As per the judicial hanging, what is the rule? Height of the rope and from where a person will be hanged. Height of the rope should be equal to the height of the person. And so when the person will be left suddenly, you know, after that there will be suddenly, see there will be the jerky movement of the neck. And especially C2 vertebra fracture will be there. C2 vertebra fracture, especially in judicial hanging. That's why a fracture of C2 vertebra is also called as hangman's fracture. Hangman's fracture. This is also called as hangman's fracture. Easy to understand. Fine. I hope all these points are clear. Now the question is that one is called a complete hanging. Another is called an incomplete hanging. See, when I talk about 100% hanging. Complete hanging, body is completely suspended in air. And I like picture number one. Complete hanging. Here, body weight is going to be the constricting force. Body weight. Body weight. Weight of the body is the constricting force. When any part of the body is going to touch the ground like feet or legs or knee, then it will be called as a partial hanging. In partial hanging, see what will happen in the partial hanging? Head will be bended like this. Head will be bended like this. So here, weight of the head will become constrict. Remember it. Remember it. That is called a partial hanging. So picture A is complete hanging or partial hanging. What is your answer? Picture A is what? Picture A is? Picture A is? Complete hanging. If I ask you what is the constricting force in picture number A? Body weight or head weight? Body weight. Body weight. Hai na? Body weight. Here yeah, there will be 100% compression of neck. So most common cause of death in complete hanging is what? Hypoxia. It will be what? Hypoxia. Hai na? What about picture number B? That is called as partial hanging picture number b is what partial hanging here here what is the what is the constricting force head of hai na? weight of head here head will be bended like this no so there will be obstruction of air passages also blood vessels also so most common cause of death in partial hanging will be what hypoxia plus blood vessel occlusion hypoxia plus ischemia hypoxia plus ischemia Remember all these points. So now what will be the ligature mark? What will be the ligature mark? See, please understand here that, see, when a person will be hanged, see, when a person will be hanged completely in air, hai na? when a person, see, whenever there will be 100% suspension, whenever there will be 100% suspension of body in air. Okay, fine. Now see how the body will be, hai na? How, the, how the ligature part will be there. See, like this, hai na? Yeah. I'm going to demonstrate you here like this and like this when I talk about complete hanging they go this part is on the fan now you see see now you tell me where is the ligature material here suprathyroid or the infrathyroid obviously suprathyroid now you tell me this is horizontal or oblique 
obviously this is what oblique now we tell me do you think ligature mark will be all around the neck or this will be empty at the point at the place of the knotting yes this will be incomplete incomplete right this will be incomplete so i can say that incomplete hanging 100% hanging hai na 100% 100% hanging ligature marks will be incomplete oblique and suprathyroid ios is the mnemonic ios is mnemonic right is it to understand even if you don't see ligature marks are very very important for examination even if you are not able to recall it in the examination room you can do like this you can write the exam hai na like at that time exam will think oh my god examination is very very difficult right i know don't commit suicide there right and it don't do there but you can understand it hai na fine now what about the partial hanging see in partial hanging you know what will happen see this will hai na head will bend down like this hai na so when head will bend down this and now this ligature material this ligature part will come down like this it will come down now this will be below thyroid cartilage this will be below thyroid cartilage and this will not be oblique mostly this will be transverse remember it how to differentiate how to differentiate complete hanging uh, typical complete and the partial hanging is it understand fine so this question is clear to all of you question number 19 is clear to all of you right okay fine now question number 20 see question number 20 find out the wrong interpretation of the following case obviously this is a case of hanging now you tell me see after seeing the ligature marks can you tell me this is complete hanging or partial hanging easily you can answer it right because see and so this is what suprathyroid oblique and this part see you cannot say na, incomplete so completely this is what and this is a case of typical hanging now you tell me what is the surest sign of anti mortem hanging what is the surest sign of anti mortem hanging whenever a ligature mark is here above the na, see here no see just below right and see See when ligature material is here, actually, so just at the floor of mouth. Do you think there will be? Do you think there will be dribbling of saliva? Yes, there will be dribbling of saliva. Why? Because there will be the compression. There will be irritation over the salivary glands here. No, that's why in the typical complete hanging, complete hanging, there will be dribbling of saliva. Dribbling of saliva easy to understand now fine and there will be the protrusion of tongue oh, we can understand it find out the wrong interpretation dribbling of saliva yes the ligature mark is suprathyroid yes lifashi sympathetic is anti mortem in nature yes this is also true what is the meaning of lifashi sympathetic we are going to understand the year whenever a knot will be placed as this whenever there will be compression of cervical sympathetic chain and the eyes of the same side eyes of the same side will remain open this is called as this is called as and a lifashi sympathetic lifashi sympathetic this is fine no okay fine now what is the surest sign of anti mortem hanging surest sign is what please remember dribbling of saliva suppose if before hanging if a person was murdered after that he was hanged you cannot see the dribbling of saliva because why what is the reason here because hai na anti mortem hanging when rope is going to irritate the salivary glands no obviously there will be dribbling of saliva hai na So hundred percent anti mortem sign. Hundred percent anti mortem sign. Hundred percent anti mortem sign. Okay. Now see here. When I talk about see one is hanging. We have hanging part completed. Now 
when body is suspended in air with a ligature material it is called as what but if i am sitting on a chair someone is standing at my behind and he is going to apply a ligature material from the back side and then he is going to throttle me this is called as what this is going to hana this will be called as a strangulation so a strangulation is of two types if a person is using hands and a like this this is called as manual strangulation if ligature material is applied it is called as what ligature strangulation ligature strangulation is it to understand so obviously ligature marks in strangulation and and the hanging both will be different okay first of all you understand after that after that everything will be clear see picture number 1 you can say okay this is the case of hanging picture number 2 now what is happening here if a person is standing at my back side and now he is going to he is going to apply a ligature material here see a person is standing at my back side right now and he is standing at the back side so now you tell me when a person is going to ligate my neck so obviously ligature material see here no so this is above thyroid or below thyroid below thyroid and this is oblique or horizontal horizontal means actually transverse right okay now ligature mark will be complete or incomplete obviously puri tarah se tight karega na wo this will be complete so remember in a strangulation hai na infra thyroid infra thyroid transverse or horizontal and it will be complete itc grand chola itc is the mnemonic for the ligature marks in a strangulation and ios incomplete oblique supra thyroid remember it how to differentiate a strangulation and ligature uh, uh, how to differentiate strangulation and hanging repeatedly asked repeatedly asked question in ligature strangulation there will be marks of the ligature but whenever there will be manual strangulation or like this manual strangulation means what and so obviously because of the and see because of the tip of the fingers no and See, there will be the compression around the neck because of that. Do you think there can be what? There can be rupture of the internal small blood vessels. Yes, there can be bruises or contusion internally, right? Okay, fine. Now, see here. Now, when we talk about hyoid bone fracture, hyoid bone fracture can be seen in hanging also, strangulation also. when we strangulate someone like this obviously there will be inward compression inward compression hai na so basically manual strangulation is also called as the throttling throttling it will go inside hanging may one part will go away outward compression so what is the wrong answer here in complete hanging there will be outward compression because of that there will be hyoid bone fracture no so answer will be c i hope ligature marks all points are clear to all of you okay now see picture number 1 see why i am showing you so many images because forensic minimum two questions you can anticipate as image based batao picture number 1 picture number 2 picture number 3 picture number 1 is what very good dr ahil qureshi dr monica shri very good picture number 1 what is this yeah this is a case of complete hanging this is a case of hanging what about picture number 2 you can see multiple abrasions over the neck and multiple contusions bruises over the neck so picture number 2 means what ligature strangulation or manual strangulation picture number 2 picture number 2 is manual strangulation no? which is also called as which is also called as the throttling hai na what about picture number 3 very easy no hai na now it's very easy for you right hai na so what about picture number 3 yes picture number 3 will be what ligature strangulation picture number 3 will be what ligature strangulation now if i ask you what are the ligature marks will be what are the ligature marks which will be seen in picture number 3 please write in chat box
बताओ ITC है ना ITC इंफ्राथायरॉयड ट्रांसवर्स एंड कंप्लीट व्हाट अबाउट पिक्चर नंबर वन IOS है ना इनकंप्लीट ओब्लिक एंड सुपराथायरॉयड व्हाई पिक्चर नंबर टू इज मैनुअल स्ट्रैंगुलेशन बिकॉज यू कैन से मल्टीपल ऑपरेशंस ओवर द नेक राइट ओवर द नेक ठीक सम मैकेनिकल सम मैकेनिकल है ना सम मैकेनिकल ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन मैकेनिकल कॉजेस ऑफ एस्फिक्सिया प्लीज look at these pictures and this was the question in recent this was the question in a recent inict see picture number 1 2 picture number 3 i will start like this good job wait picture number 1 picture number 2 picture number 3 picture number 4 when a rope is thrown from behind a person is going to be strangulated picture number 1 this is called as what very good this is called a garroting garroting hai na garroting okay fine this is called the garroting garroting what about picture number 2 when two sticks are placed around the neck and after that there is the neck constriction hai na constriction of neck by two sticks or rods hai na or you can say like like the bamboo is the bamboo ko hindi mein kya kehte hain baans this is called as baans dola this is called as baans dola baans dola what about picture number 4 whenever you are going to kill a person under the bend of your elbow like this it is called as picture number 4 kya batao mugging picture number 4 is mugging now question number picture number 3 inict this is a method of execution in spain in spain where iron collar iron collar rod is placed around the neck and then there will be screw fixation this is a method of execution in spain so this is a type of garroting only this is a type of garroting where iron collar rod is applied around the neck then there is the constriction of neck this is called as what spanish windlass this is called as a spanish windlass see this is called as a spanish windlass see there was a direct question that spanish windlass is a type of option number 1 pass dola option number 2 mugging option number 3 was the option number 3 was the garroting option number 4 something else hai na so please understand that spanish windlass is a type of garroting abhi question aa gaya but this is actually repeatedly asked question old question this is repeatedly asked question Fine now, so this can improve your picture memory, right? देख लो अच्छे से सब. There should be no confusion in these pictures. Very very important. Very very important, right? Very very important. Next. अब बताओ. See this question. A newly married female was killed by pushing a cloth in her mouth. Which type of suffocation death is this? I am still in asphyxia only. Okay, no asphyxia. Asphyxia means what? Suppose, है ना? Means like whenever there will be obstruction of respiratory passages. So, है ना? This can be, ah, uh, this can be due to hanging, strangulation, right? Strangulation and this kind of suffocation. See, please understand that whenever there will be manual strangulation, no manual strangulation, obviously there will be multiple bruises. So these bruises are especially called as what? Six penny bruises. वो लिख लो mention कर लो कहीं पे. That is called as what? Six penny bruises. Six penny bruises. See what is the meaning of the? What is the meaning of the penny? Means like a coin. You can also say there will be discoid bruises because of the compression by the tip of the finger. And I seen in manual strangulation, which is also called as throttling. Solve karo this question now. Solve this question now. by pushing a cloth in her mouth hai na remember it 
see this picture first of all you see this picture when external respiratory passages are blocked by a pillow by hand or by any cloth it is called as smothering it is called as smothering when external respiratory passages are being blocked like this okay fine but when internal respiratory passages are blocked if accidentally it is called as choking choking is accidental choking is accidental choking is accidental like fish bone or if you know like any coin but homicidal if a person is going to push a paper roll or cloth inside the mouth fine whenever there will be blockage that is called a what gagging easy to understand so that is called a what gagging right now so answer will be c very very important see this is actually what mechanical obstruction the, all these are what suffocation death and a suffocation death okay and so smothering clear choking clear gagging clear first of all you understand rheumatic asphyxia asphyxia due to stampede or any road traffic accident or whenever there will be building collapse after the trauma there is asphyxia suppose if there was building collapse building collapse and now there is more than 50 kg weight over the chest of the person now he is not able to breathe in and out this is what mechanical obstruction of the respiration easy to understand this is called as traumatic asphyxia so because of this obviously there will be cyanosis and because of this there will be obviously cyanosis bluish color discoloration over face over the neck this is something like this no something like this hai na see cyanosis bluish discoloration will be over the face over the neck this is called as hai na mask of ecchymosis you can remember like this right no this is called as what ecchymotic mask see the picture here see the picture here this is called as what mask ecchymotic mask ecchymotic see this picture hai na this can be your image based question this will be seen in this can be seen in a case of asphyxia due to trauma asphyxia due to trauma see this picture hai na mask of ecchymosis you can see right so this can be seen whenever there will be building collapse anything okay so now there is a combination of now there is a combination of a smothering and traumatic asphyxia there were two friends bork and here whenever they want to kill whenever they wanted to kill any person they used to invite first of all they used to offer them alcohol they used to offer them alcohol okay after that when that person was losing the consciousness no one friend was blocking the one person was sitting on the on the on the on the thoracic part over the chest and he was blocking the uh, like mouth and the nose and one friend used to hold his feet and he used to drag him around the room they used to do it till the time when that person used to die this is called as barking this was the method of barking method of asphyxia barking barking is it to understand barking now accidentally a person fell here in the tire now because of the position he is hai na now his neck is like this and now there will be asphyxia obstruction this is called as positional asphyxia this position is something like the jack knife position right now hai na jack knife position now cafe coronary a person was enjoying his lunch a person was enjoying his lunch in a cafe he was having lunch along with alcohol suddenly there was obstruction by the bowl of some food and suddenly he was having vagal inhibition he he fell on the floor and he had all these symptoms like heart attack pain in chest and sudden vagal inhibition what is happening here 
सो एक्चुअली दिस वॉज टाइप ऑफ वॉट रिफ्लेक्स कार्डियक अरेस्ट है ना सी अदर पीपल वेन दे विल सी अदर पीपल वेन एवर दे आर गोइंग टू सी हिम दे विल थिंक दैट ओके दिस इज द केस ऑफ हार्ट अटैक है ना तो लाइक इट मिमिक्स लाइक कोरोनरी आर्टरी डिजीज समथिंग लाइक हार्ट अटैक फाइन ना बट दिस इज हैपनिंग बिकॉज ऑफ वॉट obstruction of larynx because of the bolus of the foot because of the sudden cardiac arrest and right? this is called a what cafe coronary syndrome cafe coronary overlying overlying suppose if the mother baby mother and baby they are sleeping together and right? newborn baby and right? obviously during sleeping if mother is overlying on the baby and now there is suffocation baby will die this is overlying all these are very very important next A type of drowning where a person is survived and death occurs at a later stage after removal from water. Either the person himself comes out of water or he is recovered alive. But due to complication of submersion, he dies at a later stage. This is called as what? This question also came in I N I C E T recent few days back. Yeah, this is a case of what? Tell me. This is a case of the near drowning, right? Okay, fine. We are going to understand. See, because drowning is most important topic related to forensics. Okay, fine. So let's understand the drowning part. One is the typical drowning where water enters the lung and it replaces the air. Fine. This is called as wet drowning basically 100% water entered the lungs it is called the typical drowning when water is going to enter the lungs obviously water is obviously water is going to replace the air obviously it is going to disturb the lungs parenchyma where you had what you had the phospholipids hai na uh, like lecithin and the sphingomyelin obviously hai na hai na obviously it was there so it is going to obviously after that it is going to mix with what phospholipids and all and do you think now see obviously water will get outside also better will be after the water will be ejected out of the mouth also no so there will be a frothing discharge from the mouth and nose yes there will be a froth okay fine see this frothing will be seen only in wet drowning or only in the condition where actually water enters the lung so it can be seen in a fresh water drowning or the salt water drowning fine but a typical drowning where water does not enter the lung when water is entering the see overall whenever water is entering the sorry so whenever water is entering the respiratory tract there will be sudden activation of the parasympathetic supply so suddenly there will be what laryngospasm suddenly there will be laryngospasm where water did not enter the lung patient died because of the laryngospasm because of the cardiac arrest because of the laryngospasm that is called the dry drowning so there are four types of atypical drowning we'll be learning one by one first of all fresh water drowning and salt water drowning how examiner can how examiner can confuse you that hai na after recovering the dead body how would you understand that whether patient was whether the dead body was recovered from fresh water or the salt water okay fine see here first of all fresh water drowning and after that salt water drowning see in a normal person how much will be salinity how much will be the sodium chloride content 0.9% but a fresh water will be see overall fresh water will be having less salt content no hai na so this will be having approximately 0.45% of salt sodium chloride salt water will be having more hyperosmolar no? so this will be having what hai na hypersalinity this will be having approximately 3 to 4% so this will be isotonic fluid this will be hypotonic and this will be hypertonic i hope all of you are understanding this much part so now you tell me whenever a fresh water whenever a person will be drowned in fresh water no hai na okay fine so whenever water is going to enter from airway airway to lungs 
एंड ऑब्वियसली आफ्टर दैट इन दी सर्कुलेशन है ना इन दी सर्कुलेशन ओके फाइन है ना हाइपोटोनिक फ्लूड इज ऑब्वियसली बिकॉज ऑफ द डिफ्यूजन इट इज गोइंग टू मिक्स इन द सर्कुलेशन तो नाउ डू यू थिंक देर विल बी हिमो डायल्यूशन ऑब्वियसली देर विल बी हिमो डायल्यूशन नो यस नाउ देर विल बी वॉट हिमो डायल्यूशन नाउ देर विल बी वॉट हिमो डायल्यूशन हिमो डायल्यूशन तो डू यू थिंक देर विल बी वॉट आफ्टर दैट देर विल बी वॉट हिमोलाइसिस यस देर विल बी हिमोलाइसिस there will be hemolysis so physiologically now there will be what now there will be what hyperkalemia now there will be what increased level of potassium now there will be what increased level of potassium so do you think this can create arrhythmia yes now this will have right? a because excess of potassium hyperkalemia it will produce what ventricular fibrillation or simple है ना एरिथमिया सिंपल ओके फाइन तो नाउ यू टेल मी इवन आफ्टर दैट व्हेन एवर देयर विल बी है ना ओवर फ्लूइड सी ओवरऑल सी ओवरऑल देयर विल बी फ्लूइड ओवरलोड आल्सो ना सो ऑब्वियसली देयर विल बी द पल्मोनरी एडिमा आल्सो एंड फाइनली पेशेंट इज डाइंग बिकॉज ऑफ व्हाट बिकॉज ऑफ कार्डियक अरेस्ट कार्डियक अरेस्ट सो कैन सो आई कैन इन्फॉर्म यू हियर दैट in fresh water drowning in fresh water drowning what is the most common cause of death cardiac arrest cardiac arrest hai na cardiac arrest what about salt water or sea water hai na sea water see here since this is hypertonic saline hypertonic say from airway when it is going to enter the lungs now we tell me in the lungs hypertonic saline is there hypertonic saline is going to attract it is going to fetch water from circulation also water from circulation also it will be going into the lungs now there will be what severe pulmonary edema now there will be severe pulmonary edema severe pulmonary edema so i can say that in salt water drowning obviously there will be what hai na see obviously there will be what respiratory failure respiratory failure so in salt water see obviously heart will also be affected heart obviously heart will also be affected but see hai na because of the severe pulmonary edema please remember that hai na first most common cause if you have to choose only one hai na so like it should be respiratory failure but suppose if they have given the option both respiratory failure plus cardiac arrest you have to choose both and but you have to choose one then respiratory failure is the common cause of death in salt water i hope this much part is clear to see this much part is clear to all of you know but whenever there will be immersion of body in the dirty water dirty water then there will be a death because of what sepsis hai na sepsis sepsis okay fine is it understand okay now how you are going to make it clear that dead body was or that person was drowned in fresh water or salt water fresh water or salt water see please understand here that see now when i talk about see when i talk about see normal saline and 0.9% fresh water 0.45% sea water 3 to 4% hypertonic sir okay now when a person will be thrown in fresh water obviously from the higher concentration to lower concentration and i see the molecules or you can say what here and actually the moles will be going from the higher concentration to the higher concentration to the lower concentration fine so if a person is a recovered from or if a dead body is a recovered from the fresh water fresh water fresh water now you tell me from higher concentration to lower concentration salt will flow you have to check the chloride content basically you have to check what chloride content fresh water mein agar drowning hui na so in post mortem examination salt content will be less 25% chloride content will be lesser than the normal it means fresh water drowning if body was 
थ्रोन इन सी वॉटर सी वॉटर हाइपर टोनिक है हाइयर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन टू लोअर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इट विल गो राइट If chloride content is more than the normal, more than the normal, then drowning happened in. This is called as Gettler's test. This is called as Gettler's test. Gettler's test is performed to differentiate fresh water drowning and sea water drowning. Fine. So whenever there will be, you know, so easy to understand, no? So whenever there will be, uh, like. Uh, whenever there will be severe pulmonary edema uh, like in the lungs you can say that like there will be uh, there will be higher volume in the uh, like in the lungs obviously you can see the ballooning of lungs see ballooning of lungs when do will when you are going to see ballooning of lungs ballooning of lungs see whenever you are going to do post mortem examination whenever you are going to remove the sternum or say lungs will come out like the balloon and like the balloon that is called the Ballooning of lungs. Obviously, this will be seen in the drowning. Okay, fine. So I hope this much part is clear to all of you. Now let's learn all atypical drowning, dry drowning, and all when water does not enter the lungs because of the laryngospasm, patient will die. Second is immersion syndrome or hydrocution. See, this was the question. This was the question in NICT. Whenever see there was a question that when a person will be when a when a person will be thrown in cold water he will die because of this was the question in NICT. This is also called as immersion syndrome, submersion or, है ना, vagal inhibition. See what is happening here when a person will be thrown in cold water, especially cold water I am talking about, है ना, it will stimulate is vagal now because of this what is happening there is sudden vagal inhibition of the heart and patient will die because of the vagal inhibition this was the question that when a person will be thrown in cold water he died he will be dying because of option one option was there uh, vagal inhibition was there this is what cold water drowning hydrocution and a hydrocution immersion syndrome or you can say submersion inhibition Submersion of unconscious. A person was having, suppose if a person was sitting at the swimming pool, he had heart attack, he fell in swimming pool. He had epilepsy, he fell in swimming pool. When a person was enjoying shower, when a person was enjoying in bathtub, he was having alcohol also after because of the higher blood alcohol concentration, he fell into the bathtub. Submersion of unconscious. First of all, he became unconscious. He or she became unconscious. After that, there was a submersion. It can be seen in a case of hypertension, heart attack, alcoholism, epilepsy, submersion of unconscious. Last is near drowning, also called a secondary drowning, or you can say post immersion syndrome. First of all, there was a drowning. After that, he survived. Someone has saved him. But because of the secondary complication, he died after a few days. That will be called as what? Near drowning. So now, what is your answer here? See now, see this question. Answer is near drowning, right? Near drowning. See, remember. So related to drowning, please understand. First, most important is Gettler's test. Gettler's test. One more is there that is called as diatoms test. Please write it down. Diatoms test. The diatoms are unicellular algae. Unicellular algae. Very very small. Very very small. Size is sixty micron. Sixty micron. Very very small. See. Diatoms are this much small that this can easily from the lungs easily it can enter into systemic circulation. But it is completely inert, inert. So even after many years of decomposition, this will be there in the bone marrow. This will be there in the bone marrow. So you have to do bone marrow examination. No. So whenever you are doing bone marrow aspiration, especially which bone? Best bone is a femur. If you can find out a diatoms, it means that he died because of. It means he died because of what? Drowning. Drowning. This is called as. Diatoms test. Remember it. Diatoms test.
So what is the answer here? Very easy question, but very important question. And this is washer woman's hand. Washer woman's hand. Postmodern sign of drowning. See this picture. This is and these two are what? Washer woman's hand. And washer woman's hand. And this is what? Where you can see the pilo erection. Goose like skin. Goose like skin. Also called as cutis answering. Cutis answer. Is it understand? In the postmodern examination, you can also see that when dirty water enters the lungs, obviously there will be what? See, there will be a rupture of the pleural membrane that is called as Paltov's hemorrhage. Please remember it. Paltov's hemorrhage. Paltov's hemorrhage. Paltov's Drowning is very very important topic. So next question. Now sexual jurisprudence related to the fight of maternity and the paternity. Sir, how to differentiate anti mortem and post mortem? Doctor Najib is asking the question. Very good question. See. If there will be water in a stomach, stomach or intestine or GIT, it means yes, he drank, he drank the water before the drop. Anna? Water in the stomach is 100% anti-mortem sign. If there will be seeds or a small plants in his hand like cadaveric spasm, these two are the signs of what? Anti-mortem drowning. Okay, Dr. Najib, very good. Easy to understand now. Now solve this question, question number 24. See, all these are postmortem. See, the a washer woman's hand, part of hemorrhage, all these are the postmortem. See this question, question number 24 now. A case of heteropaternity where possibility of twins also being half siblings is seen. Father claims that he is not sure if both babies belong to him. This is a case of, remember, very very important super fecundation and super fetation. Repeatedly asked question. Suppose if there is a female, her name is Julia. Her name is Julia. Her husband is Max. Her husband is Max. And her boyfriend is Mark. Mark. Husband and wife both are white. Husband and wife both are white. Both are white. But boyfriend is black. So what happened? Last night Julia had sexual intercourse with her husband. And in early morning when husband left for the office, she had sexual intercourse with her black boyfriend. Now there was, now what happened here? Now there is fertilization of two ova by two different sperm. Basically dual sim kehlo, right? What happened? Anna? So now there is fertilization of two ova by two sperms. Now there is delivery of a twins baby. Now there is a delivery of twins. One is white, one baby is white, one baby is black. So they will be half siblings. This is called as super fecundation. Super fecundation. Super fecundation. Okay, fine. Now, next is superfetation. See, this is actually, see, all these are somewhat rare, but it can happen. Actually, so many cases are there. Like if you see the old cases, no? Yes. Now, what about superfetation? See, 
फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू मेक इट क्लियर दैट इन सुपर फिकंडेशन फर्टिलाइजेशन ऑफ टू ओवा बाय टू स्पॉम्स बाय टू स्पॉम्स बट विद इन सेम मेन्स्ट्रल साइकिल सेम मेन्स सुपर फिकंडेशन बट सुपर फिटेशन सी एक्चुअली इट इज रेयर इन ह्यूमन बींग रेयर सुपर फिटेशन but it can happen whenever there will be double uterus or septate uterus there was fertilization of one ova in january second ova got fertilized in february when there was a delivery of the twins one baby was elder one was younger it is a case of super fetation super fetation see super fecundation one is black one is white same age super fetation super fetation or no? super fetation one is younger one is elder easy to understand so how to see super fecundation and super fetation very very important topic related to your exam so remember how to differentiate these two remember these two please understand that super fecundation two ova Two sperms, है ना? See both are the condition of the dizygotic twins. Okay, one menses, one menses, one mens only, है ना? Super fitting, super fetation, two ova, fertilization of two ova by two sperms. In but there will be involvement of two menstrual cycle, two menstrual cycle, super fetation, very very important, very very important, है ना? Very very important. related to your exam fine now see here so this was the case mother got pregnant when she was already pregnant so what will be your diagnosis here super fetation or super fecundation yes this will be the case of what super fetation super fetation is it to understand hai na see this is very very difficult to find out in india because almost similar color here no? but in western countries like if a person is black he is 100% black if a person is white he is 100% white so there easily you can differentiate right no easily you can differentiate huh? super fecundation and super fetation so question number 24 what is the answer here obviously this is a case of what half sibling case no hai na and when father is claiming that he is not sure whether both babies belong to him only this is a case of what super fecundation super fecundation now next see here some other points see what is the meaning of supposititious child see all these points are important related to legitimacy related to legitimacy supposititious child means a fictitious child fictitious child suppose there is a suppose there is a child suppose if a female is going to pretend for 9 months she uh, like she was uh, a female was hiding herself for last 9 months suddenly she is presenting with a newborn baby and now she is saying that now she is saying that and i can uh, this mr ambani i'm not saying the real ambani any anyway, ambani is a metaphor of rich people right now suddenly she is claiming that no no a real father is this ambani hai na but that ambani is saying no no i'm not the real father i'm not the real father i know so how to solve this how to solve this situation obviously with the help of dna testing hai na dna testing this is a case of supposititious child fictitious child suppose there is a child so whenever a female is pretending that she has delivered a baby suddenly she is presenting with a new baby right now this is supposititious child atavism suppose if the external appearance of a child is not matching with his parents but with his grandparents with his grandparents it is called as atavism what is the meaning of the posthumous child birth of a child after death of her or his mother birth of the child after death of after father 
बास्टर्ड चाइल्ड मीट है ना तो ओवर ऑफ वर्ड मीनिंग ऑफ द बास्टर्ड चाइल्ड इन लेजिटिमेट चाइल्ड बेसिकली हु वॉज बॉर्न आउट ऑफ द लीगल वेड लॉक है ना लीगल पेरेंट नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन Yes, this is है ना सी यर सी दिस पिक्चर इज सम वर्ट रिलेटेड टू अ चाइल्ड एंड वेयर यू कैन सी सब डेवरल हेमरेट और यू कैन से लाइक है ना यहां पर दिख रहा है ना सब डेवरल हेम ओके प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड दैट सी वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट यस वन सी दिस चैप्टर सी दिस टॉपिक इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर एग्जाम बैटर्ड बेबी सिंड्रोम Battered baby syndrome, which is also called a Caffey syndrome or Caffey Kempe syndrome. Whenever a child is being abused by the parent, so it could be possible that child is unwanted. Child is unwanted, and every time husband or wife they are going to torture the child. Every time the child is being bitten, right now, fine. So how to understand that this is a case of the child abuse? How to understand this is a case of battered baby syndrome? Please understand that whenever there will be discrepancy, whenever there will be discrepancy in history given by, in history given by the guardian, and nature of wound, and nature of wound, you should understand that this is a case of what? This is a case of battered baby syndrome or child abuse. Easy to understand. Remember it. Fine. Most pathological sign of the battered baby syndrome is what? Laceration of upper lip. Laceration of upper lip. Laceration of upper lip. Hai na? Suppose if see, suppose every day father was slapping his boy. Might be okay, but suddenly one day what happened? Baby fell down, the child fell down, and there was a clavicle fracture. Now this day, he brought his baby to hospital. See, sir, देखो there is fracture of a bone. So obviously you are going to remove the cloth. Now when you are going to remove the cloth, now you can see different different bruise, different different contusion over the body part of different different ages of different different healing stages. Now, when you are asking how these injuries are there, now father said, "No, no, no. He used to play with his friends all in you know, a separate time. They used to fight and all uh, because he fell from the stairs." Now, what is happening here? History given by the guardian is not matching. Is not matching with the nature of a wound. With the see, there will be different different ages of healing of the wound. It means hundred percent. This is the case of what. Battered baby syndrome. When you do X-ray, you can see multiple fractures over the ribs. This is called as nibbling fracture. This is called as what? Nibbling fracture. है ना? Nibbling fracture. Sometimes father will become so furious that he will he can shake and he can shake the head of the baby, and so that there can be retinal detachment. There can be intracerebral hemorrhage or there can be hemorrhage. Mostly there will be subdural hemorrhage. That's why it is also called as infantile whiplash syndrome. It is called as infantile whiplash syndrome. Very very important. Child abuse. Very important topic related to your exam. Next, very important medical termination of pregnancy. Yeah, that is what infantile whiplash syndrome. Yeah, this is also called as shaken baby syndrome. Shaken baby syndrome. All these words you have to memorize. Here you can do mistake. Here you can do mistake. See, as per a nineteen seventy one MTP Act. At that time, opinion of one doctor was required up to twelve weeks. Opinion of two doctors were required up to twenty weeks. As per old Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act, maximum limitation were was the twenty weeks. But 
as per a new MTP Act, which was which was implemented in 2021 September last year, right? है ना? Now opinion of one doctor is up to 20 weeks and two up to 24 weeks, है ना? Maximum up to 24 weeks. But there are some rules, and because of that only you are doing mistake here. MTP Act. Maximum up to the maximum up to twenty four weeks in a case of rape victim. In a case of rape victim, but especially in a case of failure of contraception in a woman, MTP can be performed only up to twenty weeks. Now the question is that in which conditions? MTP is legally permitted. Legally permitted, है ना? Legally permitted. First of all, like whenever, like there will be a risk of mother's life, है ना? Risk of mother's, है ना? Risk of mother's life. Second, whenever there will be abnormality in the chromosome. Eugenic problem, eugenic abnormality. Third, on the basis of humanity, if pregnancy is because of the rape. Fourth, if partners, if the couple was practicing contraception. So failure of contraception, yes, this is also legally permitted. But maximum up to twenty weeks. Maximum up to twenty weeks. See. At any age, if there is a risk of mother's life, you can perform it. But for a special, है ना? See, like in a case of rape victim, maximum up to twenty four weeks, है ना? But in a case of practicing contraception, maximum up to twenty weeks. Maximum up to twenty weeks. Answer will be B. You have to memorize all these. Okay. Next, find out the wrong statement related to artificial insemination. Artificial insemination, yes. See, this can be performed if husband is a sterile, yes. It can be done by a donor other than husband, yes. A I D artificial insemination by the donor, and artificial insemination by the husband. Or if there will be pooled, you can say. Uh, Artificial insemination. Whenever there will be semen of husband as well as donor. See here. So this is also true. My question is that. See, my question is that. Ah, uh, doctor, uh, doctor Najib, I, I mentioned that only. No, uh, whenever there will be. Eugenic anomaly, no. Suppose if earlier, if the previous birth was actually syndrome, Down syndrome, like now this time during the pregnancy, if doctor can find out that this time also there is actually one extra chromosome at the level of the twenty-one, now he can suggest for the abortion, right? Okay, fine. So now see question number twenty-seven. My question is that. Whenever sperm will be taken from donor, will that child will be will that child be considered as legitimate or illegitimate? Legitimate or illegitimate? Bolo. Please understand that since donor part, since the donor is not the biological father, that baby will be considered as illegitimate child. Illegitimate child. Legally, he cannot inherit the property of father. Legally, he cannot inherit the property of father. Legally, 
आउट ऑफ लव ही कैन गिव वॉट एवर ही वॉन्ट्स बट लीगली ही कैन नॉट गिव रिमेंबर इट ही विल बी कंसिडर एज इलेजिटिमेट चाइल्ड ओके सी वेन आई टॉक अबाउट अस्टेरिलिटी स्टेराइल इफ हस्बेंड इज अस्टेराइल और इम्पोर्टेंट है ना इम्पोर्टेंट आउट ऑफ दीज टू विच वन इज अ वैलिड ग्राउंड फॉर डिवोर्स बताओ आउट ऑफ दीज टू विच वन इज अ वैलिड ग्राउंड फॉर डिवोर्स वर इज द मीनिंग ऑफ अस्टेराइल वर इज द मीनिंग ऑफ द इम्पोर्टेंसी वर इज द मीनिंग ऑफ इम्पोर्टेंसी मीन्स वेन अ पर्सन इज नॉट एबल टू परफॉर्म दिस सेक्शुअल इंटरेस्ट इम्पोर्टेंसी Sterile means what? He can perform this sexual intercourse, but he is not able to deposit the semen at the right place in vagina. Sterility. Maybe in a case of hypospadias, है right? ना? Hypospadias. Hypospadias means what? And see, this is the penis, right? This is the penis. And when the urethral opening is here only, when the urethral is opening here, है ना? When the urethral opening is here, right? Fine. Easy to understand, no? So sterility. Please understand that impotency is a valid ground for a divorce. Not the sterile, है ना? In female, analog of impotency is called as pregidity. Pregidity. Remember. Sterility is not a ground for divorce, but impotency is. Okay. Next question. A test is being performed for. See, this is live birth. This is not liver birth. This is live. This is live birth. During autopsy, a stomach and intestine are removed after tying double ligatures at each end. They are kept under water. An incision is given between the ligatures. Air bubbles will come out if respiration has taken place. Which test is this? See, this is really a matter of question that whether baby was stillborn or the life born, है ना? See, if this is uterus and this is cervix, vagina. See, if a baby, uh, suppose if the fetus is going to die here. This will be considered as intrauterine death, and this will be considered as the live birth, right? Now, live birth means basically he died after respiration. Right? He was alive after that he died. Still born during the process of birth, during the process, during the parturition, during the process of birth, if baby is dying, right? Now, this will be considered as a still born, right? Now. So for the legitimacy, for the for the property inheritance, or for the see for the life birth. Now this is really matter of question that whether baby died naturally or this was the case of infanticide or neonaticide or feticide or whatever. Basically, so examination is supposed to be done here, right? So remember it. There are five tests. We are going to understand it. First of all, Ploquet test. Ploquet test. See, we are doing postmortem examination now. So we are going to measure the weight of lung and weight of body. Weight of lung and weight of body. Obviously, what is happening is so basically I am going to check what ratio of weight of lung and body weight. If there was no respiration, obviously like this will be one is two seventy. But if respiration has happened now, ratio will be decreased. It is called a Ploquet test. Hydrostatic test, regard test, or first life test. After respiration, when when air will go inside, obviously now lungs will be heavier, no? Anna. So on the basis the on the basis of the specific gravity. Please understand here that when air will be inside the lungs, you have taken the lungs outside. Okay, fine. Now you are going to dissect the fetal lungs. If you are going to keep in a bowl of water, obviously if there will be air, it will float. If there will be no air, it will sink. It is called as first life test. It is called as first life test. It is also called as regard test or hydrostatic. See, 
second life test means what obviously when air will go when air will enter the lungs obviously air is also going to enter the stomach so now when you are going to take a stomach out you are going to give incision over the greater curvature we are keeping in a in a bucket of water if there will be air bubbles yes it means he respired it is breslot test breslot test this was the question right breslot test also called as stomach bubble test or second life all these tests are important redin's test redin's is redin is a gelatinous structure see this is a gelatinous embryonic tissue just see this will be there in your middle ear in the middle ear of the baby just after respiration this will go down if you can find out here in middle ear baby did not respire if there is no redin baby respire redin's test last is fodder's test obviously when a baby has respired lungs will be heavier no respired lungs is 60 to 66 g and respired lungs 30 to 40 g fodder's test what is your answer now answer is breslot test easy to understand breslot test very good see this was also the question in inict see like directly they asked gas is found in great vessels and heart chambers of a like of a baby so this is a case of what so this was the case of ke live birth intrauterine death or what please understand that whenever there will be intrauterine death intrauterine death obviously you can see what see there is something called the robert sign robert sign you can find out great vessels in superior vena cava and heart chambers you can see overlappings of the skull bone overlapping overlappings of the skull bones paling sign intrauterine death ka this is the pathognomonic you can see what hyperflexion of a spine balls sign robert sign spalding sign ball sign repeatedly asked question this time recently inict see they asked gas was found in great vessels and heart chamber so this signify what intra uterine death intra uterine death very important see this was also the question this was also the question See here, obviously, when baby is going to cry, or na, so when baby is going to cry, when you cannot see the head in the vagina, when you can see just at the time of delivery, if you can hear cry of fetus while in the womb, just after the rupture of the membrane, it is called as what? Vagitus uterinus. But if you can hear the cry. after you can see the head out of vagina this is called a vagitus vaginalis this was also the question in inict this time very easy easy question no a fetus is called as viable viability means what it can exist it can has its own life after how many days after 7 months of intrauterine life or after 210 days now next is mechanical injury a person was assaulted by rods these types of bruises can be classified as uh, dr najib that atelectasis can give the actually the false hai na actually the false positive test right Okay, what about this question now? See now, please understand that. See when we learn about, see when we learn about mechanical injury, or this is also called as which injury? Traumatology, or you can say mechanical injury. Okay, this is the next chapter, mechanical injury. So we have to talk about. either there will be blunt trauma or there will be sharp trauma hai na there will be blunt trauma or sharp trauma what is the meaning of the blunt trauma see what is the meaning of the blunt trauma basically if you are going to hit a person with rod stone or brick which is having the broader surface area hai na actually blunt 
है ना सपोज इफ आई एम हिटिंग समवन विद माय मोबाइल फोन लाइक दिस है ना दिस इज हैविंग द ब्रॉडर सरफेस एरिया राइट है ना ब्लंट इंजरी बट इफ आई एम गोइंग टू यूज अ ब्लेड टॉप इंजरी इज इट अंडरस्टैंड नाउ वी विल स्टार्ट विद द अब्रेशन एंड ब्रूजेस सो द फोटो व्हिच आई एम शोइंग यू हियर दिस इज कॉल्ड एज ब्रूजेस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू आंसर इट चलो सॉल्व दिस सी देखो please understand here that when our a person will be hit by the rod you know hit by the rod hai na so like suppose if this is the rod hai na suppose if this is the rod only external part will be imprinted imprinted middle part will be empty so do you think this is something like the railway line railway line bruise railway line bruise is also called as railway line bruise is also called as ram line fine so answer will be c here now after seeing this photo what is your diagnosis batao kya hai diagnosis isme he was ala he suffering from which disease bolo answer karo Yeah, this is the era of what? This is the era of COVID-19. He went outside in lockdown. आया है पुलिस से मार खा करके तो बड़े तो diagnosis here COVID-19. Okay, this question was never asked anywhere. Just for the fun, I have added here. Okay, है ना? But this kind of diagnosis you can understand. Now I hope you are not going to forget it, right? है ना? So during the lockdown, he went outside. पुलिस से मार खा के आया तो किस तरह का bruise आएगा? tram line hai na tram line right theek hai chalo fine now see some different different types of bruises hai na different different types of bruises see here if there will be multiple bruises hai na over the neck like this so this is called as six penny bruise it means manual strangulation also called as the discoid bruise This quad shape. When you see the pinching like this, not pinching like this, right? Pinching like this. This is something like, I know. This will make the pattern like this. This will make the pattern like this. Something like the butterfly bruise. This can be seen in child abuse. This can be seen in a case of child abuse case. Child abuse case, right? Child abuse case. Remember it. Next, legs are flexed at the hips and the knees. The arms are flexed at the elbows and held out in the front of the body, and the fingers are hooked like claws in the body. See here, actually very easy question, but I have formulated in the language form. What is your diagnosis? What is the diagnosis? Bolo. Yes. What is the name of this attitude? This is called as pugilistic attitude. Only know this is called as pugilistic. See this kind of question you should practice so that you should be able to decode the language. I am telling. Decode the language is important. No pugilistic attitude, boxing attitude. No. Then in bonds condition only, right? due to coagulation of protein right due to coagulation of protein easy to understand so you should know you should be able to decode the language right okay fine hai na so this will be seen in burns condition this will be seen in burns right okay the next See, question number thirty-one is related to your related to IPC, but related to surgery or where? So basically, is me. What is in the case of emergency? In the case of emergency, if there is no one, patient is about to die. Is it really important to take the consent? 
भाई बोले तो कोई मर रहा तो पर्चा कटाना जरूरी है क्या थिंक लाइक दिस बताओ आंसर Yes, as per IPC number ninety-two. As per IPC number ninety-two. As per IPC number ninety-two. There is no need of checking consent in a case of emergency. In a case of emergency. IPC number eighty-four means what? IPC eighty-four. IPC eighty-four is called as McNaughton's rule. It is called as McNaughton's rule, McNaughton's rule, which is also called as right or wrong test. What does it mean? If a person of unsound mind, unsound mind or insane mind, where a person does not understand the consequences of a crime, if he commits any crime, there is no punishment for him. There is no punishment for him. There is no punishment for him. As per which rule? McNaughton's rule. Right? Anna. what we have learned in the toxicology part even in a case of a running amok running amok which poisoning running amok where do you see cocaine cannabis tobacco cannabis hai na where person does not know what he is doing he will become so angry that he will he will be having so much aggression that he will run on the road who will come in between he can harm him he can harm him that is running amok no punishment right no punishment Point IPC number eighty four. Some other rules related to what insanity related to the <coughs> see related to this. Durham's rule, Perron's rule. Okay, remember all these. But most important is McNaughton's rule. McNaughton's rule. Now see this question. Which of the following is a wrong match between anti mortem and post mortem contusion? Anti mortem and post mortem contusion. अच्छा डॉक्टर आशीष यू हैव सीन द आंसर कोई बात नहीं नाउ व्हाट इज़ द मीनिंग ऑफ एंटी मॉर्टम कंट्यूशन मींस कंट्यूशन हैज हैपन बिफोर द डेथ राइट सो व्हेन एवर पर्सन इज अलाइव व्हेन अ पर्सन इज अलाइव ऑब्वियसली यू कैन सी ऑल वाइटल रिएक्शंस यू कैन सी ऑल वाइटल रिएक्शन लाइक यू कैन सी पेन स्वेलिंग रेडनेस एंड ऑल you can see the changes in the color you can see inflammation you can see there will be the raised enzyme level but what about option number 4 anti mortem contusion obviously see what is happening see what is the meaning of abrasion and contusion first of all you understand abrasion and contusion abrasion means what say like suppose if there will be nail scratch or by the needle है ना कि वेन एवर देर विल बी रपच्चर ऑफ सुपरफिशियल एपिडर्मिस सुपरफिशियल रपच्चर ऑफ एपिडर्मिस लेयर है ना एपिडर्मिस यू कैन सी माइनर ब्लीडिंग यू कैन सी माइनर ब्लीडिंग आउटसाइड वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ कंट्यूशन सपोज इफ यू आर गोइंग टू हिट समवन लाइक दिस ऑब्वियसली आउटसाइड यू डू नॉट सी एनी ब्लीडिंग आउटसाइड यू डोंट सी एनी थिंग बट because of the blunt force because of the blunt force do you think internally there can be rupture of a small small blood vessels yes and there can be extravasation of blood yes hai na so because of this there can be extravasation of blood internally subcutaneously is it understand and there will be what deposition of blood so in the beginning you will see purple color hai na because of the deoxyhemoglobin first of all red after that blue after that as per the level of the hemoglobin bilirubin bilirubin and all is it to understand no so internally you will see discoloration discoloration that is bruise or contusion okay fine so obviously how to differentiate that this clotting was before the death or after 
बिफोर डेथ हिज क्लॉटिंग सिस्टम वॉज नॉर्मल बिफोर डेथ हिज क्लॉटिंग सिस्टम वॉज नॉर्मल है ना यू कैन नॉट वॉश इट यू कैन नॉट वॉश इट इजली बट आफ्टर डेथ नो क्लॉटिंग सिस्टम आई नो यू कैन इजली वॉश यू कैन इजली वॉश तो विच वन इज अ रॉन्ग मैच ऑप्शन नंबर डी See this question now. See, this is a case of what? Yes, when you see this picture, when you see this picture, yes, you can say that this is a case of what? raccoon eye sign hai na raccoon eye sign or you can also say this is a case of the panda's eye sign hai na panda's eye sign whenever there can be see whenever there be a fracture of the of the frontal part yes there can be what accumulation of blood at the lower part of the orbit here right no so yes this is a type of the ectopic bruise this can be seen in the fracture of the frontal bone okay fine also call the panda's eyes which of the following is wrong this is not a case of sharp injury this is a case of blunt trauma right remember it raccoon eye sign whenever there can be see whenever there be a fracture of this part here you know see this part of the middle you know so what is happening here there will be deposition of blood here this is called a raccoon eye sign which is also called as the panda's eye sign panda's eye sign you know which is also called as the bispectacled hematoma spectacled hematoma whenever there will be a fracture of the base of the head you know over the back part you can also see accumulation of blood just behind the ear lobe this is called a battle sign and this is called as battle sign these two pictures are repeatedly asked question these two are examples of what ectopic bruise 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 far from the point of injury next see this question analyze the traumatic injury and mark the irrelevant condition associated with this first of all you see this you tell me this is the sharp cut injury or blunt trauma first of all you tell me acha do you think this is sharp acha okay first of all you analyze the picture you let me know this is sharp cut injury or blunt trauma okay most of you are saying sharp cut right theek hai chalo see this photo you analyze it first after that i will explain you this can be your picture based question very very important i am telling very very important okay now let's understand this first of all you understand it see first of all when we talk about blunt force obviously yes there will be what abrasion after that contusion even laceration is also a type of blunt force what is the meaning of laceration when any heavy object is going to and when any heavy object is going to attack or it is going to touch your body part like this and after that at an acute angle hai na and after that because of the blunt force because of the heavy force there will be what separation of skin or subcutaneous tissue okay this will be what laceration okay like hai na okay fine sharp cut injury suppose if you are using a light weapon like this hai na like a blade it is called as incised injury or cut injury when you are using heavy cutting weapon like axe it is called as the chop injury whenever you are using a whenever you are using a pointed object you know like a knife it is called as a stab injury okay fine now let's understand this one first of all see this photo first of all see this photo see what i am saying here that whenever there will be blunt trauma no whenever there will be blunt trauma means hard object is going to hit here so do you think do you think there will be crushing of blood vessels 
डू यू थिंक सो ऑब्वियसली यस देयर विल बी क्रशिंग ऑफ ब्लड वेसल्स नर्व्स ऑल राइट यस इट विल बी देयर ओके फाइन तो नाउ यू टेल मी वेन एवर देर विल बी अ ब्लंट इंजरी ब्लंट ट्रॉमा डू यू थिंक मार्जिन विल बी इवन और अन इवन बोलो यू थिंक द बाउंड्री विल बी रेगुलर और इन रेगुलर वॉट इज योर आंसर बताओ वॉट इज योर आंसर ऑब्वियसली इन रेगुलर नो इन रेगुलर बाउंड्री अन इवन मार्जिन राइट ओके फाइन वी कैन इजिली अंडरस्टैंड दिस मच पार्ट one more important point see just now you have said that there will be crushing of blood vessels whenever blood vessels will be fully crushed bleeding will be fast or slow bleeding will be fast or slow actually there will be slow bleeding no slow bleeding or you can say what sluggish blood flow sluggish blood flow sluggish blood flow or you can say what there will be what sluggish blood flow or there will be slow blood flow slow very very slow okay fine margin will be uneven okay very good now you will see this photo now you see this photo first of all you see the margin see the margin margin is even or even even or uneven can you answer me margin is even or uneven uneven now you tell me boundary is a regular or irregular 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 okay fine now you tell me bleeding is very very fast bleeding is profuse or a sluggish blood flow what do you see in this picture what do you see in this picture sluggish blood flow sluggish blood flow so this is a case of actually what this is a case of blunt trauma no this is a case of blunt trauma this is a case of blunt trauma because of the hard hitting by your object what happened skin or subcutaneous tissue layer got separated ha so they got separated like this ha na so there will be slow blood flow but do you think in between please understand that in between in between you can see here that blood vessels are intact no you can see in this photo blood vessels are intact see you can see in this photo the blood vessels are intact do you think that yes obviously this will be called as tissue bridges tissue bridges easy to understand easy to understand fine so now see now i hope everything is clear but now when i show you incision see here when i show you incision basically sharp cut when i talk about sharp cut no when i talk about sharp cut see this photo see this photo margin is even boundary is irregular whenever there will be sharp cut do you think there will be sharp cut of the blood vessels also yes do you think there will be fast bleeding or slow bleeding there will be fast bleeding there will be profuse bleeding easy to understand fine now how to differentiate laceration and incision hai na and incision both are very easy now right so laceration irregular shape irregular margin tissue bridges hai na less hemorrhage due to crushed blood vessel but incision clean cut and regular margin more bleeding due to cutting of vessel ab batao kya hai answer tumhara now you tell me this is sharp cut trauma or blunt trauma first of all you see the margin and bleeding do you think there is very very fast blood flow obviously no do you think there is a regular margin no even margin no i know this is a case of blunt trauma not sharp cut trauma see the boundary line here see the boundary kaisa hai iska boundary see 
irregular bound, right? Easy to understand? I know, so this is a case of blunt trauma, uneven margin, tissue bridges can be seen. So, which of the following will be irrelevant here? Answer will be Dr. Najib, that part I will teach you. Okay, that scalp, inside looking laceration, that part will come. Don't worry now. Okay. So, here answer will be what? D only. Yes, okay, don't worry, don't worry, that part will come. Okay. Shallow, fine. Now, see, let's have a small discussion about the abrasion. Abrasion means what? And see this kind of abrasion like nail scratch and all. And first of all, a scratch abrasion like finger, nail. Okay, fine. What second type of abrasion is called as a graze abrasion. And a graze abrasion means what? When, whenever there will be a road traffic accident, see this is the most common type of abrasion. This is most common type of abrasion. Even in the road traffic accident, you can see, or you might have seen in the movies that and a villain is going to tie the wrist of the, uh, like a wrist of the hero, and the villain is on the horse. He is going to drag hero on the road. So whenever there will be, uh, so whenever a person will be dragged on the road, obviously there will be what, graze abrasion. You can say goda abrasion, hana, hana. So this is happening. This is also called a what, brush burn type, brush burn, brush burn. Or because of the small, small stones, you can also say this is also called as what? Gravel rash. This is also called as gravel rash. Right? Gravel rash. Now, see, this was the question in a recent INIC. Recent INICT. Right? See here, whenever there will be abrasion over the neck, right? abrasion over the neck, just excuse me. Sir, I YouTube live. I will emergency Okay, I will talk about Yeah. Okay, fine. See, whenever there will be abrasion over the neck because of the direct impact, because of the direct impact. Or because of the pressure, because of the pressure, this will be called as pressure abrasion. I in a recent INI CT paper, Anna. See here, so you could be confused with the, uh, you could be confused with the type of the patterned abrasion. See here, no. Whenever there will be abrasion because of the pressure, because of the direct impact. Where you cannot find out the exact pattern of the stuff. I know. So that in hanging and ligature strangulation, abrasion will be abrasion will be considered as the case of pressure abrasion. Pressure abrasion. But in a case of the Anna, tire marks like this, where exact pattern, where exact pattern, where exact pattern Anna, of the weapon will be imprinted, right? And this is called the Patterned abrasion. Okay, fine. Easy to understand. Okay. See this question now. I hope this question see this question see now when you see this photo and now when you see this photo see this looks like and this looks like incision this looks like incision but when you see it clearly but when you see it clearly do you see fast bleeding no you see the margins also here no 
see this is actually what incised looking laceration incised looking laceration incised looking laceration it can be seen over the lips over the scalp okay dr najib now it is clear to you right now so this is the type of what split laceration split laceration incised like or incised looking laceration right i hope this is clear to all of you now see some more pictures see there are different different types of laceration one is called the split laceration which you have seen just now split laceration means what incised looking laceration you can see over the scalp and where there is just the bone just below the skin fine okay scalp hai eyebrows hai right okay fine see a stretch laceration whenever there will be a fracture of bones hai na see whenever there will be sudden deformity of bone after the fracture see in the beginning there was no laceration but inside there was the fracture of the bones so because of the pressure of the bones now there will be and now there will be a stretch of the skin now there will be laceration and very common type that is called as the tear type now avulsion avulsion is also a type of laceration what is happening is when a heavy force is going to attack at hai na when a shearing force is going to deliver when a shearing force is going to be delivered at an acute angle suppose if a four wheeler is going to hit you like this hai na so now what can happen here hai na to yahan pe batao zor se agar lag gaya right now so it could be possible that there can be split of there can be rupture of and i uh, like skin or subcutaneous tissue right to easy to understand this is called as avulsion injury or grinding injury or you can say shearing laceration see different different types suppose if hai na suppose if the rotating force is going to take off only the skin only the skin it is called as what see this is called as playing only the skin playing okay fine skin plus subcutaneous tissue that is called a degloving injury and a scalp layer scalping scalping fine no so what i am saying here that only skin playing skin plus subcutaneous tissue degloving injury scalp scalping see the pictures here picture number 1 is what picture number 1 is what can you answer picture number 1 is a flaying picture number 2 is called as hai na degloving injury what about picture number 3 picture number 3 scalping right i hope all these points are clear to all of you see images uh, like if you can understand like this will become very very easy for you right very good the next question suppose if a person is attacking you at that time obviously you are going to hai na like obviously like at that time you are going to ala you are going to prevent yourself hai na okay fine so can you solve this question see here when anyone is attacking you at that time see it could be possible that you are going to hold the weapon if you are going to and if you are going to hold the weapon or if you are going to grasp the weapon you can see see you can get injuries over the web space web space this is called an active defense wound whenever you are protecting yourself this is a type of defensive wounds so this a photo this is what active defensive wound active active defense wound but whenever you are going to protect yourself like this and someone is going to attack on you like this so you will be having what you will be having injuries over four arms over the back of the hand this will be the so this will be considered as the passive defense wound this photo is active defense wound see picture number 1 picture number 2 picture number 1 it will cause active defense wound picture number 2 will cause passive defense wound hai na the picture number 3 and picture number 4 i can say that picture number 4 is what active last two last time this question was asked in fmge and what about picture number 3 this will be the pass defense wound i hope this is clear to all of you next see here actually answer is given wrong here okay now answer will be b only answer will be b hai na 
active defense wound answer will be b answer will be b See the pdf is already forwarded you please uh, like you please write the answer as b okay write the answer as b now if you can see multiple if you can see multiple cuts over the forearm over the neck over the chest so these are actually what hesitational cuts these are hesitational cuts these are hesitational cuts these can be seen in a case of suicide and also called as tentative cuts or the trial cuts repeatedly asked question okay no repeatedly asked question say here now this was also the old question this picture was given in fmg exam and they asked which type of injury it will be considered as whenever a heavy object is used and to kill a person right this is a case of what top injury now whenever sword is being used whenever there see there can be the penetrating wound there can be the perforating wound whenever a stab injury can I see this is a case of what a stab injury whenever there will be only one entry wound only one entry part like this this is called as penetrating trauma penetrating wound whenever there will be entry as well as exit this will be called as the perforating stab wound perforating is it to understand perforating perforating penetrating now see this question very easy question so this question was also uh, like in a similar question was asked in INICG Several head injury. He was unconscious at the time of admission. His Glasgow coma scale was eight. CT scan is shown below. So where you can see biconvex shape like this. Okay. Where do you see this kind of radiological appearance? See, in which condition you see it? EDH, subdural hemorrhage, or subarachnoid hemorrhage? Where? Extra dural hemorrhage, right? Extra dural hemorrhage. Extra dural hemorrhage. Which of the following is right about this condition? See, this is a case of subarachnoid. No. See, this does not resemble drunkenness. Usually occur as counter coup injury. Please understand that. First of all, this is a case of EDH, extradural hemorrhage. Where you can see lucid interval. What is the meaning of lucid interval, first of all? Lucid interval means what? A period of consciousness in between two period of unconsciousness when patient got admitted in your department at that time patient was unconscious we started their treatment okay fine after a few hours patient became fully conscious are you going to discharge him are you going to discharge him or you are going to keep him under the observation you are not going to discharge him because this is the case of extra hana because this is the case of edh hana he can get the consciousness period and after that, you know, after a few hours, again, he can become unconscious. Remember it. See, remember it. Suppose if there is a junior doctor, when patient got fully conscious, now he can recognize everyone. Junior doctor discharged him. But after reaching home, patient again, he got unconscious. And before reaching the next hospital, patient died. Who will be responsible for this? Yes, doctor is responsible. Doctor will be considered as he has. You know, so basically, this will be considered as a case of criminal medical negligence because in edh lucid interval is a frequently seen lucid interval means what period of consciousness in between two period of unconsciousness where a person is fully conscious now question related to forensic science during lucid interval if he is going to sign a contract will this be uh, will this be valid or not yes during lucid interval if a person is signing any contract he's making any will because this is complete consciousness state yes whatever 
the contract is going to sign it will be valid for sure it will be valid okay no so please understand that doctor can found to be guilty if he is going to discharge the patient during the period of lucid interval he has to keep the patient under observation at least for 48 hours right okay fine now suppose if the police van is there on the road suddenly a patient became unconscious after that he became fully conscious after seeing the police van again he became unconscious what police will think he is a drunk police is going to arrest him he is going to take him to jail police did not understand see ideally if a police is going if police gets this kind of patient on the road first of all he should take him to hospital for the medical checkup police brought him to hospital uh, like police brought him to actually jail to custody right and he and patient dies there police will found to be guilty so this resemble edh it resemble drunkenness also See, yeah, now when and I say when head is going to strike against the wall like this, first the strike is called a coup injury. Coup. And because of this, obviously, see the cerebrum part will fit in. And so after that, cerebral part will strike against the wall of this part. No? So injury here that will be called as a counter coup injury. Counter coup injury. Remember, EDH is always, <coughs> always because of. Coop, never count. Right? See, related to this, please understand that. Anna. So, what kind of question they have asked? See, but uh, like in INICT, there was a question related to subarachnoid hemorrhage, and they asked actually, they asked, see, I think this was related to subarachnoid, and like they asked which blood vessels, Anna, which blood vessels are responsible for this. I know. See, remember, like this part you have learned in your anatomy also, surgery also, everywhere, emergency medicine also. Extra dural hemorrhage is because of the rupture of what? Middle meningeal artery. Subdural because of the bridging veins. And subarachnoid is because of what? AV malformation, aneurysm. Subarachnoid, there you are going to see what? Thunderclap headache. Patient will say that, Kisa, this was the worst headache of my life or first headache of my life, right? Okay, fine. Remember it. Next question. See here. Next question. Okay, some other regional injuries. See here, whenever there will be the blunt injury over the head. Over the head. Suppose, if there will be only linear injury over the head, it is called a fissure fracture. Suppose a part is going to get depressed like this, depressed fracture. Or suppose if the suppose if a person will be hit by a hammer, and a hammer after that there will be actually depressed fracture. So that can give the impact, that can give the signature of the hammer. No, it is also called as signature fracture, where you can understand the object with which person was hit. When there will be more than one fracture in the head, it is called a Comminuted fracture. See this picture. Only linear crack fracture. Right? Fissure fracture. Depressed part. This is called a depressed fracture. Depressed fracture. When multiple fracture will be there, it is called a what? Comminuted fracture. Right? Next. See, in a case of the newborn baby, see their skull will be very, very soft. Now. So, what is happening? There will be only only there will be the denting of a skull bone. Only denting of a skull bone like this. I hope you have seen the tennis ball. Anna? Or even whenever there will be denting in your car. Right now? So this is called as what? Pond fracture. Pond fracture. Something like the something like the denting over the tennis ball. Actually the table tennis ball. No? Anna? In China, this is the national game. No, in China table tennis is called the ping pong. That's why it is also called a ping pong fracture. It is also called a ping pong fracture. Whenever there is separation of suture, it is called a sutural fracture or diastatic fracture. Whenever one part of the skull is removed, you can see only hole like a gutter. It is called a gutter fracture. R perforation, entry wound, exit wound, perforating fracture. This is called as pond fracture, diastatic fracture. This one is what? 
गटर फ्रैक्चर है ना यू कैन सी होल वेयर वन पोर्शन ऑफ द स्कल इज गॉन एंट्री वोन्ड एग्जिट वोन्ड दिस विल बी कॉल एड दी परफोरेटिंग फ्रैक्चर इन हेड ओके नाउ नेक्स्ट सी नाउ स्कल बेस फ्रैक्चर सपोज इफ अ पर्सन इज फॉलिंग फ्रॉम द वेरी वेरी हाई बिल्डिंग Suppose if he is landing over his buttocks or over his lower limbs, what will happen? There will be sudden pressure from the lower part. No, so base of the skull will be separated from base of the skull will be separated from the spine. Base of the skull will be separated from the spine. There will be separation from the foramen magnum. Foramen magnum, है ना? Ring of foramen. That's why it is called the ring fracture or foramen fracture. Okay, fine. Like in a motor cyclist fracture, what is happening here? Whenever there will be heavy blow from the side, heavy blow from the side, right now. So what is happening? There will be separation of head skull into two halves. Now, so patient head is like this, like in the nodding sign, like this, है ना? Nodding face sign. This can be seen in motor cyclist fracture also. This is called as hinge fracture or transverse. See here, when head is going to strike against the wall like this, first impact poop injury. Because of this, yes, there will be what hit of the cerebrum, है ना cerebrum, opposite to the posterior part of the skull. That will be counter poop. This is poop injury. This is counter poop injury. Remember it. Poop injury, counter poop injury. See this question now. See, basically, this is about a vehicle occupant. Road traffic accident where a person was sitting in the either in the driving seat or a front passenger seat or the back passenger seat, right now. So where a person will be sitting like this? In which condition patient will be sitting like this? Front passenger may, है ना? Front passenger may like this. Whenever there will be sudden deceleration, <coughs> whenever there will be sudden stoppage of the car, yes. There can be hip dislocation. There can be fracture of femur. This is called as dashboard fracture. Dashboard fracture. Now there is one more injury. Suppose if you are, suppose if you were driving a car, suddenly a person, who comes in between, suddenly you have to stop the car. And now there will be suddenly hyper flexion and hyper extension of the, and hyper flexion and hyper extension of the neck. Right, there can be injury over the spinal cord. Right now, that is called as what? Whiplash injury. That is called as whiplash injury. Whiplash injury, है ना? Like this. Now, when a person was walking on the road, when a person was walking on the road, suddenly he got hit by a car. So obviously, first of all, see, you know, first of all, there will be the primary impact injury. When the car is going to hit him for the first time, this is called the primary impact injury. Obviously, it is going to hit his knee or tibia. After that, he will be falling on the car. So, because of that, है ना, है ना? Because of that, he will be having what secondary impact injury. After that, he will be falling on the ground. Now, he will be having injuries because of the road and all. That will be called as Tertiary impact injury. Remember it. Injury because of the car will always be the primary, है ना? है ना? But injury because of the road and all secondary thing that will be secondary injuries or you can say tertiary impact injuries. So this will be considered as the primary, secondary, or so this will be so injury because of this will be considered considered as the primary impact, secondary impact, or the tertiary impact. Answer will be what? Secondary impact injury, है ना? Secondary impact injury. Do understand? This is called a primary impact, secondary impact. This is tertiary impact or secondary injuries. Secondary injuries. So, do you think in the case of the primary injury, primary impact injury, he can have fracture over the tibia bone? Yes, or a knee. Yes, this is called as what bumper fracture. 
बंपर फ्रैक्चर रिमेंबर इट ओके नाउ बॉम्ब ब्लास्ट इंजरीज बॉम्ब ब्लास्ट इंजरीज सी वेन एवर देर विल बी बॉम्ब ब्लास्ट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल देर विल बी इंजरीज बिकॉज ऑफ द वेव है ना देर विल बी इंजरीज बिकॉज ऑफ द वेव राइट ओके फाइन After that, see here, some people when they will manufacture the bombs, you no, know, they will add a small, a small, uh, like a small, a small. Actually, nails also, nails, you know, nails, and glasses. So whenever there will be a bomb blast, obviously there will be, obviously there will be flying projectiles. Injury because of the blast wave is called a primary blast wave injuries. Injury because of the flying projectiles will be considered as secondary blast injuries after that because of that for sure a person will be displaced from one place to another place is it understand so there will be victim displacement so do you think there can be a skeletal fracture yes that is called as the tertiary blast injuries after that there will be fire in the building building can be collapsed that will be called as the quaternary blast injuries after many weeks after many months after many years because of the radiations because of the chemicals obviously there will be some injury to the people that will be called as quinary blast injuries only waves this will be called a primary blast injuries what about this one because of the flying projectiles secondary injuries because of the victim displacement there can be there can be the tertiary blast injuries now out of these now you tell me where can you see abrasion also contusion also and laceration also all these together where can you see primary secondary or tertiary Uh, Doctor Integrity Papang, yes, you can have the PDF. I think there is a Telegram group. There you can get. Okay. So yes, see here in which condition you can see abrasion, contusion, and laceration all together. This is forming a triad. This is called as Marshall's cut triad. This is called as Marshall's triad. this is called as marshall's triad it is seen in secondary blast injury secondary blast injury remember it old question secondary blast injuries right next question a person is being tortured by beating on the soles soles pe pitai ho rahi hai then what soles Okay, fine. This is called the phalanga or the bastion. See, remember it. See, these are the torture methods. When a person will be beaten on the soles, this is called a phalanga or bastion. Okay. When he will be slapped over the ears like this, this is called a telephono. Huh? Right? This is called as telephono. So now, what is happening? And now, a plastic bag will be applied over their face. We are already contaminated. Which fluid will be? which is already contaminated with urine or fecal matter this is called a wet submarine when only a plastic bag is applied around their face where there is suffocation this is called as dry submarine dry submarine when a person will be hanged like him when a person will be hanged like a parrot okay this is also type of the punishment only this is called the parrot's perch okay what about this one whenever electric shock is given to the genital organ this is called as cattle prod all these are methods of the torture now what is happening here a type of the torture where a person is immersed into the water after that he will be taken out he will be given some time to speak out the truth and to confess that truth if he is not speaking anything again he will be immersed 
डुबो डुबो के मारना डंकिंग नाउ ब्लैक स्लेव ब्लैक स्लेव मीन्स वॉट सी दिस वॉज है ना सी वट द मीनिंग ऑफ द ब्लैक स्लेव सी दिस वॉज ओल्ड मेथड ऑफ द टॉर्चर ओल्ड मेथड ऑफ द टॉर्चर वे आर ब्लैक अमेरिकन नो एक्चुअली स्लेव वेन एवर दे वर डूइंग एनी मिस्टेक्स Hot iron rod used to be inserted into their anus. Now, what is saw horse? You are making a wooden horse. You have made a wooden horse, है ना? And after that, you have made a person to sit on that wooden horse for longer time, है ना? लकड़ी का घोड़ा, right? Saw horse. That is also a type of punishment. Next is related to ballistics. Related to gunshot injury, solve this please. Gunshot injury. Yeah, a case of gunshot injury is brought to emergency department. Burning was not. Burning was. not seen around the wound after cleaning the wound normal after cleaning with normal saline following findings are seen which you can see here what could be the range of gunshot injury first of all you solve it after that i will teach you this part Hello. Okay, fine. Let's understand this part here. See, first of all, see this one. See, this is the uh, this is the projectile we are using in rifled gun, है ना? Rifled gun like a revolver, machine gun, and all. And and this is the and this is the projectile which we are using in shot gun, है ना? Shot gun. So when we talk about the barrel of rifled gun, है ना? So there will be riflings like riflings will be there. So there will be groovings in rifled gun, but in smooth bore gun or gun shot hai na so like there this will be smooth right this will be barrel will be smooth fine so what is happening here see here this is called as bullet this is called as bullet only one opening will be there but when you use the lead shots when when you use the smooth bore gun no whenever this will be open there will be multiple small 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 lead shots will come out and there will be many holes So first of all, when you see this, there is only one opening, one central hole is there. So first of all, I can understand. Okay, this is the case of the revolver or the rifled gun. First of all, a rifled gun, easy to understand. First of all, okay. Okay, fine. Hello. Now let's understand effects of discharges of a gun. Very very important part. See here, whenever you are going to open the firearm. See, because of the fire, because of the flame, obviously there will be burning around the wound. Yes, Anna. Okay. Now, because of this, what is happening here? Because of the smoke, there will be blackening also. Right now, there will be blackening also. Yes. And see here, after that, see, eighty percent or the ninety percent of the gunpowder will be burned, but few percent will be. unburned gunpowder no unburned gunpowder will also get deposited near the wound and that will give the effect of tattooing that will give the effect of tattooing like the tattoo that is tattooing is because of unburned gunpowder and and after that because of the speed because of the velocity of the of the bullets yes, there can be abrasion fine now see this photo you will be having more clarity See, yeah, suppose if a person see, see, suppose if a person is standing here, है ना? Victim A, victim B, victim C and victim D. Okay. First of all, you see victim number B, who is standing in the range of flame. Victim A, who is standing in the range of, ah, uh, like who is in the, who is in the sight contact. With the gun, okay. Now, victim C, who is standing beyond the range of flame, 
beyond the range of flame but in the range of gunpowder i can say that this is the range of flame this is the range of gunpowder and this is beyond and d is standing beyond the range of flame beyond the range of gunpowder now when i talk about victim number b who is standing in the range of flame now we tell me whenever see whenever you are going to see the gunshot injury whenever you see whenever you do the examination of the wound are you going to see the burning are you going to see the burning part near the wound yes are you going to see singeing of hairs singeing of hairs yes are you going to see are you going to see the tattooing effect yes obviously after burning obviously see unburnt gunpowder will get deposited yes so you can see burning also blackening also okay are you going to see abrasion yes in b we are going to see everything hai na okay fine basically who is standing in the range of flame but when i talk about victim number c who is standing beyond the range of flame but in the range of gunpowder now what about victim number c are you going to see black are you going to see burning and singeing are you going to see burning and singeing of hairs answer me yes or no obviously no na no are you going to see the tattooing yes are you going to see abrasion yes what about see here and now what about victim number d what about victim number d who is standing beyond the range beyond the range of flame beyond the range of gunpowder are you going to see burning blackness in your face no are you going to see the tattooing no hai na no only circular wound with abrasion collar is it understand no see here victim number a who is stand see now who is at the gun point he will be considered as he is standing in the range of he will be considered as contact range b who is standing in the range of flame close range who is standing beyond the range of flame but in the range of gunpowder near shot near in hai na near range who is standing beyond the range of gunpowder as well as the flame hai na distant distant range this is about rifled gun this is about rifled gun rifled gun i hope all these points are clear to all of hai na see here see this is actually see see actually this is about gunshot wound first of all entry wound yes obviously this will be sir hai na entry wound will be circular okay after that you can see see like suppose if this is the barrel of the gun obviously inside for the lubrication and right? people are keeping the grease also so do you think over the wound you can see the grease collar yeah, something like a collar this is called a grease collar this is called a grease collar after that there can be abrasion also abrasion collar see now because of the unburnt gun powder which will be deposited which can be deposited sub epidermally under the epidermis remember it see here because of the smoke you can see blackening effect because of the smoke but when we talk about blackening and tattooing how to differentiate you wash it with normal saline blackening will go away blackening will go away but tattooing deposition under the epidermis you cannot remove the tattoo with hai na you cannot remove the tattooing by washing fine see remember here when i talk about close range near range distant range in all the ranges shape of the entry wound will always be circular but whenever gun is in their tight contact with the skin there will be what hot pressure there will be high pressure there will be vacuum creation and all 
so there will be a blast here shape of the wound will become like a stellate stellate or cruciate margin hai na or see there can be what see there can be impression of the muscle also see now understand here that very very easy to understand whenever a person is in the tight contact with the gun can you see burning singeing of hairs tattooing out of the wound no but inside the wound during post mortem examination yes shape of the wound will be like this shape of the wound will be like this what about close shot range of flame hai na so you can see everything yes burning and all near range who is in the range of gunpowder no burning no singeing of hair but you can see the tattooing you can see the tattooing okay long range you cannot see anything only circular wound or you can see abrasion collar fine see this photo now you tell me what is the range of the gunshot injury person was standing in the near range close range or the or in the range of the point blank or you can say कॉन्टैक्ट रेंज बताओ क्या है वेरी इजी टू अंडरस्टैंड नो शेप ऑफ द वोन्ड इज वॉट शेप ऑफ द वोन्ड इज लाइक स्टिलेट मार्च नो नाउ यू सी राइफल्ड गन इंजरी सी पिक्चर नंबर वन पिक्चर नंबर टू इन पिक्चर नंबर वन यू कैन सी ब्लैकनिंग इज ऑल्सो देयर है ना सी सर्कुलर वोन्ड इज देयर फॉर श्योर है ना blackening is also there when you see deeper part you can see here and a somewhat reddishness is there and somewhat redness is there so i can say that okay burning part okay fine so blackening is also there tattooing is also there picture number 1 what is the uh, what is the range he was standing in the range of flame so this will be called a what close but picture number 2 you can see only the tattooing no burning no blackening this will be near range near range right now see this question see now see this question what is your answer i hope this is clear to you answer will be what near range and rifled gun injury right rifled gun injury rifled gun injury hai na after cleaning with the normal saline this is the situation right only tattooing and circular wound near range rifled gun injury okay fine so rifled gun over now you see smooth bore gun smooth bore gun shotgun injury see here hai na there are multiple small small wound multiple small small openings no hai na see there will be dispersion of lead shots hai na that's why it is also called as shotgun injury now how to understand this part how to understand shotgun injury please understand here that effect of flame and tattooing will be seen only within hai na note within 1 meter within 1 meter after 1 meter only injuries will be seen beginning of lead shots will start after 2 to 4 after 2 meter only complete dispersion 4 meter let's understand this part see what is happening here when a person is when the muzzle is in the direct contact i can say this is also called as the contact range when victim is standing within 1 meter close range 1 to 2 meter near range 2 to 4 meter intermediate range more than 4 meter distant range now understand here that see here obviously here also you are going to see this stellate shape of wound hai na here we have added only one extra otherwise everything is almost similar close range less than 1 meter so here you can see burning you can see singeing of hairs you can see the tattooing effect you can see the tattooing effect near range now beyond 1 meter beyond 1 meter no burning no tattooing only 
only what gunshot injury after but please understand here that see what i have taught you that in smooth bore gun no smooth bore gun smooth bore gun see there will be the dispersion of lead shot dispersion of lead shots fine so this dispersion will occur only after 2 meter only after 2 meter so basically what i'm saying up to near range you can see one small opening but within 1 to 2 meter lead shot wants to disperse about to disperse so it will make a hole like this something like rat hole appearance yes rat hole appearance will be seen during in between near range after 2 meter 2 to 4 meter dispersion will start one big hole otherwise small apart from big hole there will be a small small hole more than 4 meter range all is for maximum dispersion all is small 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 opening small 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 openings now you understand this part see when i am making this kind of diagram if a person is standing here at 0 meter 1 meter 2 meter 4 meter hai na victim a is here victim b victim c victim d victim a so now you tell me a is in the range of what please answer a is in the range of close near intermediate or the or the contact bolo a is in the contact fine range b is hai na within 1 meter close range 1 meter to 2 meter near range c is near range 2 to 4 meter intermediate range and e is beyond 4 meter hai na distant range distant range okay fine now you tell me out of a b c d e where you are going to see only one opening but with rat hole appearance rat hole appearance c right c okay where out of a b c d where you are going to see burning effect singeing of hairs tattooing effect where a b c d e in which victim b right b okay out of a b c d maximum dispersion where you will see all small 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 openings e right very good see some photo you will be having more clarity now see this photo what is your diagnosis what is what was the range of this victim one big opening along with that a small small opening no a small small opening रेंज बताओ इसका रेंज क्या होगा यस दिस इज व्हाट इंटरमीडिएट रेंज वेरी गुड इंटरमीडिएट रेंज है ना इंटरमीडिएट रेंज सी दिस काइंड ऑफ इमेज बेस्ड क्वेश्चंस यू कैन गेट व्हाट अबाउट दिस पिक्चर यू बताओ व्हाट अबाउट दिस वन maximum dispersion of lead shots maximum dispersion of lead shots distant range right distant range distant range hai na more than 4 meter more than 4 meter remember all these points fine right? is it understand now okay fine when we talk about entry wound and exit wounds in gunshot injury first of all uh, see here see in a case of the stab injury in a stab injury entry wound will be bigger and exit wound will be smaller but in gunshot injury entry wound will be smaller 
exit wound will be larger. Okay, fine. At entry wound, there will be less bleeding. Exit wound, there will be more bleeding. See this photo out of one and two. Which one is entry wound? Which one is entry wound? Out of one and two. Yes, one is what? Entry. And entry wound will be smaller. And two is exit wound, right? Two is exit wound, right? See, now next question is bullet fingerprinting is based on. Bullet fingerprinting is based on. Basically, now what is happening here? Suppose if you have received a dead body after gunshot injury, after gunshot injury, okay. After gunshot injury. Now you tell me, you have recovered a bullet. You have recovered a bullet from the dead body. You have recovered a bullet from the dead body. After two days, police has arrested one person. And police is asking you, doctor, please find out this bullet was fired from the gun of this man or not. Are you going to confirm it? Is it possible for you to confirm it? Yes or no? Yes. So what will you do? First of all, you have, see, first bullet you already have preserved. Now you are going to take his gun and you are going to open the firearm again. That will be called the test bullet. That will be called the test bullet. Now you are going to see the markings on their bullets. Please understand that this is called a fingerprinting of the bullet and a bullet fingerprinting. First of all, see here. <laughs> see, when you see this bullet, you know, in every gun, in every barrel, and obviously there will be shape of the barrel, and that barrel shape will be imprinted over the over the bullet. So this is so these markings are called the primary markings due to riflings, due to groovings. So what is happening is suppose if there is a gun company, suppose if there is a firearm company, you know? suppose if there is a firearm company. And firearm company is making 1000 guns. In all 1000 guns, primary markings will be same. But please understand that in every gun, there will be some metallic defect, some, some irregularities will be there. Some irregularities will be there for sure. All guns are not same. So due to irregularities in the barrel, because of the manufacturing defect, there will be secondary gun. See, there will be secondary imprinting and secondary marking. So I can say that primary markings in 1000 gun will be same. But when I talk about because of the manufacturing defect, secondary markings in all 1000 guns will be different. So what I have done here, first of all, I am going to take, I am going to see here, no, I am going to use this microscope. This is called a Comparison microscope. It was discovered by Calvin Goddard. He is known as a father of forensic medicine. Calvin Goddard, father of forensic medicine. Calvin Goddard. He manufactured this apparatus. First of all, see here. No. First of all, uh, like first bullet which I have received from the dead body. After that, there is a test bullet which I have fired from his gun only. And now I am going to keep both bullets here. Now I will be looking for the I will be looking for the I will be looking for the primary markings or secondary markings. I will be looking for the secondary markings. One bullet here, second here. If secondary markings are same, it means yes, this bullet was also fired from the same gun. Ames question. Bullet fingerprinting, right? Remember it. Very easy to understand, no? Right. Now identification. In which of the following test formation of yellow needle shaped picrate crystal? See, whenever you have to see, whenever after the rape, whenever you have to diagnose the case, whether rape has happened or not, whether this was semen or not, basically semen analysis, right? semen analysis. Semen analysis, please remember it. Two tests are there, one is Florence test, one is Barbirio's test. In Florence test, what is happening here because of the choline, there will be brown 
there will be brown rhombic crystals barbirios see remember fb florence test brown color barbi bf by barbirios test there will be yellow color yellow color yellow color see remember yellow and brown that's it. yellow and brown yellow barbirios test that's it See Florence and Barbirios repeatedly asked question related to cement analysis. Cement analysis, है ना? Sometimes they can ask you why there is a brown color. This is because of what? Because of choline. Yellow color because of the spermine. Spermine you can say in cement. Remember it. Next, an accused person in court is claiming that he is only seventeen years old. so that his punishment could be decreased as a juvenile judge has sent this person to hospital to find out the accurate age x ray of wrist elbow and hip bone were taken complete ossification was seen at wrist joint elbow joint ischial tuberosity also what is the age can you answer me this kind of question can be framed okay this kind of question can be framed okay see to confirm the age first of all hai to confirm the age whether he is juvenile or adult we have to confirm whether he is more than 18 or not take the x ray of wrist take the x ray of wrist first See here. Suppose if you can see complete ossification of the pisiformis bone, his age is nine year because ossification of the pisiformis bone will be at the nine year. Okay. If we can see ossification at the ulnar joint, okay, seventeen to eighteen year. But if there will be complete ossification of the radial joint, no, age will be eighteen to nineteen year. Elbow ossification will be completed by the age of fourteen to sixteen year. especially when we talk about ischial tuberosity ischial tuberosity ossification will be completed by the age of 22 to 20 years ossification of these three bones most important you can find out the age answer is d remember it right some extra points related to human identification see there was a question that suppose ha na Uh, suppose if uh, suppose if you have received some bones or uh, some bones right how you are going to understand the accuracy rogmans accuracy chart if you are going to get all the bones 100% accuracy only pelvic bone 95% only skull 92% pelvis plus skull both 98% long bones 80% so basically suppose if you have to choose only one bone no most important bone for the sex determination is what for the sex determination is pelvic bone and out of the pelvic bone which is most important greater sciatic notch see here related to greater sciatic notch in male it will be narrow and deep in male in female it will be wide and shallow female it will be wide and shallow basically i am talking about this part here and this is what greater sciatic notch now some important points who is big hearted men or women okay you can say men simply to memorize it male pelvic inlet is heart shaped and who is the mother of these big hearted people obviously hai na so they will be having what circular shaped like what about the pelvic cavity funnel shaped in male flat bowl in female why this kind of anatomy is there so that there can be easy delivery when we talk about sub pubic angle no sub pubic angle remember it sub pubic angle equal to or less than 90 degree v shaped hai na or you can say acute in male equal to or more than 100 degree in female obtuse obtuse remember only these many points this is more than enough no this is more than enough to differentiate sex of a person male or female 
See this question. A dead fetus is found in water canal and has a length of 25 centimeter. On post-mortem examination, nails were distinct light hairs were seen on head and ossification center appears in calcaneum. What is the likely gestational age of fetus? There are two formula which I have taught you during the class. Can you solve this question? Okay, remember it. One is called the rule of Hasse. One is called the rule of Hasse. Where you are going to do the square root of crown to heel length. Square root of crown to heel length for a starting 5 months. Suppose, so this will be equal to age in months. Age. And this is in centimeter. Suppose, <laughs> if length was 25 centimeter, how much will be the age here? You are going to do the square root of 25 centimeter. Answer will be what? 5 mils. Suppose if length was 16, 16 centimeter, how much will be the age? And a square root of 16 will be 4 months. Easy to understand? What about next 5 months? Which is called a rule of Morrison. Where you are going to divide the CHL, the, where you are going to divide the crown health in length by 5, 5, 5. Suppose if the length was 80 cent, uh, like suppose if the length was 40 centimeter, huh? 40 centimeter. How much will be the month? 8 month age. Now what is your diagnosis here? You can apply a rule of Hasse also, rule of Morrison. So, square root of 25, 5 months. Even if you are going to divide it by 5, 5 months. Rule of Hasse and rule of Morrison. Old question, very important related to find out what? Related to the estimation of age of fetus. Now, see, related to the dentition, repeatedly asked for INICT, they have asked one question. Hannah. So, there was the match the following. First of all, we are talking about the temporary dentition, which is also called the primary dentition. You can say milk teeth or you can say what for the deciduous teeth. Basically, what is happening here? See, see, what is the meaning of the deciduous teeth? Teeth which will fall afterwards. Okay, fine. So, overall, when I talk about primary dentition, Number is 20. Anna? There will be two incisor, one canine and two molar. Remember it, in primary dentition, premolars are absent. What about secondary dentition? Secondary dentition means permanent teeth, 32 in number, two incisor, one canine, two premolar and three molars in each quadrant. Right? So, what is happening here? Primary teeth, 5 teeth in each quadrant, right? So, 5 into 4, 20. <coughs> Excuse me.
ओके ओके चलो फाइन ओके वी कैन स्टार्ट विद सी यू नो तो व्हेन आई टॉक अबाउट द प्राइमरी डेंटिशन द फर्स्ट टूथ टू बी इरप्टेड फर्स्ट इज व्हाट है ना लोअर सेंट्रल इंसाइशर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लोअर सेंट्रल इंसाइशर lower central incisor after that upper central incisor right after that upper lateral incisor and then lower lateral incisor at the age of 6 months 7 months 8 months 9 months fine see very easy to understand See rule of half dozen. You can write here. See here, there will be uh, there is one mnemonic which is called I M C M. Incisor at six months, first molar at twelve months, first canine at eighteen months, and then what? And then molar number two at the age of twenty-four months. See in this manner we do. See, like in this manner, yeah, there will be what? See, like in this manner, there will be eruption of the primary tooth, right? Okay. See, next, when we talk about the secondary dentition, or secondary dentition, one mnemonic is there. Mama is in pain. Mom is in pain. papa can make medicine papa can make medicine right so this is molar number 1 this is central incisor right this is lateral and this is premolar number 1 this is premolar number 2 this is canine this is molar number 2 this is molar number 3 First primary tooth to be erupted is lateral central uh, lateral central incisor. When I talk about when uh, when I talk about secondary, uh, when I talk about the permanent teeth, first to be erupted is molar number one at the age of. See, देखो at the age of six year, seven, eight, nine. At the age of up to ten year, eleven year, twelve year. And finally, seventeen to twenty-five. Please understand that related to the age of eruption of tooth. This time they asked question in NICD. See they, see they asked, and see they asked about what? See they asked match the following molar number one, molar number three. See molar number three. This is last tooth to be erupted. This is called a what? Wisdom tooth. But there will be a period of mixed dentition. in between 6 to 11 year in between 6 to 11 year hai na mixed dentition where there will be the primary tooth also permanent teeth also how to calculate number of permanent teeth age minus 5 multiplied by 4 suppose if the age of the child is 10 year how many permanent teeth will be there in this manner we have to calculate right in this manner we have to calculate super added teeth hai na super added teeth super added teeth right okay fine hai na super added teeth and the successional teeth see here see when i talk about see when i talk about sharukh khan s r k or when we talk about like एस आर के और रजनीकांत हु नेवर हैड एनी हु नेवर हैड एनी इंसेस्टेड टू हेल्प दैम राइट नो तो बेसिकली टीथ विच डू नॉट हैव एनी डिसीडियस प्री डिस है ना दे नेवर हैड एनी आई नो सो मीन्स लाइक वन टाइम इरेप्शन लाइफ टाइम इट विल बी देयर बट सक्सेशनल टीथ लाइक आई कैन से राहुल गांधी इज ए सक्सेसर ऑफ राजीव गांधी राइट नो तो बेसिकली हु इज गोइंग टू टेक द प्लेस ऑफ समन आई नो सो दोज टीथ आर कॉल्ड एज सक्सेशनल टीथ 
these are 20 in number hai na so teeth which erupt in the place of decidious teeth okay you are asking one question about the delayed dentition see delayed dentition will be seen in the rickets or the malnutrition right malnutrition or rickets next question shown prints of newborn infants are mainly used in maternity hospital this is called what imprinting of the foot now hai na so this is called a what this is called as podography podography when i see when i talk about the dactylography fingerprinting fingerprinting keloscopy lip printing about the hard palate hai na rugoscopy hard palate hard palate right remember it next most important the dactylography see here see this is called as a fingerprinting see this was actually this was started by sir francis galton so it is also called as galton's test it is also called as galton's test after the fingerprinting how many points are needed to be matched approximately 10 to 12 points 10 to 12 points okay fine remember it overall most reliable method of identification is fingerprinting fingerprinting only most reliable method of identification even identical twins will be having separate will be having different fingerprinting fine now there are four types of the fingerprinting one is called the loops maximum holes arch and the composite please understand that mostly a person will be having same fingerprinting throughout his life but fingerprinting can be altered in some condition like and so you can remember the mnemonic right leg radiation leprosy electric injury and the skin graft now the question is that the overall now the question is that how you are going to do the examination of the old tattoo old tattoo so with the help of the infrared rays with the help of h2o2 right but now the question is that suppose a like dead body is there family members are saying that see actually their face is completely disfigured okay family members are saying that my brother had a tattoo over the nape of the neck actually murderers they have destroyed the epidermal tattoo also which examination you are going to perform now see the tattoo where indian ink was used to make right that indian ink will be taken by the lymph node so you have to do what biopsy of regional lymph nodes regional lymph nodes see this is a type of what arch type hai na this is a type of arch type of fingerprinting first of all this is the tent and then arch hai na this is called as the tent arch this is called as the loop and see this is called as the double loop see this is called as this is called as the packed loop and this is holes and next mixed now related to the toxicology see this kind of question they are asking so this time in ini ct they have asked the match the following see here first of all we are going to learn see there are some plants we are going to learn here ricinus communis is it understand what is the active what is the active principle here Rising, abrus precatorius abrin, semicarpus anacardium, semicarpal and bilavenol, calotropis giganta. Where active principle is the calotoxin. See some pictures, you will be having more clarity. This is called as castor plant, है ना? Ricinus communis. Active principle is what? Rising. See this one. This is called a abrus precatorius. Abrus precatorius. I hope you have seen this kind of plant somewhere. Active principle is abrin. Abrin. Okay, fine. This is marking nuts. Anna. Semicarpus anacardium. 
here active principle will be semi carpor and the bilabanol okay and this is the plant of calotropis giganta see all these plants no all these plants yes yeah, so obviously these are the poisonous plants right these are the poisonous plant and these can be used for what abortion also right so in this question when i show you okay now answer will be what so this is what abrus precatorius no so abri abri see this part a person is poisoned by the ingredients of shown plants which of the following may not be associated with the symptoms produced by the plant seeds so actually this is the dhatura plant hai na which is also called as a road side poison which is also called as the railway side poison hai na which is also called as as the thorn apple right now also called as the thorn apple right please understand here that whenever there will be dhatura poison or whenever there will be dhatura poison see there will be what everything will be dry see remember here whenever there will be dhatura poison whenever there will be organophosphate in dhatura everything will be dry in organophosphate poisoning whenever there will be whenever there will be use of the use of the pesticides and all okay everything will be wet like lacrimation salivation nausea vomiting and a diarrhea everything will be wet there right okay so remember so there will be the dry mouth there will be dilated pupils so do you think there will be excessive sweating no see everything will be dry here no so mark it diaphoresis will not be there see one time they have asked this kind of question what is the name of active principle in dhatura plant atropine iosamine and scopolamine remember everything will be dry say dry face dilated people so dry skin dry mouth there will be dysphagia problem right see remember see here see one crpc is there crpc number 39 crpc number 39 whenever there will be any poisoning case whenever there will be any poisoning case you are supposed to inform the police at any cost as per crpc 39 it is mandatory to inform the police in a case of the poisoning now what about this one yeah this is called a what vitriology this is called a vitriolage hai na acid attack acid attack so especially most of the people they use what sulfuric acid hai na they use sulfuric acid for the acid attack hai na for the acid attack right okay fine we travel it see related to this please remember two ipc is very very important ipc number 326 a and ipc number 326 b voluntarily causing grievous hurt by acid attack ipc number 326 a minimum 10 years or lifetime jail but only attempt of we travel age ipc number 326 b 5 to 7 years in jail this was the question in inict necrosis of jaw lower jaw because of that there will be what there will be the pus collection in the so basically whenever there will be osteomyelitis of mandible osteomyelitis of mandible whenever there will be exposure to what out of these four options exposure to phosphorus exposure to phosphorus right hai na See, there can be what there can be osteomyelitis of the mandible there can be formation of the pus here and after that there will be what see there will be swelling something like this this jaw is called as what this jaw is called as lucifer's jaw hai na lucifer's jaw fossy jaw or glass jaw remember it next question yeah this was also i think this was also in ini ct so basically these are the seeds of what these are the seeds of nux vomica seeds no nux vomica seeds and nux vomica seeds see there is no antidote of these seeds one seed is enough to kill a person right
see this question now so please understand that so this time they have asked actually what active principle of these seeds okay no so active principle is the strychnine and the brucine this is actually please understand here that see here seeds are nux vomica this is a spinal poison this is not a cerebral poison this is a spinal and a glycine is inhibited and a glycine is inhibited active principle is strychnine brucine and the loganin which acts on the anterior horn cells not the posterior remember this seed because this time they have asked in ini ct you can anticipate in neat pg also you can anticipate in fmg also okay next gomica seeds see this will see a strychnine poisoning this will mimic the symptoms like tetanus this will mimic the symptoms like tetanus in the tetanus patient will die within 24 hours but because of the strychnine poisoning within one hour patient will die yes there will be the convulsion or same symptoms like the tetanus there will be convulsion remember it okay no So what is happening here? So sometimes there can be making the posture like this. This is called about opisthotonus, where the body is arched posteriorly. Anteriorly, if the body formation will be there, it is called about improsthotonus. Right? Improsthotonus. Remember, opisthotonus, improsthotonus, and the pleurosthotonus. This can be seen in the tetanus also. This can be seen in the spinal poison. What is happening here? Basically, there will be what see here. This is going to completely antagonize glycine, which is inhibitory neurotransmitter. And so what is happening here? There will be continuous convulsion. There will be continuous convulsion. Remember these points. Now, a snake poisoning. See here, first of all, you tell me which snake I have shown you here. Which snake I have shown you? Which snake? This is cobra, viper, or which snake? Rat. Okay, no? Very good. Hana? Okay, fine. See some pictures, you will be having more clarity. See, first of all, we are dividing the snakes on the basis of the family. LRPD, all, all the snakes here, they are neurotoxic like cobra and crat. Viper, which is vascular toxic. So, like suppose after a snake bite, if a person is having bleeding problem, DIC, na? DIC issues, right? DIC. Okay, well, so that will be hemotoxic. Hydrophidy, see a snake. Hai na? So like whenever you have to swim, hai na? whenever you have to swim, you have to use the muscles a lot. Myotoxic, right? See a snake. Okay, fine. See some pictures, you will be having more clarity. See, whenever there will be the patches like this. Now, whenever there will be the patches like this, right? Whenever there will be patches like this. Yeah, this is the Russell Viper. See here, white and the brown bands. White and the brown bands. Right. Now, when I talk about the cobra, one is king cobra, one is common cobra. How to differentiate these two? See here, common people wear common people wear spectacles every time. So you can see the by spectacle eye here. No, you can see and easily you can see by spectacle eye here. No. So this one is common cobra. This one is common cobra. A king does not wear the aspect. So this one will be king cobra. Right now, king cobra. Please understand that anti-snake venom, which we are using in India, that is effective against all these four. Right? Effective against all these four. Cobra, crat, russell viper, soy scaled viper. See, if I ask you one question that, out of these four, which one is most dangerous? Which one is most dangerous? Can you answer me? Which one is most dangerous? Which one is most dangerous out of these four? Yeah, please understand that this one is more dangerous. More dangerous than the cobra. More dangerous than the cobra. Why it is considered as most dangerous? No, no, please understand why it is considered most lethal. First of all, please understand here that. Please understand here that. See, the code. How much is the lethal dose of other see how much is the how much is the fatal dose of common cobra 15 milligram king cobra 12 milligram 
रसल वाइपर फोर्टी मिलीग्राम सॉस केल एट मिलीग्राम बट वर्ड अब द क्रैट टू पॉइंट फाइव टू सिक्स मिलीग्राम इज मोर देन एनफ टू किल अपर्स फर्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट सेकेंड इज दैट वेन एवर ए स्नेक इज गोइंग टू बाइट समन ऑब्वियसली देर विल बी लोकल सिम्टम्स देर विल बी पेन देर विल बी स्वेलिंग देर विल बी नेक्रोसिस है ना ओके फाइन देर विल बी फैंग मार्क्स ऑल्सो फैंग मार्क्स प्रॉब्लम विद द क्रैट इज दैट मोस्टली इट विल बी नॉक्चर्नल वेन एवर इट इज गोइंग टू बाइट एनी वन absence or very minimal local symptoms will be there minimal local symptoms minimal local symptoms when person will be sleeping on the floor no he will think that oh my god uh, like i think mosquito bite or something like that. he will not understand but whenever there will be neurological problems ptosis drooping of eye whenever there will be respiratory depression after that he will get up whenever he will be sent to hospital even doctors will not be able to identify whether this was the case of a snake bite because no fang marks it will be very very late in making any diagnosis is it to understand and what is happening here whenever there will be neurotoxic like a snake bite no like whenever there will be cobra bite or the crat bite cobra or crat Okay, fine. See here, along with anti-snake venom, we we are also giving neostigmine. We are also giving neostigmine injection, IV injection, so that we can reverse the neurological symptom. And right? we can reverse, and right? we can reverse the neurological symptom, right? Okay, fine. So now you tell me. See here, neostigmine injection is effective again. Neostigmine injection is effective against cobra. Effective against the cobra, है ना? Cobra. But neostigmine injection is not supportive. No role of neostigmine in crat bite. No role. That's why it is considered as extremely dangerous. Easy to understand. Fine. and so first of all what is the see now i tell me what should be the management here what should be the management here are you going to give incision are you going to see are you going to do the suction same like the heroes of the bollywood movies when they come here after snake bite they will suck it and they will and they will after that they will spit out the venom are you going to give suction okay are you going to apply a tight tourniquet Are you going to apply a tight tourniquet? Answer is no. For all these, no. Are you going to use cautery? No. Are you going to rub it with the hand? No. Don't use anything. I know. So basically, most important line of management is what? Immobilization. Immobilization. same like you same like you are doing the management of what same like you are doing the management of what fracture case immobilization you are not allowing your patient to walk why you are not allowing the patient to walk if he will walk and so there will be fast blood circulation there will be spread of venom please understand here that we cannot apply the tight tourniquet but we can apply soft tourniquet that is called as sutherland band ha na Sutherland bandage, something like free bandage. Why are you applying this? So that you can apply pressure over a lymph, over the lymphatic system. Fine. So that there should be no spread of venom. After that, you have to give what? After that, you have to give anti-snake venom. With anti-snake venom, there is always a risk of anaphylactic shock. Why? Because it was made from the horse serum. So we have to give adrenaline also. adrenaline also right along with that yes and to reverse the neuro uh, to reverse the neurological symptoms we have to give neostigmine neostigmine please remember this in all cases of a snake bite we don't need to give anti snake venom because there is always risk of anaphylaxis no so the question is that what are the indication what are the indications for giving anti snake venom whenever size of swelling will be increasing whenever there will be more symptomatic symptom first of all admit the patient observe if there is no like if there is no you know like systemic problem if there is 
no swelling like if there is no progression in the local symptoms wait and watch that's it if there will be increase in local symptoms Anna, like if there will be what tba symptoms neurological symptoms yes now you have to give anti smoke is it to understand fine so which of the following is wrong this is neurotoxic yes very lethal yes local symptoms are mostly absent yes Neostigmine is very very effective. No. Next question, forty-eight number. A young girl is brought to casualty with an alleged history of consumption of phenol. Phenol means carbolic acid, है ना? Carbolic acid. All are true except. See here, chronic exposure can cause marasmus. Yes, weight loss. Urine color will be green. Yes, no specific antidote. Yes, gastric lava should not be done. Please understand that in all acidic and alkali poison, gastric lavage is can't gastric lavage is contraindicated except carbolic acid. Remember it. This is repeatedly asked question. Anna, remember it. In all acidic poisoning, gastric lavage is can contraindicated except carbolic acid except phenol here we can use here we can use the gastric lava obviously whenever you see the urine urine color will be green which of the following is a wrong match of diseases and poisoning arsenic poison are you going to see black foot disease yes mercury poison minimata yes true lead poison plumbus phenol poison acrodynia no acrodynia is also called as pink disease also called as pink disease Anna? this is because of mercury poison this is because of mercury poison see here see always understand that see always understand that out of all the toxicology part most important from where you can anticipate question first is the plant poison Second, a snake bite, and after that, a scorpion. Third, metallic poison. First of all, you have to see what? Mercury. After that, arsenic. After that, lead poison. These are extremely important. These are extremely important. Very, very important. You cannot miss these topics. See some extra points here. See, whenever I will be talking about the mercury poison, please understand that. Suppose if, a, for, suppose if a person is working in hat industry, hat industry, or if a person is working in the glass blower industry, and, uh, so because of the poisoning of the mercury, there will be what? So this kind of symptoms will be there. That is called as what? Tremors or shaking palsy. See, there will be what? Shaking palsy. And, uh, shaking, pal shaking palsy. And so this is also called as hatter shakes, glass blower shakes, Danbury. Remus, old questions. So how would you understand that? See here, first of all, there will be, see, first of all, there will be what? Severe problem in the handwriting. After that, a speech, after that, work problem. Anna? Okay, fine. So all these are what? Shaking palsy, glass blower shakes, hatter shakes. If a person is having, suppose if a person is getting exposed by the vapors of the mercury, there will be deposition. See, there will be deposition of, and see, there will be deposition over the anterior part of the lens. There can be what? Mercuria lentis. Mercuria lentis. Sometimes, what is happening if a person is working in hatch industry, glass blower industry, there can be neurological disorder also, psychiatric disorder also, personality changes also. That is called as erethism. So that's why it is called as what? Mad Hatter syndrome. Mad Hatter syndrome, right? And a minimata disease, yes, acrodynia, pink disease, all diseases are related to what? All diseases are related to mercury poison. What about this one? Chronic exposure to a chemical element causes vasospasm, peripheral vascular insufficiency, which leads to dry gangrene and a spontaneous amputation of affected extremities. Basically, I'm talking about what? Black foot disease. I'm talking about black foot disease. That is because of what? Out of these following? Arsenic. Anna? Arsenic, right now? Black foot disease, arsenic poison. 
arsenic. See here, no? Because arsenic will cause vasospasm. Vasospasm, right? You know, vasospasm. So because of that, there will be, you know, because of that, there will be vascular insufficiency. There will be ischemia. Finally, gangrene, and finally, what? Spontaneous amputation. Black foot disease. Repeatedly asked question. Repeatedly asked question. You know? See, remember here, arsenic mimics like a natural disease, like the cholera. Cholera. Or you can say gastroenteritis. And arsenic mimics like a natural disease. But the problem with the arsenic is that, see, you know, this can sustain for many, many years. This can sustain for many, many years. Right now? See here. See, in the arsenic poison, yes, rashes will be there, something like the measles. Even you can see over the, see, you know, over the neck, over the chest, there will be what? See, there will be a raindrop, and right? see, there will be black, black color, or you can say there will be the brown pigmentation, something like raindrop pigmentation. See, you can also see there can be what? See, deep pigmentation, deep pigmentation over the macular areas, leukomelanosis. You can see the palms and soles, hyperkeratosis. Over the nails, you can see white bands, mis line. Remember it, all these are very, very important. Really, see, this is what. Black foot disease, arsenic poison. This is mesaline. Old question. Anna? Raindrop pigmentation. Raindrop pigmentation. Arsenic poison. Hyperkeratosis of palms and soles. All these are old questions. Sorry, related to arsenic poison. Most important topic you have to remember here. What? Anna? Arsenic poison mimics like a natural disease. Cholera. Gastroenteritis. Okay. Okay. Whenever there will be acute poisoning by the arsenic, yes, you have to do what? You have to take the blood sample. But arsenic for the lo with the long exposure, this can get deposited in the hair, nail, and bones. And so we are also using Marsh test and Range test. Remember it. What are the negative points about arsenic poison? Anna? Please understand here that. See, please understand here that what are the disadvantages of arsenic poison? First of all, it delays putrefaction. Even in the decomposed bodies, even in the burnt bodies, easily you can detect it. Even if you have burned it, even in the smokes, like even in ashes actually, even in ash, you can find out. So, this cannot be ideal homicidal poison. See, this can be found in bones, hairs, nails for several years, right? Now, lead poisoning. See here, lead poisoning means actually the plumbism. See, remember, lead blocks. See, lead you can see in the sindoor, in the wall paint, even in the lipsticks, even in the bullet, lead poisoning. Lead blocks, which, which metabolic pathway? Lead blocks, heme metabolism. Lead blocks, heme metabolism. Lead blocks, how many enzymes? A L A dehydratase, A L A dehydratase and perochelatase, perochelatase, perochelatase. So now you tell me, whenever heme metabolism will be altered, obviously there will be anemia for sure, है ना? Anemia for sure, right? So remember A B C D E F G H. All signs you are going to see in lead poisoning. Anemia, yes. You can see the Bertonial and blue lines over, right? blue lines over the gums because, right? because after mixing with the bacteria here, right? Bertonial line. Even you can see a stippling of, see a stacking of the, like you can see a stacking of the basophil, something like this. It is called the basophilic stippling. You can see because of this, what is happening here? See here. See, you can see. Dry belly ache, severe abdominal pain, constipation. Lead poison, lead also affect the nerves. So in adults, you can see wrist drop, you can see foot drop, lead palsy. In the in the in the young age patient, you can see encephalopathy. And earliest sign over the face, anemia, facial pallor. You can also see gout, hypertension, impotency, and all. So obviously, for the poison, you have to use what? Chelating agents like Edita. See, this is the Bertonian line. Now, related to the cardiac poisons. See, remember here, cardiac poison, this was the question in INICT. Which of the following is not 
which of the following is not a cardiac poison see remember here they have given the option of aconite poison aconite which is also called a monkshood meetha zahar meetha bish right okay women's bane nicotine digital you see they have given this option one more option was it which was not actually a cardiac poison remember all these points right remember all these points okay now see this question a 25 year old man was hospitalized after getting unconscious following agitated behavior at airport old question his bag had enema and abundant laxatives abdominal x ray shows the given findings shown below i will take more 5 10 minutes after that i will uh, like after that i will finish it okay See, actually this was very very long session but trust me i have taught you almost uh, like almost entire forensic almost yes yeah, see what is happening yeah, suppose if you have to do the drug smuggling no if you have to do the drug smuggling yes what is happening here yeah? ana a person is going to ana you are going to hire a person who will be called as mule or you are going to make what small small capsules small small capsules of latex where you are going to pack the drug like cocaine heroin more than 1 kilo you are going to ask him to consume it after that he will be going to uh, like he will be going to some uh, some other place find some other place find right now so basically this is the type of the drug smuggling basically we have packed his body this is called as body packer syndrome yes this is called as body packer syndrome obviously now what has happened as per the situation yes there can be the risk of rupture of the packets on the way yes hai na so that's why he became unconscious further imaging of abdomen is needed yes obviously ct scan is needed he is at the risk of the poisoning yes he is malingering no this is a case of body packer syndrome body packer syndrome that you know that guy is called as mule see here a wife suffered injury over a forearm see last topic here ipcs by her husband as shown in photo he should be punished as per which ipc i hope you know that there is something called as a simple hurt simple hurt is defined by ipc number 390 but when i talk about grievous hurt no when i talk about grievous hurt what is the meaning of the grievous hurt any hurt which can be dangerous to the life suppose if there will be fracture of any bones or a uh, teeth dislocation or after they fight he became blind or deaf emasculation all these are grievous hurt basically after any kind of in injury if a person is bed ridden for 20 days bed ridden for 20 days it will be called as grievous hurt ipc number 320 See, understand here all ipcs ipc is ipc number 319 simple hurt simple hurt all abrasions are a simple hurt except corneal abrasion except corneal abrasion except corneal abrasion grievous hurt ipc number 323 now you understand here first of all ipc number 323 and 324 these are related to hurt only hurt punishment for voluntarily causing hurt basically simple hurt one year punishment now voluntarily causing hurt with dangerous weapon dangerous weapon means like knife blade hai na simple hurt by the dangerous weapon ipc number 324 and i see lathi rod these are not so much dangerous but when i talk about dangerous weapon i mean gun blade knife these are dangerous weapons fine no? ipc number 325 and 326 are related to grievous hurt voluntarily causing grievous hurt 7 years in jail voluntarily causing grievous hurt by dangerous weapon 10 years in jail now you see this one and by the dangerous weapon not grievous hurt no so answer will be ipc number 324 324 you have to memorize all the ipc right there because since uh, we are still in there of the pandemic disease 
नेग्लिजेंट एक्ट लाइकली टू स्प्रेड डिजीज विच इज डेंजरस टू लाइफ आई पी सी नंबर टू सिक्सटी नाइन बट यू हैव गॉट कोविड नाइनटीन यू हैव गॉट कोविड नाइनटीन है ना कोविड नाइनटीन राइट and after that willfully you are going outside you are going to cough in front of everyone i got covid 19 i will give covid 19 to everyone willful act punishable offense as per ipc number 27 see related to murder remember first of all ipc number 299 300 first of all definition of murder is given by ipc number 300 and punishment for the murder is given by ipc number 302 but you have to understand the definition of culpable homicide not amounting to murder and ipc number 300 murder culpable homicide amounting to murder see ipc number 300 means directly yes amounting to murder i am going to i am going to shoot him fine no okay fine so this will be ipc number 300 but what about ipc number 299 murder is there but not amounting to murder how means indirect murder suppose like there is bush hai na b is sitting here c is sleeping here a knows that c is sleeping there a wants to kill c a asked b hey what are you doing here you burn it and you burn it b does not know b by that time b did not b did not know that c was sitting over there he was sleeping over there hai na so now what happened b burnt it b burnt it b did not know anything right now and what happened so a has killed c hai na this was the culpable homicide but not amount murder okay fine so punishment for murder death sentence or lifetime jail punishment for murder not amounting to death 10 years in jail ipc number 304a and 304b very very important a is criminal medical negligent act b is dowry death fine so in this manner we have completed almost entire forensic medicine and the toxicology how much i have taught you please revise it well i wish you all the best how much i have taught you this is more than enough for neat pg for inict for fmg exam okay i have taken very very long session i'm sorry for that but i have taught you so many points almost entire forensic i have completed okay almost entire forensic fine chalo then thank you so much read well study well and i wish you all the best thank you so much bye bye